What's up, everybody? Welcome on into Saturday Night Speedway. We are getting ready for another exciting, action-packed night of racing. I'm Tom Viola. He is Chris Cunningham, better known as Knight. Are you ready for another great SNS? Yeah, I'm super excited. There's going to be a lot of exciting races. We have six quals tonight, and I'm just really looking to see how these quals are going to go as we're probably going to be getting in the action here momentarily. You said it, six quals. We got a packed house here at the HyperX Esports Arena in the Luxor Hotel and Casino on the Las Vegas Strip. Guys, are you ready for some SNS? Let me hear it. We got a house. Oh, they are ready. They don't even need the extra encouragement. They're ready to go here tonight. Yeah, I'm just excited. I've been drinking some G Fuel, trying to get ready for all of this action tonight. And we are moments away, I think, from qualifier number one. They were already called up. We got 13, who's pretty hyped up. The crowd is hyped up as well. I'm really curious to see who's going to take the initial advantage here. I am too. Like we said, so many great competitors out there tonight. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for Saturday Night Speedway? Let me hear you. All right, guys, let's get right to it. It's time to start the show. All right, guys, we are getting ready to get going here. Of course, someone backed out of the lobby, so they are just getting us set once again. You can see we have a packed house here. The bleachers are full. We've got people all along the balcony here. Night, it is going to be a great one. It really is, and I'm just super excited. The fact that we have six qualifiers yet again, there's just so much talent here throughout all of these different qualifiers. It's going to be really exciting to see who's going to be able to make it out, get into that top 22, and get into semifinals. It really is. And let's take a look in at qualifier one right now. We got some great names here. Of course, we got Air Boom in the first qualifier. Big, big day for him. It is his 21st birthday. He can officially head over to the bar and grab a real drink from Frankie. It was crazy, too. I, I woke up a little bit late today. I checked my phone. I went on to Facebook. I like to, I get that notification of everything. And literally, it was Frankie that responded to uh, Airboom on Facebook saying, hey, congratulations. There's a drink at the bar waiting for you. You know, so oh, that was super wholesome. And already, we're going to be heading to Music Park here for race number one. All right, there we go. Wildfire number one. Qualifier number one, race number one. We are finally getting other way, underway. Can Airboom make it a big one on his big day? What do you think? I think he definitely has the ability to make it into semifinals. I think he's going to need a strong score, especially with six qualifiers. They're going to need to get in that middle to upper 30s, but we'll see. Plenty of racing to, to go tonight. And you can see everyone here in our lineup. We got Lazy Panda, the Doge Master. That bot Logan. Puffball, Psych, who we're watching right now, Sneaks, Sir9, Airboom, Bleed Orange, I'm gonna like that, Syracuse man myself, Big B, Super Mario Action, and Brando. Yeah, this is a really unique qualifier. We're on board here with Psych. 
And I love the loadout. Unfortunately, goes for the double. Gets hit by a banana right now. But loving the link, loving uh, the slick tires. We're moving on over to the birthday boy, Airboom. Rose Gold Peach standard bike. Interesting loadout there with the blue rollers. Uh, avoids that red shell. Oh, no. The red shell still connects. It doesn't get blocked by the music note. He's just kind of chilling in seventh at the moment. Just kind of chilling, but mid-packing on this track, not necessarily the worst that it can be. Puffball here, a name I haven't seen before, but I've, of course, been out of action the last couple weeks. I had a birthday of my own, and then last week just uh, couldn't make it work with the new work schedule. But Puffball here in second place right now, and look who is in first. It is Sneaks. And there's a blue shell, the mother-in-law, as Nora calls it, creeping up here on Sneaks right now. Doesn't have anything to dodge this blue shell, but so he's going to take the hit and fall into the abyss. So this is going to be a huge deal breaker here as there's going to be like uh, players like probably uh, Brando Bigby trying to catch up there to Sneaks. Brando there playing that, that Daisy character. Brando going with the Daisy and the Wiggler manages to somehow get outside the level off the jump. Going to drop down a couple spots there in Super Mario action up to third right now. Look how far ahead Sneaks is. Yeah, Sneaks has kind of checked out Airboom there in second. Super Mario action in third, and gotta love this. This is the circuit special. Has a boo in third, so if anything crazy happens right now, that's gonna put Super Mario action in a great position. Sneaks is just kind of on autopilot right now. Uh, gonna take this little drift, jump off of that pad that's known as the Super Bounce, saves a little bit of time. And uh, Airboom now kind of getting caught up here by these DAC characters, now in uh, fourth place. Airboom in fourth, trying to battle it out. A couple turns left here, not quite out of it just yet, but even fourth place would be a very nice finish for him in this first race, as we have Sneaks well ahead of everyone else. And instead of backspamming the bob bomb, gonna throw it forward into his own path right after the finish line there. Sneaks taking an easy first place. But meanwhile, Super Mario Action here in a battle, and he's gonna get red shelled, and he's gonna drop all the way down as Airboom takes second place in his first race. There oh, you man. go. Airboom was the benefactor of an unfortunate event. Super Mario Action threw that red. It did hit uh, Brando, I believe, but there was a little bit of a delay on it. And by him throwing that red, it allowed that player in fifth to go ahead and actually red him. So in reality, uh, it was an unfortunate situation, but probably the right play there for Super Mario Action. Hey, a little bit of birthday luck gets you a long way. Airboom going to be very happy. He is not going to be upset about that one. Any way you can get it in race number one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, second place, I mean, the whole point is just to farm points, I guess, in the qualifiers, and then get yourself in a position to be in the competition for the semifinals and then try to focus on advancing through. So you take whatever you can get and some consistency counts here. Exactly, and to remind anyone who's maybe a first time viewer out there of how this tournament works, we have six qualifiers tonight where the top 22 racers from all across all six qualifiers are gonna be headed on to semifinals. The next 12 racers after them their night isn't over yet. They go on to second chance battle, which of course will be a race of 200cc Baby Park, and the top two racers from that will join them in the semifinal round. Now in those semifinals, the top six racer from each semi will go on to our grand finals. So right now, like you said, it's about farming points, getting as many as you possibly can, giving yourself that score that secures you one of those top 22 spots as we follow Lazy Panda here on Trainbow Road. Yes, Trainbow is what it's known as. You can see the train there on the left-hand side, the Mario and Peach fireworks. It's quite the spectacle. Sir Nine's in this qualifier. We haven't talked about him yet, but he is in second place trailing Sneaks at the moment. We really have not, and of course, he is someone who's sometimes in the caster booth here with us, other times racing as we have Doge Master right here in third place, rocking that Yoshi. That's not a standard cart, that is, uh, I believe that's the Legend of Zelda bike. Yeah, that's one of the bikes that has the, the cart physics, so it's not an inward bike, but uh, it's really cool to, to see, it's very uncommon, so definitely getting some style points here early. I think he may or may not have gotten that box, but we're back to Puffball, who gets hit by Brando there with the, looks like the plantains, as Nora calls it, now just, Everyone's just trying to get through this pack. It's, it's just a cluster at this point. That is right. Look at how congested everybody is. There is one Waluigi up there in first place. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that Sneaks up in first as Brando's in third here. And yes, it is Sneaks. He's rocking the Wiggler loadout with the Waluigi. Be interesting to see what he's going to do here. He's going to try and get another item for this Blue shell dodge, but it's too late. The blue hits him before. But does he try to get that snipe on second? I don't think so. It's going to be a drag race here for the win. That is right, it's coming right down to the wire. The red shell's gonna hit Sneaks, he's gonna go down. He's gonna lose first place. Sir Nine waves with the wave. The wave! And Sneaks is gonna take second there. Third Train going to Big B. has left the station for Sneaks. Sir Nine oh, picking up the win there. Oh, 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 oh. Sir Nine just said bye. Yeah. 
That was that. That was that. Little, Luigi. That was a little subtle. Yeah, a little subtle. Uh, well, one thing that of... I would not expect that I learned during our Fall Guys tournaments here, Sir Nun, very big trash talker. He is. He is very big at trash talking, but he is somehow able to back it up. He, he, and that's the key. If you can back up your trash talk, you are good to go. But right now, let's talk about our next qualifier. Qualifier 2 going to be coming up in just a couple races. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you hear your name, head on up to the HyperX Hype Tunnel. We have TGK, Mario Party King, Sauce, Saps22, Ariel Apostle, funny name, Riley, Pickle, Jinx, Peach Blossom, Aquaman, and Daddy-O. That's going to be a very exciting qualifier. A lot of new names, a lot of reoccurring names, and Ariel Apostle's back, so I'm curious to see how they're going to be in the whole mix of players like Funny Name and Riley, and you can't forget you know, Jinx as well in that qualifier and MPK. No, you really can't. Let's take a look here in the chat right now. Of course, you have a lot of people bomb on, of course, saying go sneaks, go air boom. Chat's going off a little bit. Young the Wizard calling out Sir Nine with the clutch in that last race. Yeah, be curious to see when Young the Wizard will be back in action. He's been a relatively uh, OG player. You see the standings there on your screen right now after two races. Sneaks with a two point lead there over Sir Nine. Air boom in third with 19 points. Brando there with 18 and fourth. Fifth place is gonna be Big D with 16 and tied is Super Mario action. Doge Master there with 12 and we got Puffball, Lazy Panda, Logan, Psych, and Bleed Orange there rounding everything out. I finally put it together, it's Facebook that bot Logan. He's calling out his Facebook handle, I guess. That would make sense. I noticed it too when I had to call them up. A shot coming into play here and a blue coming from that Luigi player there in the back. Let's see how first place is going to handle this. This is a new player in first. New player in first, it is Brando, and he's just going to have to take that one. Now, when I was casting with Sir Nine, one thing that really surprised me, his ability to just call out when the shock was going to be coming. He could almost predict it. Can you do the same thing? Yeah, there, there really is a cycle to it. I was doing a lot with Nor, uh, actually. I mean, it was borderline, like, you know, you just you, have this, this level of timing. And realistically, the shock, by the way, there is 30 seconds until it comes back into play. So unless somebody else pulled it, and dodged with that shock from that player that used it, you're probably not gonna be able to see it until the very tail end of the race if there's gonna be a second one. Gotcha. You're like Tony Romo calling the plays. You can just call out instantly when the shock's gonna be there. Yeah, we, we saw the blue. The blue came out early. There is the potential for another blue. So keep an eye. Oh, psych missing that box. That's huge. So really, if there's anything crazy happening, it's gonna come down to those players in 11th and 12th. Now I see that cart that Psych was rolling with sometimes. Is that one that's actually maybe not quite meta, but one of those second tier choices? Or is that just a style choice? And Psych is the Yoshi? Uh, he was the Link with the, the, link, uh, the link kind with, of the retro Yeah, phone. that's the card that, I wish I knew the name. There's the blue coming in late, uh, as I predicted. We'll have to see if there is going to be a shock and play with the bill coming. There it is. Oh, wow. And so already, you know, you got to just have that timing. And now this is going to be the drag race till the end. Nothing crazy is going to happen here. Sneaks has to hold off Sir Nine and other challengers. Oh man, it is Sir Nine right behind Sneaks, but the red shell's coming out. Sir Nine had it in the pocket. Sir Nine passing Sneaks once again, and this time he's gonna showboat his way to the finish line, L rolling slow across the line. And Sir Nine has just been all about the antagonization of Sneaks so far. Great finish by Big B there in third, Brando in fourth, but no way from Sir Nine that time around but really taking advantage of Sneaks at the very last minute. And those players in the back, I mean, they're playing such a critical part of this race, pulling all those crazy items and dictating how things are kind of shifting on those final turns. It really is. It's all about that item management, sticking in that back pocket, making sure that you have that red shell for late. And of course, Sir Nine got a little lucky there, pulling it out of that last item box when Sneaks only got a coin after the lightning strike. That's just unlucky there for Sneaks. Yeah, and that's one of the things too, especially like when I play and when I race, is I know I don't like to be in first. Uh, I like to definitely rely on some of the items in second and third because when you're in first, you're more than likely only gonna get a coin if you go through a single box. So if you go through a double box, you're always gonna have some sort of guaranteed defense or other item around the coin. So it's just something that Sir is able to take advantage of and unfortunately for Sneaks being in first, just kinda is what it is. He just has to deal with the items he's dealt. And that's what makes mate packing or even sandbagging a legitimate strategy to use because you want those extra items and not be the target of everyone still getting the good items and using those to climb up at the very end of the race. 
Yeah, you really want to put yourself in a decent position to have those items and bring your way up. I still think out of anybody here, Glitch is probably the best at it. There are some players that aren't sandbagging that kind of do it in their own style, I guess. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But we are going to be going to Water Park here for the final race of Q1. And we're going to be following Bleed Orange here. Bleed Orange going to be rocking this Luigi ATV loadout. I like it. Yeah, they, there's a loadout with Luigi in the, in the sneaker, and they call it the lean in competitive Mario Kart. <laughs> but I'm loving the Luigi supporters here. Big B here in second. Let's take a look in at the standings after three races. We got Sir9, of course, in first with 40 points. Sneaks has 39. Airboom, 27 points tying him with Brando. But one more good race here, a top four finish, I'd say. That's probably going to put him around semifinals, isn't it? Yeah, I think Airboom, Brando, Big B, and Super Mario Action in a really good position here if they can get another top four, top five finish. Just kind of solidify them around that range. But for Doge Master, Puffball, Lazy Panda, Psych, Logan, Bleed Orange, they're going to need to get a really strong race here to be in that second chance to maybe low semifinals contention. Important to remember six qualifiers tonight, so those points are going to be at a premium. For sure. And what's really crazy about this track is is that there's a few very tight shortcuts you can have the advantage of taking, but it's really going to kind of come down to how the players in the back are going to leverage their power items here. I don't know if we saw the shock yet. I wasn't paying a whole ton of attention, but if we do, I would expect to see it relatively soon. Some of the stars going out here. We got a blue shell coming out as well. Brando's got triple mushroom sneaks, not using anything that's going to help him defend from this shock in or from the blue shell in particular. He's just going to have to take that one and rely on his lead over Sir Nine to help him out here. Hitting off that wall, that's going to slow his acceleration a little bit. Yeah, Sir Nine right there, getting that purple mini turbo. That's the fastest turbo you can get when you're drifting. And Sir Nine's just kind of stalking and waiting right now. It's kind of unclear how the back's going to play a role in the final parts of this race. But Sneaks, though, getting hit. Does he go through it? Yes, it does connect with Sneaks. So Sir Nine going to steal another one. Wait, Sneaks actually crosses the line. So it was a false oh! hit animation on, on Sir Nine's screen. So we had that false sense of security thinking oh, he had won. Oh, that was big. Everyone with a great recovery there to third. But... Man, that's unfortunate if you're Sir Nine. Sneaks stealing one away from him. Sneaks gets one back. A little bit of revenge, and the qualifier goes. Sneaks, Sir Nine, Sir Nine, Sneaks. Yeah, so I think that they both exchanged first and second nearly every time. So this should be a relatively even match. If you saw it before this race, Sir Nine up by one point there over Sneaks. So Sneaks likely going to take it. We'll wait till the scores are official to confirm that, though. But already, I mean, a great showing in this first qualifier. A lot of good names coming up in that third, fourth, fifth spot. So. We'll have to see how everything pans out. Yeah, let's take a look in at the highlights right now from that qualifier. It was a good one. We saw Sneaks here, of course, getting dropped into the abyss by the blue shell. But that lead that he had was just so monstrous. Nothing was going to stop him. Yeah, you know when your lead is like three turns long that you can't even showboat with that bomb. He just had to take the win. But unfortunately, Sneaks, just being the victim of so many blue shells and Sir Nine buying his time, taking advantage of Sneaks, there because he knew he had limited items there at the end and Sir Nine playing a great job there just kind of stalking him in second place. And Sir Nine then doing the same exact thing. Every single highlight almost seems like Sneaks had to deal with a blue shell that time, has the sp sound horn to dodge it, instantly gets red shelled right back to it and he is going to finish in second in that race as well. Sir Nine manages to showboat that one but then it all came down to that fourth race and we saw that ending Look at it right there. I'm not exactly sure how Sneaks got out of it, but you see him just crossing the finish line there up ahead. Well done by him. Sir Nine did not see that one coming. I think he realized it very close to the end. You saw that position counter flickering, but then he saw the Waluigi player up ahead of him, so he knew it was just kind of all over then. But we do have scores here for qualifier number one, so let's go ahead and get into those and see who might be moving on. So here we go. We got Sneaks in first place with 54 points. He is Done. Guaranteed. Semi-finals. Sir Nine, same deal with 52. Airboom, 37 points. I'm going to say that's probably going to put him into semis. I think so. A great yeah. run for the birthday boy there. Big B with 35. I'd say he and Brando also right about in that area. Where they're, they're in that mix okay. for sure. Super Mario action. Now this is where we're getting a little more dicey. That might be a semi spot, might be a second chance spot with six qualifiers tonight. Yeah, I think for Super Mario Action, you can borderline guarantee you're going to be playing again. It's just a matter of where. Exactly. Uh, and, and then with Doge Master, Puff Ball being that 20 range, I would predict that that would be kind of on that gray area as well. Uh, but we'll have to see. I mean, there's six, you know, five more qualifiers left, six total. And we're not going to know what's official until all the qualifiers are done.
That is right, Lazy Panda Psych, That Bot Logan, and Bleed Orange rounding us out there. Those are going to be your scores for qualifier number one. A great qualifier that it was. Some great competition, great names showing up. Very excited to see what qualifier two is going to bring us. Yeah, I'm really excited for this qualifier. This is going to be one to watch tonight. We got Mario Party King, uh, that's notable. We'll have a lot of new names like TGK, Sauce, Saps. Funny name coming back. Our defending champion is here in qualifier number two. We have Riley, who's just coming off of a, a flight here from California. So we'll see how good in shape he's in. Pickle, who has been very surprising. Don't discount her. Jinx as well. Peach Blossom, and we got Aquaman and Daddio. So should be exciting. Really wonder if uh, Mr. Hollywood flew private or commercial for this one. We'll have to find out right after this break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Saturday Night Speedway brought to you by Finley Volkswagen down at the Valley Auto Mall. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on back to Saturday Night Speedway, brought to you by Finley Volkswagen down at the Valley Auto Mall. I'm Tom, he is Knight, and we are getting ready for qualifier number two. Yeah, super excited to be getting to qualifier number two. There's going to be a lot of key players to look out for, and the defending champion, Funny Name as well, is going to be one to keep your eye on in this qualifier. That is right. You can see some of our players here. We got Mario Party King out there, almost to the edge, repping Storm Rush Gaming as usual. But the real question, can anyone take down Funny Name? Every week, it seems he is either at the top or near it. Yeah, Glitch has been one of those players that has. We'll have to see. It's a very early on in the night to really make any crazy predictions yet. We see the crowd there, energetic as always, so it's exciting to see. And there's the right side. We, Nora and I would actually have battles between the left side and the right side. Maybe we'll get into that. So just be prepared. If you're on whatever side you're on, just get ready. Oh, but, I'm sure we will. This, this crowd seems like they're ready for it. Oh, for sure, for yeah. sure. And yeah, I'm just super excited to see what we're going to be picking here. We're getting this lobby ready to go. And I'm just really excited to see who's going to break out and join like, players like Sneaks and Sir Nine up at the top of the totem pole. So, you know, one of the big stories, of course, like you said, Sneaks, last time out in qualifier number one. Fantastic job by him. Two out of four first places, finishes top of the group. But turns out, there's a little bit extra going on here for Sneaks. Sneaks is out there looking for love right now. Saw a Facebook post from his dad saying, hey guys, just a heads up, Sneaks want me to let you know he is very much single. If anyone is interested in a very reputable Mario Kart champion, ladies, feel free to hit him up through his father. Yeah, talk, talk to 805 first. Uh, you can give your application to him. Yeah. But you know, I was there about two weeks ago when you, you kind of saw he just wasn't really pr playing right in the finals. And now we know why, right? And yeah. so he's looking for love. And, you know, I've had friends that were on Love Island, you know, last season here on the, on the strip. I mean, Sneaks is, you know, single guy. He's just trying to hey, live man. his life. Yeah, we get it. You're 12 years old in Vegas. The world is your oyster. This, it's the place to be single right now. It is. Great place. Yeah. Very transient, though. But if you navigate through that, you should be okay. Should be just fine. Sneaks. Head on over to Frankie. Frankie, he, he's got the details for you. He, he, he'll help you out. I guarantee you, you will be fine with the ladies if you follow Frankie's advice. Yeah, there's been times too where he would go over to the bar and try to, you know, you know be social with, yeah. with all the people there. And here we go, the roulette's coming in. Everyone has to pick random naturally here, but let's see what we're gonna be getting here for race number one. It's gonna be Toad Harbor. One of my favorite courses. It's a great track. It it's really is. San phenomenal. Francisco, very San Francisco Bay-esque. That clearly where they're getting the inspiration for it. It's a fun track. There's a lot of different technical abilities to it, a lot of different shortcuts that you can take. All makes for a fun time. Yeah, so we're going to be watching Funny Name here. You have to do a little bit of a double take because Funny Name in qualifiers changes his loadout all the time. And this is actually going to be Aerial Apostle. So, hey, I wouldn't have known either way unless I was told. But Aerial Apostle right now, Going to be on a, an inward bike from what it looks like here in eighth place. 
and trying to get around Mario Party King and a few others going into this next turn. Yoshi rocking the Yoshi bike. I like the double Yoshi combo here. As you see, Ariel Apostle trying to move around here, getting past this Waluigi, and oh, manages the green shell snipe from close range. Meanwhile, Pickle's in eighth place right now, moving up the pack as Roy with the mushroom. Yeah, Pickle right now looking pretty good here in eighth. Rocking uh, her sister's thermal lead. Unfortunately, though, hitting the trolley. And there is another toe player there. It looks like they might have gotten hit as well. Riley driving into a trolley. So we might need to uh, make sure that the prescription in his glasses is, is working correctly. But still, little nonetheless, bit of jet though, lag. Yeah, still in fourth place here. But everyone is tracking down Funny Name. And look at that. You said it. Funny Name likes to rock with some weird loadouts. This is one right here. Tell me, do you think those wagon wheels are race made? I don't think so. I think they're just there for aesthetics, but I'll tell you one thing, is that Funny Name has a huge lead, the blue shell's coming, and unlike Sneaks that we saw in Q1, Shock coming into play as well. Oh, that's huge! He had an air horn! He had oh. a sound horn, but the Shock neutralized it, so Funny Name actually taking the full hit there. The triple whammy there for Funny Name gets hit by the Shock, loses his defense, then gets hit by the blue shell, and now a red shell comes in as well, and he's all the way down to fourth. He's all the way down to fourth, he does have a few mushrooms, Riley unfortunately getting the bad recipient of, of something from whoever is in first place. That's probably going to be Ariel Apostle, or no, Mario Party King, the other Blue Yoshi. And by the way, one thing I just noticed about the Blue Yoshi, rocking some stylish purple shoes. So that is a good that's kind of hype. Some purple kicks right there. Meanwhile, also decked out in purple is Saps. Is that a pipe or a standard cart? Yeah, that's a pipe cart. It's that's called a pipe, a pipe frame. And he's on uh, slicks or cyber slicks, but one of the slick tires, rocking all purple, kind of staying true to the brand, but unfortunately, there for Riley, getting red from behind, losing a lot of spots. Man, every time we go over to Riley, he's just getting hit by something else tonight. Meanwhile, Jinx here in second place right now has that bob bomb. Going to throw it back as she grabs the double item box here. Has a mushroom and a red as Mario Party King has that sound horn. He's going to fire that off and dance his way across the finish line. He was a huge benefactor of that shock. Kind of neutralized funny name and got him out of contention. So a great job there by Mario Party King, repping Storm Rush Gaming, getting that first win. And a lot of players still fighting across the line. So be curious to see how that race shakes out. We also had some cheers going on in the crowd there. Looks like there is a fan favorite here. Very curious to see if we can't figure out who it is as these races are going on here in this qualifier. Yeah, it's always exciting to see, you know, the, the parents, family, and friends just all getting into support, getting excited for their favorite racers. And there's gonna be plenty more action throughout the night too. So. I expect to see that you know spirit kind of just kicking up a notch as we're getting round and around. That is right, and you said it yourself, family members, friends, the community out here for Mario Kart SNS is so supportive. You're a huge part of it. Everyone's active on the Discord for SNS here in Mario Kart Central. You guys are always looking out for each other, trying to help each other get better. It's an awesome community to be a part of. So guys, if you're watching and saying, hey, this looks awesome, I want to come down, but I don't really know anybody, come on down. You're going to be making friends in no time. Yeah, that's kind of how I stuck here. I was just going to the bar. I had a friend that was training with me for work, and one thing led to another, and this Discord was created, and we just we play regularly all the time, a lot of us. And you know, it's a cool community because there's three parts to it. I'll just mention it quickly. You kind of have your local Vegas players, some online players that come in, like Cynic tonight, and then you also have the, the people also traveling in, just trying to see it for the first time. And Ribbon Road is a very fun place to experience because there's just a lot that goes on with this track. I agree. Another one of my favorite tracks, just from an aesthetic point of view, I love the whole vibe, the whole you're clearly in like a playroom kind of setting. You can see all the other toys. I, I love I, I love just everything about how they've designed this track and how good they've made it look. Yeah, the thing with this track too is it looks very nice and playful, but it's actually, I would argue, one of the more technical tracks in the game. You have these shortcuts and you can kind of, you know, drift through them, but you saw Riley there just actually getting clipped from a bomb. And then there's this huge glider section as well, where if you did have a, a lightning bolt, you could just take everybody out. But speaking and of that... there we have it. A player wasn't able to get into the game, it looks like. So we won't be gifted with that Rainbow Road course right there. And I'm pretty sure that we know who we can thank for that. Yeah, let's see if, if Danny's here in the chat. I don't see him. He's probably going to be... He'll find out about the it fifth. at some point. Probably. We'll see. Yeah, the comm error, that's what Lost is saying. Yep. DC Danny, what's up? <laughs> Good old yeah. DC Danny all the he's way from a... Wisconsin. Wonder how yeah, he's doing tonight. He's doing pretty good. He's you know, watching like, a, like an avid fan. No doubt. Wonder if he is here in the chat. 
So tell yeah. me a little bit uh, more about you, how you got involved in the Mario Kart scene while we're waiting here for the next race to get set yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think one of the, the cool things about Mario Kart, especially here, is like in Vegas, this is the first ever land for Mario Kart. And you know, there's a few smaller ones here and there, some for younger people, some for older people as well. But what's really unique about it is, is that uh, you know, the community was kind of created here. Bear created this tournament. And there was a combination of a few things I think that happened is, Bear kind of creating the tournament, building the local community here. And then there was another player, uh, she's in attendance now, Cherry. She was on MKC and then kind of slowly infused everybody into MKC. And then there was a point where they asked me to be a staff member for MKC and I said, sure. Why not? So, you know, it's been really cool. And now there's about 30 or 40 players here uh, that regularly compete in this tournament that play online and here at the eSports Arena here in Las Vegas. So how about you specifically in terms of what was your first Mario Kart game and what was the moment where you went, hey, wait, I'm, I'm actually kind of good at this. I should go pro. Yeah, so that's actually a really funny question. I was kind of laughing as you were, you were saying that. But I, this is my first Mario Kart game. I was really? a PlayStation guy my whole life. And I was kind of... Big into esports, kind of prior to actually taking off. I had won a back in 2007 uh, a title on NASCAR Racing 2003, which is now known as iRacing. So I had won uh, a big tournament there, and then I just kind of with college, the bad internet you have, you know, when you go to school, yep. you got to give it up. So I kind of in like my senior year of high school, right when I was getting good, I had to stop it. But I ended up going to, to school. Long story short, in Charlotte with NASCAR drivers. Oh, on wow. my old team, and I got into real racing, and then that's kind of when I got back into Mario Kart here. Oh, wow. Yeah, that so is awesome. crazy. I had no idea that you had the real NASCAR background. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, I will say this. I, I've casted uh, real races before, and mm -hmm. it's unlike any other sport because there's actually cars on pit road going 60 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. And you got to avoid getting run over, and not to mention a camera guy with a you know, giant 50 pound camera on his back that you got to watch out for, too. Man, I've been the guy carrying that camera before. That is not a fun job. It's not. No, especially when it's like 100 degrees and you got to worry about 60 mile an hour cars on a on the blow end. But this is going to be a fun track. This is Yoshi's Circuit. Daddy-O taking a little bit of the scenic route here. But Mario Party King there, you can see there in first place. Jinx, Saps, Funny Name, Riley, Ariel Apostle, they're your top six. But now, a lot of really cool parts to this track. Bullet extensions, you can really advance your way up here. It should be exciting to watch how it plays out. Now, almost surprising given the amount of people who we don't see sandbagging here because this is one of the most sandbag tracks. It is, and, and real, really there's only one player really going for it at the moment, and that's Jinx in the back. But Ariel Apostle here in first, just kind of trying to hang on here, just run their race at the moment. And yeah, I'd be really curious to see how this is going to shake out with so many less baggers than normal. Riley, meanwhile, using that triple mushroom, getting across the waterfall shortcut, taking over first place only for a moment in a very heated battle for the pole position here with Mario Party King in fifth place right now. Ariel Apostle battling out with Riley for that top spot. Looks like Riley has just barely taken over the lead, but Mario Party King is coming up around the bend, had the bullet bill, then fires off the blue shell at close range. That's gonna take out Hollywood himself. And Mario Party King now moving around. That triple banana going to really help him from that red shell Riley had. Yeah, Mario Party King getting a little aggressive. He burned the mushroom in kind of an awkward spot, but he knew that Riley was holding on to that red shell and then got into those triple bananas for the defense. Oh, man, really going up here on Ariel Apostle. Has a few bananas left, and the shot coming into play, dodging Pickle. That's going to be big for Pickle there. Timing that bullet bill well. Still has the star. Doesn't use it around the waterfall. Instead, going the long way, popping it immediately after that. Riley getting hit again every single time we watch this man. He is getting taken out by something. And, and everybody else is miniature, so the shock actually shrinks you. Riley was life size, so he was going to probably take over the lead if they didn't bomb him there. And also, this DK right here with the bill. I think Ariel Apostle's got to be careful. Oh, there it goes. That's a lap player, by the way, but Ariel Apostle taking down the win here in race number two. Yeah, I thought that bullet bill was uh, someone who would manage to smuggle that over. I thought Mario Party King had pulled an absolute coup on us there. Peach Blossom going to finish third. Funny Name finishes fourth. Yeah, Funny Name just wants to finish in that upper part of the pack, not going for wins. Just kind of chilling and taking uh, you know, a scenic drive through the qualifier at this point. Scenic drive casually finishing top four. That's yeah. Funny Name right there. He's just so good at the game, and we do have racers on deck here for qualifier number three. We got LOL High, Chicken and Waffles, Banda, Banda, Matrez, Lucas Party, Hammer Bro, Bat Gav, Glitch, Immortal Man, 805 Cherry, and Super Wildcat. 
That's going to be another great qualifier. Although I'll tell you what, six quals today. That one, you got Glitch and Immortal Man up there at the top for sure. Cherry as well, but could 805 finally surprise us? I've been waiting for it for about ever. So could he finally do it and get out of a qualifier and into a semifinal? It, it's still possible. I, I didn't realize that Immortal Man was in this qualifier. I thought 805, it's going to be a little bit harder for 805 now, but if 805 can, can figure out a way to kind of hang up there with those big three, or if any of the other players can, they're going to have a really good chance of making it on. We will have to see, but right now we're going on to our third race of this qualifier, and wow, this qualifier has really been what I would say most of uh, just a tour around some of my favorite tracks in the game. We obviously didn't play through Ribbon Road, but we had Toad Harbor, and now we're here on Mount Wario, another one of my favorite tracks. Yeah, I think that the last time I was here a few weeks ago, uh, not, not to jinx anything here, but you know, we were plagued with a lot of repeats, but now we're getting a whole mix and plethora of different tracks here. We're here with Aquaman right now there in 11, Daddio here in 10th, and this is Mount Wario. This is a checkpoint-based track, so all of the three different segments are not the same because it's not an actual circuit. It's three different sections all combined into one race. Well, of course, I mean, you're starting from uh, an airplane, so you're, you're not hella skiing, but they're airplane skiing here. You can't really make a lap out of that because you can't go back up to the top. Yeah, you're kind of working your way uh, down from the summit of this mountain. And, and Mario Party King, yeah, just trying to hold off. I think it's going to be the Mario. That's going to be funny name there in first. Also goes by the nickname Swag Money Gaming. And if you actually go, this is a legitimate thing. Swagmoneygaming.com. It's funny name's website. He uses oh, that's it. awesome. He's funded it with his own SNS money. And it, it literally says how to get good at Mario Kart. You click on the button and it says play more. I love it. It's great. That is the funny name is embracing being the heel. Yeah, he, he is insane, you know, and the fact that he built the whole thing out of me, granted, it's very simple, but, you know, oh man, Mario Party King just getting absolutely leveled there by Jinx. Jinx also getting lucky, popping that star at the right time, avoiding any damage from the blue shell that's going to hit funny name there on the slalom. And I think, too, it's one thing that we didn't mention. It's you got to appreciate there was not only Jinx, but the player behind Jinx bringing up that star in his second place, that is very hard to do. And somehow through all of that thick and thin, Funny Name is still hanging on in first. Funny Name in first, but you can see he's in third in the overall standings. Mario Party King gonna be up there in first, and right now he is in second. He's got triple red. Does Funny Name have the defense? He has a ba bomb. He's gonna use that. You can tell that he's gonna use it on the timing to try and ward off other racers, but he doesn't time it quite right. And Jinx takes first place. That was very uncommon from Funny Name. He had the defense. He just chose not to use it. Maybe something happened. I don't know. But Jinx able to take that win away there from Funny Name regardless. And Funny Name still, even with that one bomb, would not have outlasted all those red shells. Yeah, that, uh, that triple red came up at the perfect time for Mario Party King. He had to feel very, very good coming off of that one, getting that item to pop at the perfect time on that last corner. And Funny Name just not enough defense. Yeah, funny name, just didn't have it there, but still a great finish regardless. It's still gonna put him likely uh, into the next round still, but there's plenty more races to go, uh, not only throughout the night, but there's at least one or two more in this qualifier. So we'll have to see, I mean, there's a lot of really good names in here and it could be anybody's game to really pick up the pieces and, and pull an upset on one of these top players. It really could, and of course, the most important thing here in this qualifier, you're gonna wanna be I'd say around that 36, 37 point range. I think that's what we've decided on is probably the threshold to stay outside of semi, uh, second chance. And one of our pods disconnected, so. Danny? Danny is really, really messing us up here in this second qualifier. Please stop, dude. Like, we have six to get through tonight. We would really appreciate some cooperation from you. I don't, I don't see him in here at all. He's, he's definitely staying he's, silent. He's under the stage. Yeah, you know, it's funny too because there was a captain's draft tournament online for Mario Kart and Danny ended up getting picked and his he was literally made fun of on the entire live stream because <laughs> his Twitter still says at SNS 100 so he hasn't left he probably is somewhere in the corner so yeah. uh, I don't know if there's security in the building I want to just you know do a little lap around before you close at the end of the night just to make sure yeah he, he could be here just pulling some strings in the back or something yeah I'm not too worried. I mean, worst case scenario, I know that our, uh, our switcher, Nit, actually lives under the stage full time. So if DC Danny is here, Nit will find him tonight when they, we're all they, done. They might know each other. They, they do a rotation or something. Yeah, you never probably. Know. But we're getting back into uh, this, this lobby here momentarily. We do have, I believe, qualifier number three getting ready to go queued up uh, for this qualifier after. So 
plenty of action. We're not even, you know, a third of the way through at this point to see who is going to be moving on, but we still have, at, what, at least one or two more races to go in this qualifier? So. We have one more race in this qualifier, because we, uh, we did finish, of course, Mount Wario said second race, but that was just because of the earlier lobby disconnect. Right. So that was our third, and now we have one more. We'll see where it is once everyone's back in the lobby. But right now, let's take a look in at the chat. The thing is that quite the glare bouncing off the TV means that we have to go in to read it, read it here. And you know, no surprise, whole bunch of Jinx support. A lot of Jinx supporters. We have Young the Wizard talking in Japanese, and uh, Sneaks mentioning he's part Spanish. And uh, yeah, the Swag Money Gaming getting a few comments as well. You know, one other thing that I really want to find out here, Riley, if he's even paying attention this time. Riley. Oh, he is. Yeah, you give us a wave. What's up? He can see us? Dude, you are having the worst luck I have ever seen tonight. <laughs> Literally every time we turn over to you, you are getting hit by something. And it's always on Q2. We never miss it. I did a VOD review two weeks ago myself. Oh, my God. And yeah. Did you see his sweatshirt? Yeah, it says Hollywood, He's California. He's truly representing yeah. Hollywood he now. He's staying on brand. Came back from California earlier today <laughs> and just immediately, I think, came over here. So that's some dedication. I, I appreciate I can respect that dedication. I, he was trying to big time us, but it's good to see he hasn't forgotten the little people. Yeah, I don't believe, and Riley, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just kind of keeping my eye out there for him. That I don't think he flew first class, but, you know, he's... We'll find out. I mean, it's a 50-hour 50, 50 minute flight from California to Vegas, so... Yeah, hey, true stars always ride in style. That's true. First class on a, on a one-hour flight. I mean, that Bo is, that Vegas is the to Boston of is, is, is five and a half hours. Uh, I don't know if it's downwind or upwind, but, yeah, I mean, that's, that's justifiable, but I don't know. Vegas to L.A. or San Diego to Vegas, I mean, come on. I think it's the jet stream goes, that way, uh, goes west to east. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, west to so east. So it's five and a half there. I'm, I mean... I know it's a six and a half flight from the Bay Area to the East Coast, and I got to make the Vegas to Jersey flight in a couple weeks here. Not looking forward to that. I haven't been on a plane for longer than two hours in like four years now. Oh, really? Yeah. Craziest I've done was going to, uh, to London, 12 and a half hours from Vegas, nonstop. 12 and a half hours? Yeah. I feel London. like I did it in 10 and a half from Oakland. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I slept for most of that flight, though. That was a. Uh... <laughs> but hey, speaking of time, we're going to TikTok clock. There for we go. The final race. Ariel Apostle here. And by the way, another one of my favorite tracks. This is this has been my favorite qualifier. Yeah, there, there's a lot of running presence here on this track. We're here with Pickle here in 10th place. Has this mushroom. We're going to see if she's going to burn it and then maybe get some other items here. But if you're looking at the points, though, Mario Party King in the lead here by six over Jinx. Ariel Apostle there in third. Funny Aim also tied for third as well. Riley there in fifth. Saps there in sixth. We saw some mentions for Saps there in the chat as well. And then going on to the bottom half, we have Peach Blossom, Pickle, Sauce, Daddy-O, TGK, and Aquaman rounding out the field. Aquaman really staying true to how bad that movie was. Yeah, Aqu Aquaman is hopefully goes for five or higher. Uh, I know a few people have gotten the four, and uh, it's no big deal. You just kind of shrug it off. Hey, move you're on. here to have fun. Exactly. Meanwhile, oh, here. what a hit there on the Aerial Apostle! But returning the favor there to Mario Party King, and now this is going to allow, I believe, Jinx or Riley to move up into first. Aerial Apostle is not having a good time right here. Funny name up in first place right now, rocking with Dry Bones. And now the blue shell's gonna be coming in. He's got nothing to do. This is also a weird take, but the amount of times I've seen a player have the coin green shell combo, getting hit by the blue today has just been absurd. But Hollywood himself here in third with triple mushrooms trying to catch up there to likely Jinx and Funny Name. And he hasn't gotten hit yet. We've been watching him for a whole like 30 seconds now. Has not been hit by any items just yet. And Mario Party King gonna be in fifth here, has a mushroom and a sound horn. I don't know, do you burn that sound horn when you're in fifth, try and get better items? Yeah, I would have burned it there. I think Mario Party King's making the right play. He does have that red shell for his protection, just like Funny Name does here, and has now allowed either Jinx or Riley to move up into first. Shock coming into play, that's huge, because first was about to get redded here, but now it's literally a drag race from behind. And Jinx looking like she can make it all the way, especially with these mushrooms right here, takes two of them. And Jinx is going to cross the finish line in first place to round out our final qualifier. I think that's uh, two in a row there for Jinx. We're seeing Funny Name there putting up a sign. I think I know what that is. 
Mario Party King there in third, and Saps in fourth place there. There you go, and that is going to round out qualifier number two. Jinx with a very nice race there at the end. What was that funny name sign? So I think the funny name sign, I don't know if maybe funny name can put it up and we could see it here, but it's essentially a, a sign for Fen. Fen is a PH member and you know, just wants to show some love at this point. Okay, I like that a lot. Represent, yeah. Showing up some, some of your fellow pirate hackers. Let's take a look back at the highlights from qualifier number two here. We had, of course, funny name getting that brutal lightning, blue shell, red shell combo there, and Mario Party King dancing his way to the finish on, qual on race one. Yeah, that was a big opportunity there for MPK after Funny Name got destroyed. Saps, oh, and others getting hit with the bomb there uh, very early on there in the OC circuit. This is Riley here, and him getting hit, he actually... Uh, that could be our whole montage. Yeah, he got montaged, and he had the momentum after that shock, too. But it was all Ariel Apostle avoiding that lap player going up there with the bill, and Funny Name here getting blued yet again. I mean, that was the same thing with Sneaks, playing from that front you get blued a lot more often because that, that's obviously what's seeking it out. But when you have one player who's just consistently in the front, they're the ones who are going to be getting it all the time, and they're just bad luck for him. Jinx taking two first places in a row. Yeah, Jinx having an incredible run, as well as Ariel Apostle there too. But yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's a little bit unfortunate sometimes. This game punishes you if you're good, and you're building up so big of a lead, and the items are actually... It's a combination of where you are placed at the moment, where you go through the box, but it's also the distance of how far away you are from the leader. So if the leader's just running away with it, like we've seen from, you know, Sneaks or Funny Name, then there's more likelihood that player in the back is gonna pull a blue shell. Exactly, like you said, it's, that, it's all about your distance to first. In previous games, maybe not the last game, but in previous Mario Karts, it's just been about your position. You could be in 12th with first, very close in front, and you're still gonna be pulling those bullet bills. That's not the case anymore. Yeah, and I think too, it's also a combination of if you're ninth or higher, that's where you kind of have that bigger probability for getting into some of those more power items like a star, a boo, a bill, or a shock. Exactly. We're just waiting on scores here from qualifier number two, but like we said, a very great qualifier indeed. A lot of good names coming out. Funny name, curious to see where he finished overall. Definitely gonna be a spot, I have to imagine, where he is gonna be safe. I'm guessing in the 37, 38 point neighborhood. Yeah, funny name always goes for a comfortable semifinals position, but doesn't really go for the overall win in qualifier, so he just kind of holds back a little bit. Kind of experiments, has a little bit of fun, but, but the good news is, is if you're another player, just take advantage of that, get those free points, and looks like we do have scores coming up momentarily. Let's take a look at them now. Mario Party King finishing us off in first place with 49, Jinx with 48, Funny Name with the 40 burger, Ariel Apostle with 36, Saps with 33, Riley with 32. That should put him right on the cusp, but that's gonna be a close that's one. That's close. That, he's gonna be sweating it there. Peach Blossom with 28, Pickle with 20, Sauce with 17, Daddy O with 11, TGK and Aquaman rounding us out. Yeah, what an incredible qualifier. I mean, we're seeing a lot of low 30s, which is really gonna throw a wrench into things kind of as we're going into future rounds. And I mean, a lot of players are gonna be seeing what kind of general number they're gonna have to hit. Obviously don't read into it too much, but we'll have to see as we have more qualifiers to come. That is right, we'll have to see. We've got qualifier three coming up right after this very short break. Brought to you by Finley Volkswagen, down at the Valley Auto Mall. Don't go anywhere. What's up, everybody? Welcome back on in for qualifier number three here on Saturday Night Speedway 105 at the HyperX Esports Arena. I'm Tom, he's Knight, and like we said, two down, four to go. There's, yeah, four to still go. two thirds more of the night in quals just alone ahead of us. Not to mention second chance, the two semifinals, and then also the grand, like the grand finals as well. So it's gonna be an exciting night of action right now. And Qualifier 3 is looking pretty good in terms of the group of players. I mean, we already saw it with Qualifier number 1 and 2 that there were some really stout players that are running away, but 
Time will tell what's going to happen for this qual and future quals to come. It really is. Of course, we got players like Immortal Man, Cherry, and of course, 805, the grandpa of the arena. Yeah, 805 definitely with a chip on his shoulder with something to prove. He's going to be one to look out for, especially with Cherry, Immortal Man, and Glitch. He's pacing the stage. Oh, he is. What are you doing? Just sit end. down, 805. He needs help finding a seat, I think. Oh. We'll, we'll see. He's, he's just kind of chilling. Okay, he's back in the seat. Right. We're good. We're good. But a lot of unknown names here that can really come up Look because the thing is, is... Cherry's just like, nah. She's not about it. Not about it. All business. <laughs> but, there, you know, when you're thinking of it mathematically, though, right? I mean, you have these big three in this qualifier, but hey, fourth gets you nine points. And we saw that in a few few calls a few weeks ago where I remember it was the Herdsman. He literally got third every single time behind two really strong players. And that was such a consistent finish, it just popped him right into semifinals. So if there's a player that can just even get a consistent finish behind some of these players that are going to run, that's going to really bode well for them. Exactly. That's all you really need. Consistency is key, like you just said. You don't have to get first every time, but if you can manage to get a couple top three spots and then really stick in that five to five to three range, you're going to be just fine. Yeah, and if you're not familiar with how the, the points work for Mario Kart, basically the way I think about it is, is that third through tenth, you're going to get anywhere from ten points down to one point, or third through twelfth, excuse me. Uh, but then you get bonus points, you get twelve points if you get second, and then fifteen points, so basically an extra five on top of third if you win. So it's better, too, to get a, a first or a second to kind of cushion yourself if you have a bad race. So what you're saying is it's better to finish in first or second than in any of the other positions. I think so, actually, the way, the way you put it so eloquently. All right. That, that's a bold stance. That's yeah. the insider strats from it, a seasoned racing pro. Yeah. Did they teach you that in NASCAR school? I, I just learned that if you ain't first, you're last. So go fast. Always go fast. Yeah, I mean, it, it's very different, obviously. And with, with this being more of an arcade game, you got to factor into a lot of different things. And obviously, too, my biggest strategy for anyone brand new is use your X button if you can. Obviously, it's a little bit more advanced depending on where you are. You got to know, obviously, where you're driving ahead of you first before you can focus on what's behind you. But having those eyes in the back of your head is really going to help you if you are good and you feel like you're comfortable with the track that you're on. Exactly. That's what it's all about, being able to use that. I definitely don't look behind me enough when I'm racing. That's one thing that I notice when I'm watching all these guys out here. The seasoned pros, they're always using that X button to look back behind them. And then when I go out and race, I'm like, oh, I don't really do that. I need to do that more. Yeah, and it's something that you, you kind of acquire over time here. It looks like right now we are looking at Lucas Party, who has been coming here uh, religiously the last few weeks. Got a lot of energy, he's got the, the trademark purple hair. You can see the look, like the grimace on his face. He is excited. Here in 12th there on that ATV, Hammer Bro getting a little bit uh, bumped there by one of the other players here on the inkling in that, uh, that sports car. Now, are you a Hammer Bro, Boomerang Bro, or Fire Bro guy? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> well, oh, that's right, you're a PlayStation guy. You didn't play like yeah, all the no, normal I, Mario no, games. Yeah, this, I literally have this game in like, <laughs> like NBA 2K21 on my Switch. I literally don't <laughs> use my Switch for literally like anything else. I'm so, I'm so bad, I know, but like. That's fantastic. You're probably the one person who's big in this scene that also just. Yeah, I, I don't know anything. And like, I'm always hesitant when there's those trivia nights around here. And he, even like, Nor has a higher trivia knowledge. Oh yeah, Nor probably has more Nintendo knowledge than me at this point. But tell you what, back calf's looking pretty cool there. Got the face mask, the Mario hat, and. Immortal Man, I think, got saved there by that red shell as the blue shell hit him. There you go. Immortal Man's not going to complain about that, even though he is down to third place. Now the shot comes out. Not necessarily going to be the worst form at this spot. Cherry, meanwhile, in second place, trying to push up and challenge for that first place spot. That red shell's going to come out right there. Going to make contact. And Cherry is going to make her way in front of Glitch here. He drops down to third place with just a coin. And Glitch now moving up into second place. Going to go get that double box. That was huge, avoiding that, that gear kind of spinning. Has a bomb and a red shell. It's going to throw that bomb forward, but Immortal Man does get around it. You can see him kind of looking back a little bit. I think he notices that Glitch does have defense behind him, that red shell. So Immortal is just trying to hang on. Now, Immortal probably doesn't know what's behind Glitch now. And it's another red shell. Oh, this is going to be huge for Glitch. 
but I think Glitch might have fallen off, but this blue shell is gonna change everything. Immortal Man racing to the finish. Can he inch across the line? He does oh, it! Oh, he still gets it. Oh my word! How LOL well high there with off. second place. There must have been something crazy happening there in the second, third position. Bonda getting third, Hammer Bro fourth. Glitch going all the way down into the middle of the pack. And what also, I mean, this is just something I noticed earlier. But if you're a parent, you don't know what's going on. Immortal Man was kind of like going like this a yep. little bit. It's oh, because yeah. He's, it's because he's tricking with his controller, not by pressing the button to trick. Oh, so if okay. you notice people are going like this, like that's normal for this game. So don't worry. That's the motion control. It's the motion, yeah. He's got the, he just does his trick with his controller. I like using the buttons. Which one do you do? I use the buttons. Okay. But it's probably better to use the controller or use the motion, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Why is that? I, I have a really bad habit, a really bad grip on my controller because I shatter my left hand. And uh, it, free, it frees you up to focus on holding your items and drifting with the, your other uh, fingers on the right-hand side of the controller. All right. I didn't think of it that way. That's yeah, a good point. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> now, now, what do you think? Isn't it Jadata who plays with the entire motion control set and you see him going I, around like this? I think he does. I mean, there's other players that, that It's are someone well from that house. I think so, yeah. That. Someone from the Hush House does. It yeah. probably is to data. And I know, too, that uh, the best U U.S. player that does that is Roberto. And he's religious on the motion controls. Runs a very successful taco sh franchise here in Vegas. Yeah, I, I think that might be the same guy. He's very silent when I play with him, though. Meanwhile, but. here we got 805. Looks like he finished around mid-pack in that first race, but he is locked in here with his DK, Mr. Scooty. Oh, he didn't get a box, so he's just got to avoid players behind him that are really gonna take him out with something. He's gotta watch out for that Shy Guy trail of the green. Hammer Bro here in ninth, and you do see the results here from that first race up on the right-hand side of your screen. The Mortal, LOL High, Bonda, Hammer Bro, Cherry, and Mattress. Wow, there. where did Glitch finish? I think he got seventh. He did. 805 right behind him with eighth, Bat Gav in ninth, Super Wildcat, Chicken and Waffles, and Lucas Party following us out. Glitch right now, do you think he's bagging? Yeah, gl Glitch is bagging. Now, there's a few things that can happen, and this is what's so much fun about Dolphin Shoals, is you can sandbag for the shock, and then you can, you know, hit everybody off of the glider section, or even that technical section that comes up before that second item box set. But if you get a bill, and you bill right after the start-finish line, it's gonna take you out to the eel that we're gonna get to just a second ago, or in a few seconds here after this. Uh, oh, unfortunately, back half is getting absolutely destroyed, but right here with the Mortal Man in first, right after that second box set. So it's a huge, huge, look at the bill there in the bottom, the top right on the map of your screen, Glitch moving all the way yep. up right now. Oh wow, yeah, he is just moving. And so there's some of those spots on the map where you just have it timed out, where you know this is gonna get me farther. Exactly, so to the technical answer that's probably a little bit more eloquent is, is that the bill's gonna generally like last you, and I could be wrong, six to eight seconds, but there are places on certain tracks, Yoshi Circuit being one of them, if you have the bill, you use it there, you're gonna get an even bigger advantage from it. Mattress, meanwhile, in fourth right now, and it's Cherry in third. Oh, trying... shout out to the Banana Legion logo. I didn't mean to cut you off, but she's got the, the, the monkey and the banana. Uh, that's the team she plays for. And uh, I was curious to see if that logo would ever make the screen. So, Royal, if you're watching, uh, you, should, you should be proud. Hey, our production staff knows what they are doing. They try and get each and every team-affiliated player's logo up as soon as we can. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool logo, not going to lie. Uh, Shock did come into play there. It looked like there was another player that actually did the bill extension that ended up in the middle of the pack here. But LOL High right now, doing uh, pretty good. Also rocking the Alpine Stars shirt. It's kind of kind of hype, but going to take the win. Full High saying, there we go. Going to grab first place. Glitch going to end up in second this time. And Cherry going to take third. Yeah, and I was actually looking. I was, I mean, we kind of have the eye in the sky here of what all the players are doing. Mm -hmm. And I was just curious to see what second and third had to see if you would run away from it. So I kind of glanced down to see Glitch and Cherry. They didn't have much to counter that win. So really well done there by uh, LOL High. Really well done indeed. Not a name that we see very often out here, but I feel like he's been around before. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think I've seen him around. Could be wrong. I could be wrong, but... I mean, so could I. I, yeah. I feel like I'm reaching back and it just seems vaguely familiar, but he's definitely anything but a regular if he has been here before. Yeah, and that's a, that's a very technical track to, to take a win off of, especially with the shocks and then players coming up out of nowhere with those bills. So we'll have to see. We're waiting on a few players to go ahead and select random here, but I'm really digging the traffic tonight. I know that was something you brought up, but I do have to admit it's just... 
exciting to see all of this variation right now. I'm a huge fan of it as well, but also we have the on-deck racers here for race number, for qualifier number three. We got Zekio, JJ107. Cynic, who you said came all the way from Alabama. We got Lorenzo, Nikki Guns, Riding My Pidgey, Batter Cookie, Morzilla, Game Over 2020, Herdsman, Pink Rainbow, and GG Scott Shear. <laughs> Some great names. Seeing a lot of uh, new recurring players, which is exciting to see as well. Dragon Driftway is going to be where we're going. There's a cool couple of shortcuts here. You're going in through this like dragon's mouth, and then you're coming out of it, and you're going through all sorts of twists and turns. LOL High still leading this qualifier right now. Race number three of four is still halfway to go. Three points over Mortal Man. It's going to be seven back there. Glitches, that's where Glitch is at. Cherry is tied there as well. Mattress and Hammer Bro there tied in fifth, 13 points back. And there you go. You can see it right now. Bonda, Chicken and Waffles, and then 8.05. He's back in ninth with nine right now. Lucas Party, Bat Gavin, Super Wildcat rounding us out at the back, but still two races to go. Plenty of time to make your move up the pack as Hammer Bro here is in second place. Glitch is in eighth, but look at those items. Yeah, Glitch right now is kind of soft bagging a little bit is what we call it. He has really good items. He has the triple mushrooms and the star. And I think he's banking on dodging something here. Uh, and again, this is kind of like that midpoint of lap number two. It was a good guess, but I don't think Glitch is going to dodge. But he does move up into third because of it. Has to drop back down to fourth because that player does have that piranha plant. And that is deadly. Yeah, you want to avoid that. That is, let me tell you, one of the dangerous pieces of vegetation that are out there. Really, uh, really is. I mean, yeah. it's a sight to see. Huge dodge coming in. That's going to dodge three players. Donkey Kong, Princess, or Rosalina, rather, and the Yoshi in the back. LOL High here just kind of drag racing it out with Hammer Bro. Again, two names you normally don't see at the front. No, you really don't. Two names we're not quite familiar with, but they are doing a great job here. Hello, High could really do some damage deep into this ra deep, deep into these races. And the blue shell coming into play. That's going to take out Hello, High. Oh man, almost got knocked off. He was lucky there. He was on the bitty buggy, a little bit of a heavier cart that kept him on there. But now it's all Immortal Man. He has some defense behind him, and he is going to get that coin. So, oh, another shot coming into play. Wow. And the the Yoshi in the back knew what was going on, but they're not going to really be a factor. They're a little too far back at the moment. Cherry here. Going to go and get a box, and this box is so crucial because of the shortcut. Glitch has triple shrooms. We'll have to see what happens here. Glitch able to get right around, though, and it's Glitch going to... Oh, Glitch just takes oh, out Cherry. Oh, Glitch takes first. You could hear Cherry yelling right there. Oh, I would be mad, too. I mean, Glitch yeah. Glitch totally lifted. Still finishes in second. Cherry yeah, it's still, still a great finish. recover and take second. But, but Glitch totally lifted to hit her. Yeah. I mean, I'm not... I mean, you... I mean, oh, that was happened. purposeful. And so, For I mean... Sure. It, uh, if I was Cherry, I wouldn't forget that, and I would keep that in mind for uh, for future races with Glitch. Yeah, Cherry, Cherry's going to hold on to that beef, I know. Yeah, I, you, I forgive and forget after the night is over, but not during the night. And I, I make mental notes of who's, who's racing you, what type of way. I don't know. I think that the arena needs a Brooks Koepka, Bryson DeChambeau rivalry. Yeah, I don't know who it would be, though. I'll, really tell you, I'll tell you one thing, though. There's this, uh, you know, Woody Watts, who was subbing in for you, the Baby Park commentator, mm -hmm. has, uh, has a real beef with that Terry Violet guy. I know he hasn't really? been around. Yeah, I know those All two right. have been... Well, well, Terry Violet hasn't been here, but I know yeah. Woody Wyatt and some others have been going at it, though. Well, well, we'll have to see. I think Terry might be making an appearance again tonight, so... Well, yeah, and I, I heard Woody was going to be here tonight. Ooh, this until, could get awkward. It's news to me until yeah. you showed up that... But we'll see. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when it comes, you know? Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, I, I don't know. Ter Terry's, he got, he's got mood swings. Yeah, apparently. There's a reason he got fired from the Kentucky Derby circuit. Yeah, Tom Durkin's got nothing on him, apparently. Yep. And <laughs> we're back to Yoshi's circuit here for the final race of qualifier number three. And we're here with uh, Mattress. And I noticed, too, there were a few players right now that were wearing these blue and white jerseys. Mm -hmm. That had, uh, I think it was WLA on it. Okay, so blue and white, of course, the Storm Rush gaming colors. But those are not Storm Rush gaming jerseys. Yeah, no, Storm Rush Gaming, too, they're more of a, a darker blue mm -hmm. than, than that, if we're getting technical with the colors here, but... Do you have any info on this team? I do not, but right. uh, Glitch here is running this race for once. He's at 33 points. He actually, this whole... Okay, let's talk about this for a quick second. Yeah. Look at the scores. After three races, 34 is the highest out of a possible 45 points. So if anybody gets a bad race here, even in those top three, LOL High, Glitch, or Cherry, they might not even make it to semifinals, so... This is a do or die for literally all 12 players here. 
And that's what happens when you just don't have two players consistently running the table. Everybody's trading off on these spots. And it means that your point total as a lobby is going to be lower. And when you're qualifying against some of these other quals where some people are going to get 45, 55 points, it can be a real nightmare for you, especially with six qualifiers. Yeah, A for effort there by Glitch, trying to get hit by the Piranha Plant to avoid the hit of the Blue Shell. Hammerbro moving into second here. And a red has skipped Hammerbro and is going to hit Glitch. But you saw the lead that Glitch had. He is just as deadly running as he is sandbagging. And one of the Yoshis is actually moving up and dodge that shock. And this is the sandbag of all sandbag tracks. And Glitch, the sandbag master here, saying, no, I'm front running this one. Yeah, personally on my list, this is the number three best track to sandbag. I mean, obviously, like, dry, dry desert, cheese land, those are definitely going to be the top two. I knew, you but, would, I knew those would be the courses that immediately came but, up. Uh, but, I mean, you know, the bill strategy here, you see that player there in the back? But we got 805. We got 805 in fifth place right now battling it out. And, of course, as I say, that hits into a wall. He's got to avoid those greens, and he does. I think that's from... Cherry, he's just got to be very careful with those mushroom placements. I think placements. he hit a piranha plant, and he's going to be dropping down towards the back of the pack here as we see Immortal Man seeing if he can reel in Glitch. He is not. Glitch a mile ahead of his competition here. Immortal going to finish second, and it looks like Cherry got third. Oh, man, 805 there getting hit at the line. But, yeah, it was interesting. Immortal Man could have hit Glitch, but he opted to, to throw one back to kind of pressure off Cherry in third. And... Had another red that he could have thrown at Glitch later, but the, that, the gap that Glitch had, he kind of made that split-second decision, hey, I'm just going to reel off. Glitch kind of has this one. I'm just going to take those 12 points and just guarantee myself a semifinal spot. That's the smart strategy there. You're in quals. You don't need first. Save those items for defense. And I think LOL High had a rough race there. I think he finished as low as fifth or sixth. Yeah, that's going to be interesting because being in those, he was at 34 points. So as long as he kind of got a mid-pack finish, he should be okay being the, the points leader going into that fourth race. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see indeed. As meanwhile, we've got highlights from that qualifier right here for you now. And we got, of course, Cherry taking out Glitch there in that first race. But it would be Immortal Man making his way, trying to inch across the finish line like Ricky Bobby, getting out and running the rest of the race. He does take the win there on Thwomp Ruins, and this is Dolphin Schultz. Immortal Man taking the full hit there of that blue shell. And it is going to be LOL High taking that one down with Glitch and Cherry in tow there in second and third. Nice little pop-off there from him as well. Nice little pop-off indeed. LOL High having a really, really great qualifier. And here we saw, could this be the birth of the beef? Because Glitch absolutely lays up to get in range for that sound horn and take out Cherry. A uh, decent effort there from Glitch to try to avoid the blue shell hit, getting hit by the plant. But he did get a, enough of it to register. And Immortal Man cutting his losses there, hanging on for second there in that final race. Very wise tactical decision by him. Immortal Man going to be going on to semifinals, most likely. We'll have to see the scores, but definitely not worried about his position after all this. Let's take a look right now. We have the scores. Glitch with 48 points. LOL High with 43. He's going to be fine. Cherry with 40. She's going to be fine, most likely. And then Immortal Man 39, I'm also going to say, still going to be in that semifinal, not really sweating it to go to second chance range. Yeah, those top four are all separated only between nine points. Then in fifth place, you got Bonda there with 29. Likely would probably be seeing him again, as well as Mattress, but we'll have to see Hammerbro there with 26. 805, 25 points. I think 805 is going to have a little bit of a sweat for second chance. Battle. Yeah, that's going to be close. Back out there with 16 chicken waffles. Chicken and waffles there with 14. Super Wildcat there with 12, and Lucas Party there with 9. So there you go. That is qualifier number three in the books. We are halfway done with our qualifiers here. We have seen some really great racing so far. We really have, and there are still three more qualifiers left to go. So I'm really curious to see what we're going to be seeing out of qualifiers four and on. Qualifier four, we are going to be seeing Cynic as well. So we'll be exciting to see how this whole qualifier pans out coming up. And right now I'm being told Morzilla needs to head on up to the hype tunnel. That is who we are waiting for to get this next qualifier underway. Come on, Morzilla. I knew he was here. Yeah. You should know better. Man, so many lights. I... I'm, he I'm hearing people saying that he it has now arrived. So there we go. We're going to be ready for Qualifier 4 on the other side of this break. Brought to you by Finley Volkswagen down at the Valley Auto Mall. Don't go anywhere.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on back to the HyperX Esports Arena where we are getting ready for qualifier number four of Saturday Night Speedway 105. I'm Tom, he's Knight, and we just had a very brief chat with our new best friend, LOL High. Yeah, it, it was exciting to even just talk to him briefly. He mentioned that he is a Vegas local, and the way that he was racing with Glitch and Cherry, I mean, there's, like, just on the spectrum of Mario Kart players in general online, I mean, we're talking these are some very good upper division players. Not the pinnacle, obviously, but, you know, in that top 30-40% of the game and being able to run with them and get second in that qualifier, that's a good sign, especially going into the semifinals. Meanwhile, we got Lucas Party coming over here near us now. Oh, what's us up, Lucas? Loving the hair, my dude. Loving the hair. Yeah, just so much energy here every week and uh, it's killing the game right now. I mean, it's killing the game. a little bit distracting, but I'm all for it. It's, it's, a, it's a good problem to have. Indeed, indeed. And LOL High did answer our question. Has never been here, but like you said, he just found out about this place and decided, hey, I'm gonna head on down to the arena and take part in SNS, and we're glad he did. He was also asking us if 43 points was gonna be enough to get in the semifinals, and we had to assure him, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the, the total possible amount of points is 60. So even getting you know north of, I think, 35 is, in a relatively good position for you to be able to move on. Indeed, and we'll have to see, of course, six qualifiers. It does bump that number up a little bit, but not that much. For In the 40s, you're definitely moving on to semis. Yeah, and, and I think we were alluding to that in, in that qualifier, but that was a qualifier where there were four very evenly matched players rather than, you know, we saw like in the Sir 9 and Sneaks home where there were two players running away. Yeah. So there's a lot of deltas in these scores, and there's still plenty more qualifiers to watch. You're just going to have to see where your scores are just going to relatively line up with some of the other players that are competing in other qualifiers. That is right. We still have two qualifiers left here to go before we get to second chance. And the racers for qualifier number five, they are getting ready right now to get started here. This is, this is four. We still got, we still got this is qualifier three more. Four. You are right. But we got uh, Zekio, we got JJ107. From the Cruiser family? Oh, wow. Got a, got a squad here tonight. You always, whenever you mention JJ107, you got to wait and pause for a second. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a rookie move. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cruiser family. But Cynic as well, coming all the way from Alabama, getting some love here in the chat from, from Ty, Fen, uh, Babam. And uh, we have Lorenzo. We have Nikki Guns as well, who, by the way, uh, had this crazy run with uh, his sister, I believe Brooke, Rookie Guns. And they ended up going one, two a few weeks ago in to into Baby Park in the second chance. Mm -hmm. And they're also over there, um, I believe, with their dad with the, the Zaps. Papa Guns. Chips. Yeah, Papa Guns. And so check that out. It's in the, um, the Challenger Dome, I believe. So they got some cool stuff over there. All right, yeah. If you're in the arena, head on over and check them out in the Challenger Dome. Shout out to the 86 crew. In the meantime here, like you said, this is Qualifier 4 that we're getting ready for. It's been, a lo it's been a long day, man. It has, and I just realized, I mean, there, that we're not done there. We have Riding My Pidgey in this qualifier, Batter Cookie. We also have Morzilla. Okay, I paused. You I picked paused it up. Time. Let's you go. picked it up. All right, we got Gamer, Game Over 2020, Her The Herdsman, who's been on a, a little bit of a subtle tear in the tournaments lately. And then we got, uh, I believe, Pink Rainbow, and potentially, uh, of course, another player who is cut off by our monitor, so I apologize. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll call them out once we get into the race. Indeed we will, and we are getting ready to go here. The players are getting set up. They're about to start the race, it looks like, and by start the race, I mean get ready to go into the screen. And yep, they are gonna be headed in in just a few minutes. So we talked about, of course, some of the great racers that we've had so far. We've talked about how you got into racing and then kind of made that journey over to Mario Kart. Other than that, it really is just 2K for you. Uh, yeah, I mean, right now, I mean, it's the game that I just kind of play religiously is, is Mario Kart, but I do play a few other racing games. Um, I haven't reinvested into a wheel and pedal set to really get back into iRacing, although I'm getting pressured to. Mm -hmm. um, I want to really focus on more racing, like, in person, now that you can and things are opening up again. But we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, there's another game uh, by this really, like, small developer out of Mexico City that does Circuit Superstars. It's an arcade-based simulation racing game, which is kind of cool. I actually have a buddy who 3D printed his own wheel and pedal set. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, it was absolutely insane. He sent me snaps the whole time he was building it. I can't believe it came together. So we're gonna be 
Following on here, DKJ, uh, that 12th player I did want to shout out, that's going to be GG Scots here. And we were going to be on board here with a Donkey Kong Wiggler player. So we'll have to see who this is. This is going to be Nicky Guns. Nicky Guns himself. I can't tell if that's just the shadows or if he's rocking the shades while he's racing right now. Yeah, Meanwhile, just style oh, wow. Points. Speaking of style points, take a look there at the entire Pidgey Ensemble. I'm going to have to get a closer look at that shirt later. Yeah, so his shirt's pretty, pretty fleek, but uh, you also got to factor in. He's got the Fen poster and the Pidgey up there. We got Batter Cookie here in the Wario Bitty Buggy right now. He's kind of chilling here in fourth place. The toilet bowl. Yeah, the, or the toilet bowl, as yeah. you call it. JJ107. There you go. He's in, in fourth. fourth. Fourth place for JJ, and he's moving up. He's got the triple greens right now. Going to be some great protection. Throws one out right there as Cynic gets tossed off. Yeah. Hopefully, he and won't be tossed off the plane home from Alabama. Yeah, Cynic getting up, bumped off there. And, that, and that's one of the things, too. When you're coming to the arena for the first time, and, I mean, LOL High did a really good job of it, but you got to factor in all those other things, the lights, the, sometimes the smoke machines going off, the crowd. I mean, the Cruiser family, they're, they're not here... There you go. I mean, they're still loud even when their entire family isn't here. So you got to factor that in and the other elements of the crowd. I mean, it's kind of like a home field advantage type of a thing you got to get used to. Exactly. It is different. It's very different going from, you know, practice. You're just out there in an empty field versus going out and actually playing in a game in front of a packed house. This is the exact same thing. You're going from playing in your living room, in your bedroom, just playing online by yourself to boom. You are out here. The lights are on. This is the moment. And you just got to be ready for it. That's yeah, a lot different than online and players like Icon and Miles and Danny Fathom. You know, they they got used to it. A lot of them didn't uh, immediately get on the first try. They, they had to get accustomed to this style of play. But JJ107, though, in third. Pidgey here in first place with the blue shell is going to be coming in. Is he going to suicide here? No, he is not. He's going to throw that back. Oh, he could have actually bananaed himself. He's, oh. You can tell. You look at his face of regret. And Batter Cookie's going to steal the win from that. There you go, Batter Cookie. You also talk about Sleek. Look at that hair. And then Pidgey's here in second. And JJ takes third in that race. Yeah, good run there from JJ. We got uh, the Fen me in full force. Fen is a player from Kentucky uh, for PH and couldn't be here. So his me is there in uh, Memoriam, I guess. I don't know. Okay, I was gonna say like memorial. Memorial pride, yeah, not not a good word. Choice, <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, I was it, I was first saying that. Like, as uh, what's the what's the word? In uh, a tribute, but like he's he's alive and well. Don't worry. Okay, good. Yeah, we're good. We're good. good. Very very glad to hear that you have. He's, me he's for in a the second. chat. He's talking. Okay. Hey, I know that guy. Let's go, Fen. Okay, good, Fen. He, we we are very glad to hear you're okay. <laughs> that was a bad word choice. I yeah. apologize. <laughs> for someone's like, oh, oh don't no. Don't worry, I'm not dead. <laughs> All right, let's see where we are going for race number two of qualifier number four. We're going to, is that the Electrodrome? Electrodrome, yes. And fun part about this track is it's like a nightclub, and nightclubs yeah. are now open in Vegas, so they I'm are. excited to see what's going to happen here. Uh, there's a lot of shortcuts and also the glider section, so there could be a potential shock over the glider that really kills somebody's race. This is Lorenzo here, also in the Sports Coupe Villager Girl loadout. And I think that's the standard tires, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll see how he's doing here in third place. We will see. We got Pink Rainbow here taking the scenic route a little bit. Look but at those hey. Piranha Plants, though, on beat together. They are I on mean, beat. she's really getting the full experience. Game over 2020. Meanwhile, here rocking with the full link loadout in 10th place here, trying to move up the pack. And you can see those stores from the first race. We got Batter Cookie, who took first. Pidgey in second, JJ in third, and Lorenzo taking fourth there. Nikki Guns took fifth, and Cynic finishing us off with sixth. Yeah, so Nikki Guns here in fifth place in this race, fifth overall. Trying to take out JJ and Batter Cookie, gets both of them. Uh, that's going to be Batter Cookie there with the boomerang, JJ with another item, but then his item got booed, so he's defenseless here in fifth, just trying to get to this next item box. Meanwhile, Morzilla's up in fourth place right now. And you can hear that crowd going wild for him. Yeah, you can tell Cynic's still getting a little bit used to it. And the fact that both members of the Cruiser family are in this qualifier could definitely really throw a wrench into things. Batter Cookie, though, here with an air horn, sound horn rather, and a green shell here in third, kind of neutralizes him a little bit. But 
We're going to have to see what else is in play from some of these other players in the back. Ops to hold on to the green shell going through the item box here. Gets a mushroom in place of that bolt horn. And now Cynic might just be starting to feel it. He's up to second. So we are here with Cynic, who is in first. Yeah, the chat is going on fire for Cynic, I think, and Fen, for that matter. And so Cynic here in first. I think his air horn might have... I don't know what just happened as we're looking at uh, the chat and Fen, but I don't know if his air horn got stolen or if he had used it, but now he's going to have to chain. Pidgey's behind him, though, with a red shell and a banana trying to take down his teammate. Morcilla, unfortunately, falling off there. Miss drifts the wrong way, but does have two more mushrooms and is able to get a double item box here. Cynic here in first. The red's coming in. He is going to get hit out by Pidgey. And also look at Batter Cookie trying to come into the mix here. Pidgey's gonna take the win. It's gonna be a photo finish there for second between Batter Cookie and Cynic. Batter Cookie steals it from Cynic. Cynic gonna be able to get third. All right, Cynic clearly though adjusting in, playing really well, starting to get towards the top of the pack. Chat is certainly loving him, and I know we saw at least one RIP fan in there. Yeah, so we'll have to see. <laughs> I might have just ended Fence's career. I totally apologize. But he's he's still alive and, and well and also for Cynic, too, a good recovery there for him. And Batter Cookie, great job just kind of staying gritty, getting that second place finish away from Cynic as Pidgey was kind of doing a lot of work trying to reel in first place there. Pidgey getting that first play, place, but let's take a look in at our next qualifier here. Two races down, two to go. And in the next one, we got Sheriff Brett, Principal Dave, a lot of authority in this next qualifier. Jackal, Ankles, Two Swing Sheen, 13, Jadex, Jabizi, Tigre, Bear, two inches mo, and 70 mile. This is gonna be a huge qualifier coming up. And oh man, I wanna see the look on Pidgey's face right now. If we can get like, you know, the crew to, to kind of zoom in on Pidgey right now. You there it was is. time trialing this for so long today. He hates this track. Fen, I'm glad you're alive. And we're gonna go into Donut Plains 3. Let's, we gotta see how Pidgey's gonna approach this first turn. He's been practicing this all day. All eyes are on him. No pressure. Here he goes. Can that practice pay off? He's been waiting for this moment. Pidgey's already in third here. And I'd say the thing that you're trying to practice most here is that just getting around these shortcuts. Uh, yeah, that was like a C minus uh, NIST, no item shortcut is what they call it. A few of the skilled players, they can actually cut around that turn, but Pidgey was also bumped wide a little bit. You can't really hold that too much against him. Lorenzo here in third with greens and then a mushroom behind. Throws the greens off. Oh, gets bananaed. But think about this, though. Pidgey and Batter Cookie, though, already in the lead here. Tied for first in this qualifier. And JJ there in third. JJ in third. There's some popping off going on right now. I don't know what's going on. I have on. a strong feeling that relates to the NBA Finals. To who? The NBA Finals. Oh, the I NBA have a finals. strong feeling that was what was going on up in that well, section. Well, Pidgey did just dodge the blue shell. There you go. So that is, uh, that's great for Pidgey here. As Again, he's got all of the space in the world right now. This has to avoid some of those calamity items coming from the back batter cookie here in fourth trying to move his way up. Batter Cookie moving his way up right now, as you said. But meanwhile, Pidgey in first, trying to make those. Oh, no, Pidgey's no longer in first. He's fallen victim to two stars. It's Cynic who's taking the lead, but has to pop the mushroom before the boo can take it from him. He's still going to cross the finish line in first, and it is going to be Pidgey hot on his tail. Man, Pidgey there, unfortunately, falling there to Cynic as Pidgey did have the lead for a majority of that race, but it is gonna be Batter Cookie in third, JJ107 in fourth, Morzilla and the Cruiser family rounding out that top five. There you go, that is gonna be your top five out of that third race. We still have one race left to go, right? Yeah, this is gonna be pretty crazy to see how this is going to play out, but regardless, this has been uh, an incredible qualifier to watch. Just a lot of different situations kind of heating up and. I think we're seeing Sand kind of getting adjusted. Pidgey had a lot of eyes on him because he was time trying this track earlier today for... Hey, that second place finish, that, that's quality there. Pidgey should be happy with the practice paying off. Yeah, he, he, very, he very well should. Cynic's very skilled at that track. I mean, Cynic, by the way, he is not only on Division 5 of, of Pirate Hackers, but he also is my teammate uh, on the Division 1 200cc team. So he's one of the tr first ever, I think, traveling Division 1 players that's come to the arena besides Super Effects. 
you, who had taken a few wins here. You mean to tell me you psychos actually race on 200cc for fun? I, I don't like it at all. I don't think it's fun. I just pull lightning, and that's how I got onto the good team and <laughs> got a gold banner. And I got my two gold banners, and I was kicked, and I'm totally okay with it. There you go. You, you did your job, and you were like, all right, yes, I'm out. I did. Another repeat track coming up here. We got Trainbow Road again. Trainbow, yeah, this is going to be a front-running track. This is going to be good for Pidgey and Cynic up in the front. And if you're somebody like, you know, Morzilla, JJ, Batter Cookie, Nikki Guns, you know, those are some contenders here in this one. You know, you're going to want to keep up the pace with them. Pidgey is leading this qualifier overall by two points over Batter Cookie. Cynic is there in third with 32 points. JJ there in fourth, 28 points, 11 back from Pidgey. Lorenzo and Nikki Guns are going to be rounding out the top six. All right, you heard it there. And by the way, yeah, it was the NBA Finals they were popping off about. I think uh, KD hit a buzzer beater. Yeah, I think some people were saying KD was going to take that one down. I honestly have not been paying attention to the NBA Finals. But Zekio here is in fifth right now in the Waluigi Biddy Buggy, the toilet bowl combo, and has a, oh, unfortunately, the, the sound horn, but timed uh, the chain chomp a little bit incorrectly there. And, got smashed. Yep, just bad luck there. Meanwhile, Lorenzo is in fourth place. Batter Cookie in third right now, crossing over into this final section. He's been doing well, though, in the standing. Should be just fine going on to the finals. It's Morzilla in sixth right now, trying to get one of those top half spots in the table. Fires that red shell back behind him. Might have taken out Pidgey right there. I saw some Donkey Kong hit fur flying. And it's Cynic up in second place. So I'm not sure there might have been a second Donkey Kong. So not Yeah, that sure was, was, I think, Nikki Guns getting hit first. Cynic passes Pidgey for the win. And yeah, that was a good drag there from Morzilla. But Pidgey able to hang on there for second. Batter Cookie third. JJ fourth. And we'll have to see who got fifth. I don't know. A really great qualifier from JJ. Yeah, yeah, for sure. JJ's had some, some breakout runs uh, in certain SNSs and and is, is one to look out for. Uh, looks like I think that, yeah, he, he's also ranked. I can get into that a little bit later. It's a little bit complicated. <laughs> All right, well, right now we, ha we do have something uncomplicated, and that is some highlights from this last qualifier that we've just had here. We, of course, started off on DK Jungle. Batter Cookie getting hit right there, but it was Pidgey trying to take the lead, gets blue shelled, and then didn't he get blue shelled again immediately on that same lap, gets hit there, realizes he could have self bananaed and instead Batter Cookie takes first. Yeah, I, I thought he was gonna banana himself with that first banana, and then there was a second one there. Nikki Guns here working his way up through the pack. This is Cynic getting a really clutch uh, air sound horn there, gonna take down that blue shell. Lucas, do you have a bloody nose? Okay, I hope you, hope you feel better. Lucas playing hurt here, I respect yeah. it. Staying true to the game, playing, uh, playing uh, under injury. Pidgey there, Fen very well much alive, unfortunately falls back to second. Cynic trying to avoid that green shell, that's what that crazy back camera spam was. Uh, that's not really well liked uh, wow. in these parts, but again, Lucas. a huge win there for him though on Trainbow. Let me tell you, when it comes to some of this, like the back spamming and the players getting out, it feels very unwritten rules of baseball y to me. Let people have fun. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's you know, where I stand on it. Yeah, just, just race the way you want to be raced. If you yeah. want to race dirty, like, I don't mind getting raced dirty, but just know that that's coming. Like, yeah. I know, I mean, as it's far part as. part of the game. From what I've seen, the only thing that really sticks out to me right now is uh, Glitch stopping to Airhorn Cherry. So Cherry's just got to be aware of that. In I the, also kind of just like that. Yeah, I, I like, I like, it like too. the I mean, sauce. That's the fun part. They get saucy. I respect that. Yeah. Let's take a look in at the scores now from Qualifier 4. Riding my Pidgey finishes off in first place with 51. Cynic with 47, tying him with Batter Cookie. JJ 107, 37 points. Lorenzo 30, Nikki Guns 26, Morzilla 25, The Herdsman 22, Zekio 19, and then Game Over 2020, Scott Shear and Pink Rainbow rounding us out. Man, I'm just, as you were reading those down, it's just the breakdowns of these scores are so unique. And it's making me wonder, maybe the upper 20s, it's going to be that second chance cutoff. I don't know. I mean, we're, we we'll still have got to see. two more qualifiers to go, and that number is going to continue to dynamically change. And right now, we need Jadex and 13 to head on up to the hype tunnel. We are waiting for Jadex and 13 right now, guys. Yeah, this is qualifier number five. Sheriff Brett, I believe, is one of 
uh, Abby's friends. I don't know if there was, I was supposed to memorize something about a bet, or maybe I could be wrong, but be curious to see how Sheriff Brett's going to do. But we also have Principal Dave, Jack XL, Ankles, Two Swing Sheen, who I believe, according to Noor, is a trapeze artist. Yes, he is. Uh, 13, Jadex Jabizi, Tigre, Mr. Scooty. And then we have Two Inches Mo, and there is going to be a 12th player there as well. So I'm really excited to see what happens. I am too, but right now we're going to toss it to a quick break. And when we come back, Qualifier 5 is going to be coming at you. Brought to you by Finley Volkswagen down at the Valley Auto Mall. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on back. Our players are walking down the Hive Tunnel right now. You can see Jadex there. He was locked in, headed down that tunnel. Here on Saturday Night Speedway 105, the crowd is making some noise for our competitors out here as we get ready for qualifier number five. Yeah, a lot of these players have actively been watching on, knowing what to expect scoring-wise, what they need to hit to be able to, generally speaking, move on. And obviously, even qualifier number six after this is going to have a much bigger say in that as well, as we'll probably be able to analyze the bubble situation and things like that. But a lot of really strong players here in this qualifier. This could go any which way and should make for some very exciting racing. I think that this qualifier is going to be very similar to qualifier number three, where all these scores are going to be relatively close to even. I, I, I'm in complete agreement with you. I don't think that we're going to see any one player running away with it, consistently getting those points. I'd be surprised if we get a player above 50. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's for sure possible. But we're going to be, for sure, taking a look very deeply into this qualifier, all 12 players getting ready to go, uh, really hoping that the RNG's track selection really keeps hitting stride like it has been all night. By the way, Lucas Party just passed our waitress, Abby, and they are the same height. Really? Yeah. No, I, yeah, I saw you turn, I was like, what, what's going on? But <laughs> Lucas, Lucas Party has so much energy, it's so exciting to see. Oh, I love that kid. I, I, some of the, the young people that we have coming out here, like the super young ones, have the most energy, and they are just so into it and get so excited for it, I absolutely love it. Yeah, it's, it's just exciting to see, and they come back every week now, and it's just cool yeah. because the, the community is, is growing yet again, and there's, especially in the last several weeks, kind of as the pandemic's been kind of easing up a little yeah. bit, here in Vegas at least, just so many new players that are just constantly coming back that you have to watch out for. I, I was very surprised. I mean, six qualifiers, we're back, we're back in business. This is what it was, free our break. And then now here we are back and packing the house once again. Yeah, it's, it's been crazy just to see the, the, the level of turnout throughout even parts of the pandemic too, where there have been spikes and then consistently since things have been opened up since June, just everybody coming through when they can. It's been great to see and it's been great to have these awesome crowds with us yet again. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. Yeah, the crowd is definitely on today. We got the left side over here in the stadium. Let's go left side. We got some hype on the left side. What and about you, right side? Who do you think's more hyped? I think off of sheer numbers, it could be the left side. But what's funny is, a few weeks ago when I was casting, it was all the right side, mm -hmm. all day. All day. And then, and then the left was, was having to pick it up, but not anymore. Well, left definitely picked it up. Right side's going to have to pick it up this time around, I think. Looks like we are getting ready for some races here. Some players just making some final card adjustments, and then we'll be getting into track selection. Like you said, stacked qualifier. Give me a prediction. Who do you think is coming out on top in this one? Yeah, I actually have to look down and, yeah. and take a quick look at this. I would honestly say keep an eye out there on Tigre and Jadex to be both in the top three, but you're going to be seeing you know, 13, uh, potentially Mr. Scooty Jabizi there. You can't forget Ankles and Sheen. And yeah, there's a lot of different players. Mo as well. He had a great run either a week or two weeks ago. I don't think he showed up last week, but it was it was recently he had a really strong run. So this could go any which way. I know a couple weeks ago, Jadex had a phenomenal 
Grand Prix. He had a phenomenal SMS. Look for him to do more of the same. I think he is getting ready to break out and grab that title. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what can be done and what's possible here from this group because it's not going to be easy. I think this could actually be one of the harder groups of the night. We will have to see. They're getting ready to race. It looks like we are just about ready to go through. And reminder, remember to pick random on your map selection. Yes, SNES Rainbow Road is a great track, but picking random uh, is going to be the a move requirement. as it's in the rules. But we're getting ready to go into it. The roulette is picking this track. Where are we going to end up? Let's find out. Is it not going to be SNES Rainbow Road? We're going to Ice Ice Outpost. Ice Ice Outpost, also known online as the Meat Locker. The Meat Locker, yeah, why is that? It's cold, and that's where you put all of your stuff, I guess. I don't know. I never made the name. I just know that that's what the name is. Gotcha. But uh, a lot of really cool things on this track. You have that little small shortcut at the end. It's very strong for runners, and you also do have the glider section there at the very end. And now we're going to be looking in on Two Swing Sheen in his signature Cat Peach. Yeah, the Cat Peach land ship and blue rollers. Sheen here out in sixth place. Who also, I believe, in uh, Sheen's first attempt made it into finals. Uh, has been kind of in different positions since then. Jadex are going to be getting hit out, though, here back into the mid-pack. But a lot of movement already, but it does look like there is one player breaking out there to the lead. A little tough of a start there for Jadex, but you're right, one player starting to lead as Bear here is going to be in third, trying to move up the pack here. You can see his signature Bear mask, but it's Tigre, the nine-toed assassin in first right now. Yeah, Tigre here in first place. He and I got recently drafted to Team Kazakhstan in the online <laughs> underground Mario Kart League, apparently. Very so nice. that, that's going to be exciting. I'm excited to be his teammate for once, representing the baby blue cyan and yellow, I guess, Kazakhstan's colors. I, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, so that, that'll How be a that work? Be a you trip. just assigned a country? We had a vote, and I guess like half the team wanted to be Kazakhstan. All right. I don't know. That's fair. But Ankles here, who's played in over 200 events online, is trying to work his way up. This is one of the first times, too. I haven't seen Ankles in uh, the signature Daisy loadout. He's playing that character. Sheen, though, trying to red out that player up ahead of him there in that fifth, sixth position to no avail. This is Jabizi, though, here in third, and it's going to unfortunately get red. It got rid of his defense as the red was tracked to him, so he's going to fall all the way back to about fifth or sixth. Fifth place right here for Jabizi. Meanwhile, 70 mile in third right now, getting red shelled right there. That's rough. Going to drop him down to sixth, and then the shot comes out. That was all bad news, Bears. Yeah, that is going to be really unfortunate there for Sheen, who's going to get run over. The entire group behind him has all gotten items. And since he was shocked before, or after the boxes, rather, not going to get anything. But Bear is going to be able to run over here and hang on, get first. Good pop-off. Wow, you could hear that from a mile yeah, away. Yeah, you could hear that one. And unfortunate there for, for Sheen, but uh, everybody else kind of recovering. They're having a decent run there. Jabizi, Tigre, likes of them. Yeah, Jabizi, Tigre, both finishing in that third, four spots. But Bear... Definitely pumped getting that first place victory. Yeah, I wish I knew where Bear was when that shock had come out. If he was kind of up in those those top spots, as there's stuff going all. all oh well, we got here. we got a mortal man over here in our lounge just tossing stuff. Yeah, Dude, you, way to go, mortal. You, you you made it to semis. Like your score was great. You don't have to get angry. You don't have to throw things. He's in complete denial. And complete denial, denial. by the way. That's the first stage of grief, Immortal Man. You might need to go. Oh, it's an accident. Okay. Sure it was. Sure. Sure it was. All right. <laughs> we are going to Hyrule Castle. Really am digging the map selection tonight. We've said it a bunch of times already, but we've gotten some good ones. Yeah, this is going to be another really good map, especially too. And I'm also thinking, I know there was a few players that had some really unique loadouts. JDX has the inward bike. This is Jackal right here, who, oh, I forget the name of this card, but it's legendary. And you also got to think, too, that with the, some of the shortcuts on this track, there's also one of the players, I believe that was 70 Mile, playing on the Duke, which is something you never see at SNS. Probably the first time I've seen this in SNS so far. But yeah, is 70 that... Mile here in six, just, oh, unfortunately getting hit as he was turning, going all the way back to 11. Is that bike the Duke? I believe so, yes. That's incredible. It's not the, the most meta. 
type of vehicle, you're, you're, per you're se. You're picking that for style. But yes, it's aesthetically amazing. And he's, he's playing well on it. So, yeah. you know, whatever floats your, floats your boat. I agree with that. As we see, there's a new sheriff in town, Sheriff Brett, here in eighth place right now. Interestingly enough, playing is Wario, and he's going to drop all the way down to 12th. Yikes. Yeah, I know Abby's probably going to be looking on to see how uh, her friend does there. And we do see those scores again in the top right. Just keep an eye out on those as we're going to be going through races tonight. This is 13 here in seventh place. A little bit of an uncommon situation for him. T Gray now is who we're moving to here in that second, third position, battling there with Sheen. And it's going to be Jadex dropping out there for the blue. It's going to track to T Gray, and it hits Sheen in the entire group. Oof! So this is going to be huge as we're going to have to see who is actually broken away out of that pack. It's going to be Jadex behind. So obviously proving to break out from that blue shell proved to be beneficial. And you got Jabizi there in, in second, second, third. That might have been 13 there. Might have been 13 indeed, but it's Jabizi in second trying to chase down Rosalina in first. And there's only one racer I know who rolls with the Rosalina loadout. So I think that is Jadex up there in first place. He's got triple bananas and a rupee. Yeah, and that was actually Bear that was in the middle of that pack. But Jadex here, going to try and chain here for another item. That's pretty smart. Tigre, unfortunately, getting hit, going to the back. Jadex, though, still in the lead here at the moment. You can see on the mini-map, Bear now here in fourth. Where is he going to throw this bomb? Throws it over the shortcut. Unfortunately, it's a little bit out of the way for people. So it won't play too much of a factor. Jadex getting blue-shelled. Oh, no. Is he able to hang on? He is not. He's going to take second. Jabizi, Jabizi grabs first. taking the win. But second place going to be a quality finish there for Jadex. You don't need to win in quals. You just need to put up a good score. Bear gets third. And then we saw there two swing Sheen in fifth. Yeah, that was an incredible finish. And this is just going to continue to shake the standings up so much more. I mean, Bear getting, I think, third or fourth. We'll have to see you know, how that'll pan I out think after he got his third. win. Yeah, so we'll have to see. I mean... This is going to continue to shake up the standings. Indeed it will. But right now, let's take a look in at the on-deck racers. We have one qualifier left to go. We got the Chimposter. Zavgo lost. JJ107 again. Sports Joey. Disney KP. Mr. Scooty. Zerple. Cheese. Heroic and Damo. Oh, so we just found out that Damo is Lucas Party's grandpa making All right. his, uh, his entrance into things. So uh, he's getting excited. Yeah, get ready to go oh, up there to the ready. hype tunnel. Man, and it's great, oh, too. I can't wait for this. That's just what I like about SNS. Is what? What? I'm being told. What? Oh, my God. Nor is in the oh, chat. Oh, no. He figured out how to use Twitch. He figured out how to use Twitch, and he's asking a very good question. <laughs> Six quals and no chair for Tom. I'm loving this. That's what he yeah, said. No chair. Don't know what to do with my hands. Don't know what camera I'm looking at. It's definitely, <laughs> SNS is for sure evolved. We're, we're heading to Water Park, but the chat is, again, I feel like we haven't done the chat justice tonight because the chat's been popping off. Yeah, I think the problem has been like, I, I can't really see it. Yeah, it, but hey, what, let's get to the racing here. Sheen here is in six there with a mushroom. I can barely hear uh, out of my ear right now <laughs> either. But. Going to have some, some shrooms there to be able to make use of this shortcut here. Oh, but he gets hit with some residual fire. He's going to get bumped all the way back to about eighth place. Meanwhile, player name, also known as Bear, UNLV, here in third place. Bear in third right now. Tigre in second with a plantain for some protection and gets a red shell as well. First place for him right now. That is a great loadout to have. Jadex coming up right on his tail. We'll see what Jadex has. Jadex has a green shell trying to drag it and manages to get up into first. Uses the green shell for some defense. But that's another red there for Tigre. We'll have to see if Jadex managed to pick up any items to use in his own defense here as two inches Mo grabs the double item box here. Fall into sixth place, but still has a chance as we come around on the lap. Yeah, it looked like Bell, Bear, Bear fell there as we do see the standings here in the right hand side of the screen. Super tight. Obviously, that's still going to be changing. And you've got to watch out on the draft for this track because we saw that Jadex was pressuring a Tigre at that moment, actually. Tigre had to go wide. Looks like Tigre has actually moved back into first. Meanwhile, behind him, though, Jadex is scheming with this bomb. So we're going to have to watch to see where this is going to be placed as we're here on the final turn. Good throw there from Jadex. 
It's not going to hit Tigre, though, and that's not going to actually hit third place on back. But Tigre able to hang on here for first place. It's going to be Jadex crossing the line there in second, and a slew of Waluigi's there third through fifth. And there you have it right there. Jadex going to finish in second, like you said. Ankles in fourth. He was one of those Waluigi's. Like you said, we got the slew of them out right now. Yeah, I totally thought Ankles was going to be coming in here as a Daisy player. Daisy's been his Mario Kart main for such a long time, but apparently not. He's going back to the meta now. Hey, sometimes you got to go meta to get ahead. That's just what it is. You got to forgive the style, say, okay, this might be what I'm known for, but I got to abandon it here because I just need a good race out of this one. And he had that, a fourth place finish. That's going to be very nice. Yeah, and there is actually a, a new team online that's being created by some players here that likes to abandon the meta. No, Jadex is now a part of it called uh, Post Meta. So be curious. I mean, hey, his loadout works well for him. He's used to it. And there are a few players that are in the scene that actually can play well. There's one of them that I follow, it's Soldier, that still sticks with the purple inkling, which is what I used to start with. And he's somehow extremely good. Ace team man with Shy Guy. And these players have just crafted and mastered these tiny little characters. They really have, and right now we just see the on-deck racers one more time. Chimposter, Zavgo, Lost Sports, Joey, Disney KP, Mr. Scooty, Zerple, Cheese, Heroic, and Damo. And we just barely made it through that before the start of this next race as we have Principal Dave laying down the law here in his Dry Bones. Dry Bones Circuit Special. I'm wondering if this is like a, like a school or maybe Principal's, how that kind of ties into uh, his name. I mean, we got some authority here between him and Sheriff Dave. We do, we do, definitely, uh, you know, a lot of authority. Jabizi, though, also uh, staking his claim after taking a win down in this qualifier. There's 70 mile again on the Duke. It's just a sight to see. Tigre, though, at the front here, going into the final race, up by one point over Jabizi. Bear down by two points to Tigre. Mo down by four points to Tigre. Jadex down by about six points. And Ankles is still about... 14 points, still mathematically, could uh, take first here, although there's a very low chance of that happening. As we see 13 here, the mask might be gone, but the Plague Doctor remains. You can see it right there in his, uh, in his player cam. Yeah, this has been uh, quite the showing here. We're on the halfway point here of this track. Shock coming into play. Oh, man, Brett cannot get to that mushroom that fell down that was originally his. And we're seeing a few players here moving up from the back. One of those being a Waluigi, but Jadex here in the middle of the pack, trying to make something happen, has a mushroom followed up by a retro, but gets trailed by that oh. banana. He's oh. still got one lap to go, though, to try and make it back. That's not the end of the world at all, as Tigre has to narrowly avoid his own bob -omb there. Yeah, I mean, he, he was an uh, assassin, and that was a targeted move for sure for him. Mo, though, in first with this sound horn, actually uses that on the player hitting him. Fire coming into play. We had Tigre and likely Ankles up there in the top three. That red actually hits out the player that inherited first. And then we have a new Waluigi Scooty up there who is dragging a red shell and likely Bear or 13, I would think, in second place. Tigre, meanwhile, in first with the red and the green combo coming around the final couple of turns here. He's got plenty of defense and even some offense if he needs to use it if someone manages to pass him, but I don't think they will. That red shell is gonna easily be defended and he's gonna fire that green behind him as Tigre takes first once again. Yeah, huge there for Tigre, Bear, Mo there getting third. I mean, this is such a close qualifier and we're gonna see what the official results are gonna be looking at in just a little bit, but it's just Indeed. was insanely close going into that final race. A whole bunch of different racers taking up victories. The standings were never quite solidified. Players just moving back and forth, up and down. Let's take a look at the highlights right now of what was a wild qualifier number five. Of course, we got started here on Ice Ice Outpost. Jabizi getting carded a little bit there, but not as bad as Two Swing Sheen got carded right there, going from first to eighth, and Bear taking home the win. Yeah, good job there by Baron. I don't think we saw a whole lot of Sheen in some of those later races. This blue shell took out at least four or five players, and it's what allowed Jabizi to go in and get the win. When the second blue shell hit Jadex, and Jabizi taking that one pretty cleanly. And here is Mo here with this Soundhorn taking out that Boo player. And now Tigre here sliding to the win here on Water Park over Jadex. Yep, Jadex just barely missing out right there, but he did have some quality races, but here on Thwomp Ruins, it was all about the Tigre.
Tigre, I mean, there were so many lead changes on Thwomp Bruins. Tigre just kind of timed everything right, got out in front, had the defense that he needed, and that was it for him. So really good job there by Tigre and a good run for him as well as, you know, things were, were kind of progressing. I just caught the corner of my eye, or a champion from last night, uh, Mr. Uh, MVD himself, they're probably cheering on uh, Bear. There you go, MVD taking home one of our Friday night fights, victories. Yeah, yeah it took down, uh, you know, Friday night knockdown, and Knockdowns. we had uh, Hungry Box coming in for a little bit there as well, not to mention a lot of the other regulars. There was Ven, Frog, Foe, and Dakbo was there as well. It was, it was really exciting to watch, so great, great job to him. That was his first uh, local win here in Vegas. There you go, hopefully many more for him coming. As meanwhile, we have one more qualifier to get through here before we are on to second chance. We still have to wait for the scores from qualifier number five and what a tight one it was. Whole bunch of great racing just as we thought we would have. Let's take a look at the scores right now. We have them here, Tigre finishes with 48, Bear with 43, Two Inches Mo with 39, Jabizi with 37, Jadex with 33, Ankles with 27, Two Swing Sheen 25, 70 Mile with 24, 13 with 19, Jackal with 16, Sheriff Brett with 12, and Principal Dave holding down the back with five. Wow, that was a very close qualifier. A lot of those names really in the top six to eight have a chance to, to really move on. Really unorthodox from 13 though, getting a 19. That's probably a, just a little bit of a wash. You know, I've had, I've had situations like that. You know, you just got to bad night. That was a tough qualifier, too. Hey, sometimes it just happens. It's not your day. Some days you're the dog. Some days you're the hydrant. This is so wholesome, too. Lucas Party was coming up here as you're reading the scores, getting his, uh, his grandpa all set up, he is ready to go. He's up his grandpa right now. And maybe giving some last-minute tips as well. But that's just so cool about SNS, right, is you have it's the, a the younger affair. crowd. Yeah, you have the older crowd, the parents that, you know, Back when I was younger, like it was hockey for me in the Northeast and the mm -hmm. parents would stay at the rink, but there's like lots of parents that just chill here. They go to the bar and they just watch their kids play Mario Kart all night. So it's pretty, pretty hype. So shout out to the parents who- Yeah, shout out to the parents. Uh, yeah. Let's there go. We go. All yeah, right. I mean, they sacrifice their weekend here for, for their kids. It's great. Yeah, they do. And right now we have Qualifier 6 coming up right after this. We will be right back. Brought to you by Finley Volkswagen down at the Valley Auto Mall. Don't go anywhere. This is Saturday Night Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on back to Saturday Night Speedway 105. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one qualifier left to go. But first, let's take a look in on the bubble, where we currently stand in our scores. And right now you see the 35 number that's around that magic point. Ariel Apostle, Big B, Brando, and Saps all safe. Jadex just inside, playing into the second chance with Riley there. But it looks like those scores, I'd say around 37 is going to be your safe number here. What do you think? 37 for sure is going to be safe. The crazy thing about this is, is that with those 35s and those 33s, that could trigger a tiebreaker, potentially. We'll have to see how everything plays out based off of this qualifier. But a lot of duplicate scores just makes you wonder what could happen there. And then you're kind of going in through Jadex down to Riley, who are looking like they're going to be going in a second chance with a low 30. Again, Jadex tied there with Sap, so you never know what could happen in that situation. Then you got Super Mario action, Lorenzo, Bonda, Peach Blossom, Mattress, and Ankles. They're looking like they're probably going to be solidified into that second chance, but we'll have to see. There's still time for somebody in qualifier number six to displace them. Meanwhile, let's take a look in. Oof! Look at that scoreboard down at the bottom end, just barely clinging on right now. A three-way tie with 25 points between 805, Morzilla, and Two Swing Sheen. So if three players manage to get up there and knock out, oh, that is going to be tough. We will have to see. But right above them, Nikki Guns and Hammer Bro with 26. They are going to be sweating this one out as well. And 70 Mile, Herdsman, and Doge Master 
Sorry, guys. Better luck next time just barely missing out. Yeah, this is going to be interesting to see what players are going to be at that mid to upper 20 range that can still at least keep their night going on into second chance. So that is going to be exciting to see. And we're going to be getting into this first race. It looks like we're going to be heading back to Ice Ice Outpost. All right, there we go. One of the few duplicates that we've had so far. But Ice Ice Outpost, always a good time. And let's see who is going to heat up the Frozen Tundra. We're looking at Disney KP right now. You see our entire roster here. And we are off and running in our final qualifier of the night. Disney KP, part of the house here in sixth place. And I actually like this loadout. This is the Dry Bowser Scooty loadout. It's a loadout that is sometimes played online as well. It's a little bit of handling. You can bully other players with it because it is a heavyweight character. We're also here with Sports Joey here in 11th on the DK Wiggler combo, which we saw from Nikki Guns earlier. So Sports Joey trying to move his way up through the pack there with some power items. Meanwhile, Zerple in third place right now. Green Shell and a Mushroom. Battling it out here. There's a Luigi with rotating greens right behind her. But she moves up to second with that move. Getting hit out there in uh, that Yushi bike. That's the same loadout as well that Jadex had previously. Lost here. Going to be rocking Luigi tonight, at least for this race here with Scooty. Cheese, though, in first. Waluigi Scooty, though. And Cheese has had some incredible runs, especially since SNS 100 here, uh, there in first with a huge lead. Like, look at the map. Like, look yeah. how big his lead is. That is just absolutely monstrous right there. It's Disney KP. And then we have Damo here in 10th right now. And you can see Lucas Party giving him some advice, trying to cheer him on. But worth noting, there are at least two bots. He's at the very least beating two people right now. He's in 10. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, 10 players in this one. So there are two computer players to make sure the scores are even. And you got to be careful about those bots. They, they have a mind of their own. And... I think Nintendo made an update a little while back to make the bots like decent contenders mm -hmm. or, you know. A little bit more challenging. Exactly. Unfortunately there for Zerpo falling off the map though, Zov goes in this qualifier here in third place. Here on the final turn, looks like one of the players in first has a sound horn. There's a few reds coming from second place though. Cheese is defenseless and the blue shell's coming in. Blue Shell coming in, Cheese, nothing he can do about it. He's gonna get taken over by at least two people. Lost, gonna come in second, and Zavgo taking first place. Yeah, huge job there by Zavgo and Lost, both giving enough space to letting Cheese take that hit, and they literally went right over him like it was something out of Fast, Fur Fast and Furious. Yep. Like, like the, took the leap. Yeah, they took the leap off the jump, and the car goes over the other one. I think that was in like Fast 2 or something. I'm sure yeah. that was in every Fast and Furious movie. Yeah, that, that's true. Point. But really well done by them, though, being able to, to go ahead and capitalize off of that. And she's though still, you know, getting a respectable third place despite getting uh, taken out by that blue shell. Yeah, obviously you wish you could get into first, but in qualifiers, a top three spot, you were gonna be very, very happy with that. Yeah, you definitely should. It's all about consistency. And again, it, to be able to get into the semifinals right now, getting a, a mid 30, you know, hitting a ton of third place finishes, getting those 10 points, that'll get you there. That will get you there, and we will see if he can keep it up, though. Third place finishes across the board. Like you said, that's all he really is going to need. We'll see if he can handle them as we're getting ready for the roulette. Let's see where we are headed next. And it is going to be the wheels are spinning round and round. Where are they going to stop? All right, we are going to Mario Circuit. I'm excited for this one because we haven't seen this track yet tonight. Yeah. You can sandbag it, you can run it. There's shortcuts. It's a little bit of everything. Little bit of everything indeed as right now all our racers are loading in. And here we go. One of, I'd say, it's not the iconic course because of course this is just the first course of this particular game. It hasn't been in previous games. But it is the figure eight track that we all know as the first track that you're going to come across in this game. And we are off and running for race two of our final qualifier. She's here trying to take out Disney KP there with that red. She's going to stay a little bit to Cheese's outside here as we move down to Mr. Scooty here in eighth. With a single shroom, going to go ahead, get that double item box, get some new items for offense and protection. But we're going to be going to Zavgo here in first, defenseless. Zavgo defenseless. He also finished with the top spot in our first race. Lost behind him, then Cheese, Mr. Scooty, Zerpel, and Disney KP. Finishing out that top six from race number one. 
And meanwhile, Sports Joey here in sixth right now. He finished in seventh in the last race, but he's right in the heart of this MIG pack. Doesn't get screened out of an item right there and is gonna grab a red shell. So now we're gonna be heading back to Disney KP here in second place. Oh, but gets hit from a green on the side, going all the way back to sixth. Trying to go ahead and get another double item box, but she settles for a single box here. As we're now back to Mr. Scooty here with fire in fourth, trying to take down Sports Joey. Hate to see it happen, the fire coming out. Hit Sports Joey and Scooty all the way up in third here. Zerpel in second, has a fire flower of her own, waiting on when to use that, gets the purple boost and can just time this up, launching some fire forward as Cheese all alone in first place with a nice lead right now. It appears, no, that's another Waluigi right there next to him on the other side of the track. Yeah, meanwhile, as that was happening, Zerpel took out Zavgo, and it's gonna be, oh, no, there's another Waluigi in the picture, but that's a lapped player. Oh man, huge shot coming from the back. This is actually gonna dodge one of the Donkey Kongs. Zerpel though in front, but gets passed there by Lost with Triple Greens. Lost trying to find that first place right here. And he is doing it at the moment. Got one turn left to go. Coming around the corner. Can Lost make it? Fires the triple greens back. Hit some X back spams and boom, first place. Yeah, good win there from Lost representing the Neko Knights. Their tag online is Ubu. Ubu. And their second team's tag is Owo. So fun Owo. fact. Yeah. Ubu right. and Owo. Good thing it would be Ara Ara. <laughs> what? Ara Ara. I don't know. I see I that meme know. on TikTok sometimes. Yeah, I'm, I'm old. I don't get that stuff anymore. I don't know. I don't. I don't get the references. I'm too old for this, yeah. as as Nor would say. Man, he really ages himself when when he's here sometimes. Oh, big time. Yeah, hundred percent. Like. Well, I mean, the fact that he's able to come out here at the age of 65 is just incredible. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, he's he's still killing it. Hopefully, yeah. uh, you know. I hope I have that much energy when I'm his age. Yeah, on the AARP card, he's he's living life right now. But we do miss Nor. Hopefully, he'll uh, he'll come back. Hopefully he will. I don't think he's having a fun time right now. He was texting me earlier. I think he wishes he was here instead. Oh, really? Yeah, he's in the Twitch chat. So he's yeah, he's gotta in the Twitch be. chat. He's missing us. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And so we're going to be heading now to Bowser's Castle. So that's going to be a fun track as uh, there's a few shortcuts. There's crazy glider sections. There's a few different things you can do to increase your speed, like trick sections when oh, you're the, actually meeting Bowser himself as you get deeper into the castle. So this course is so much fun. It is, and this is the Chimposter, by the way, who has to beat, uh, I think it was what, Brett the Sheriff? Or yeah, Brett Sheriff Brett. the Sheriff score of 12? 12, not really that terribly difficult to beat if you really put your mind to it here as Lost has 27, Zavgo's got 21 points through two races, Zerpel with 20, Cheese with 19, Sports Joey with 16, Mr. Scooty with 13, and that's gonna round out your top six and Chimposter already has that 12 points that he needed to assert supremacy over that friend group rivalry. Yeah, so just by crossing the finish line already clinches that win within the game, like the race within the race, I guess is what you could call it. As Zerpo right now, doing a pretty incredible job, hanging up there at the front there with Savgo. Savgo though, only has a, a coin, but gets hit there, and doesn't get the hit there with that sound horn onto Zerpo. So right now, Zavgo trying to get that quicker line, get it back around Zerpo here, and try to recontest the lead, but the lightning comes out. Sports Joey here in eighth place, finished in third in that last race. Happy with that, but still wants to improve those standings. We'll see if he can climb up the pack. He's got about a lap and a half to do it. But he gets screened out of the double item box there as Mr. Scooty back in eighth place right now with that mushroom trying to move up. This is gonna be Cheese here in fourth. Battling there with Lost in that fourth, fifth position. Zavgo's just up ahead. Gonna get this box here. It is gonna be a banana. And it seems to be a very similar item with some of the players around him. Disney KP moving up there into third. And that might be Sports Joey who has a boomerang and is ready to wield his power across a lot of the other players. And it looks like that stray green takes out one of them. Takes out one of them as Joey throws the boomerang there. It's gonna break, but he's got triple banana protection at the moment. And he's all the way up to second place. Zavko still holding on to first though. Gets the double item box here. Gonna have a coin that he pops immediately and then a green shell. Yeah, we haven't seen Zavko for months, but really until SNS 100, and now it's pretty clear that he hasn't lost uh, any of the skill that he had earlier 
pre-pandemic. Lost here in third with the green shell sports. Joey in second with, oh, oh no! no! With oh. double reds. Joey could have actually taken the win there had that not happened, but the entire top three or four got target shocked. So that was a very well calculated lightning bolt. And look at Disney KP oh, coming in into drag race. It's Joey Zongo. in the lead. Zoe Joey wins. Joey takes first place. Well deserved pop off. I thought Disney KP was going to come in and steal it. And then the draft happens. The draft plus the the, the purple uh, the purple dr uh, purple drift. Yeah, the the UMT, the ultimate yes. mini turbo. That was huge for Joe. He gets him the speed boost he needs to just clear the way and take first place there in that race. For sure. Got Lucas party up here doing jumping jacks. How's your grandfather doing? Huh? How's your How's grandfather your doing? Grandpa doing. He's, he's getting 10 points. Okay. There you go. He's beating he's beating the computers, and that's that's yeah. what counts. That is what counts indeed, as right now we are getting ready for the fourth race. Yeah, I mean that was that was crazy. I mean Let's look, take at, a the look chat. at the chat. And uh, good stuff playing patient there at the end, coming from Vani, aka the best mentor from SNS. Uh, <laughs> Sneak saying, "I told you, Joey is better than Lost." And uh, Bob, I'm saying, "Best night ever." But I yeah, Disney KP, I thought she was gonna steal that one. That very because, close, but Joey takes it in the end. Yeah, because there's just a little bit more top speed there with the Dry Bowser than with the Donkey Kong. But nonetheless, though, an incredible run from all of them. And whoever used that shock was honestly the real winner in my book because they got everybody right where they wanted them and they forced them all defenseless to just race it out like a drag race i think damo might have planned that could have been him could have been the could computer players him. you never know but we are off and headed to a nice brisk fall afternoon in the world of animal crossing animal crossing where the seasons change just like how the standings have been changing in the top right hand corner of your screen lost in the lead here with 35, two points back is Zavgo, four points back is Joey, six points back is Cheese, nine points back is Zerpel, Disney KP back by 14 points. So assuming they all get bottom five, she could still come out on top in this qual. Still could indeed. Mr. Scooty with 18, the Chimpasta with 16, Damo with seven, and Heroic with hey, four. He's doing a little bit better than, than Lucas, uh, Lucas told us. So yeah, Damo that's, having that's a good, good race. Meanwhile, Mr. Scooty here in fourth place right now. Repping the Storm Rush Gaming t-shirt, you can see right there, as he's in sixth, using that Waluigi, and what other cart would he be using? Mr. Scooty. Yeah, that was the Scooty staying on brand. Also giving some good spacing there to that inward player up ahead of him, trying not to get dragged there by Greens, but Disney KP having a really strong run, unfortunately getting fired out. Lost is in first, because the battle for second is just too crazy. And this is just a little bit of a general pet peeve. I think a lot of people fall into this, but if you're racing too hard for second, you're just giving first the win. So just all work together to at least bring first back in before you kill each other. But hey, you know what? It's their prerogative. They're the ones playing the game. That's the thing. You're out there racing for yourself. Oh, this is huge for Joey. Oh, massive for Joey right here. He manages to get the mushroom. That's going to be a big speed boost. He's already back up and running. He's in fifth right now, fourth climbing those ranks, but does he get screened out of the items there? He looked like he might have. Disney KP's in third with a green shell. Yeah, I think Disney KP, I don't even think she realized what she did, but she... No, Joey might have had the star. I can't quite tell. That might be Mr. Scooty. There's two Donkey Kongs. Yeah, there's Lost a few Donkey Kongs. The crowd is going crazy up here. Lost gets hit with the red right around the end. Still grabs first. Cheese grabs second. And wow, what a final turn that was. The Chimposter gets fourth place. Huge there for the Chimposter. Big win there in the qual overall there for Lost. We're going to see the official scores pretty soon, but that was a huge end to it. And those shocks really proving to be the story of this qualifier. Those shocks, I mean, a well-timed shock changes the complexion of an entire race, and we saw it in two races right there. Yeah, and it's cool to see that in the qualifiers because you normally don't see that until later on in semifinals or like the finals. But instead, here we saw it in a qual. Let's take a look back at all of the awesome action that we saw here. Because Cheese, oh, finding out it is indeed about family as Lost comes in second there. And in first was Zavko in race number one over the head of Cheese. Yeah, Disney KP getting hit out there on Mario's circuit. She heads back into sixth place. This is Cheese in first again getting blue shelled there. And now Lost here taking the win on Mario's circuit, able to go ahead and take victory there. And this has been huge. The target shock coming in, taking down essentially the top four or five maybe. Look at the map. 
You can kind of see it. And this was Joey getting out there with that mini turbo and actually taking down Zavgo and Disney KP there at the line. Absolutely huge. And then we saw here Disney KP using that horn on lap two, but in lap three, Zavgo would manage to just inch across the finish line. And then Cheese took second there. Also in the chat, shout out to Kongman. He said, hey, casters. Who, who's that? Kongman. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, so welcome. To, nice to see you too, Kong man. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to what we have uh, going on. I really am too. Let's take a look in what are the final scores of our last qualifier here. Lost with the 50 burger. Right behind him though, tied for second. Sports Joey and Cheese with 41 apiece. Zavgo gonna have 40, followed by Zerpo with 30. Disney KP with 29, the Chimposter with 25, Mr. Scooty with 24, Damo with eight, and Heroic with six. Okay, I just got my feedback, and I'll tell you one thing though, this is, this is scary. We're gonna be going into second chance, but if you look at these scores really quickly, first through eighth are all in that, like, that sweet spot yeah. for getting into playing into an, another round, so. I think that the 25 points is just gonna be a little too short, 29, yeah. That's where you're starting to get into the conversation because remember, we already had a cluster of 25 pointers before we got these maybe six players who are going to be here, and it looks like we do not have any ties. So we are going to be headed into second chance battle. Let's look at who is going to be in it. We have Ariel Apostle, Big B, Brando, Saps, Jadex, Riley, Super Mario Action, Lorenzo, Zerpel, Banda, Disney KP, and Peach Blossom. Man, I, I don't, the fact that Disney KP is in the second chance, it, it, after the way she was playing, I think is a little bit of a travesty at this point, but uh, we do want to make, make it known that you go over to the Hype Tunnel if you are in that second chance race, as you will be playing momentarily, but just that is how, right. how tight has the racing been tonight? I still can't like, process this at the moment. Six qualifiers and almost each and every one of them has just been so, so narrow in the margins. We're in for a great semifinals. We're in for a great second chance. This night, just getting started. So guys, we've got second chance right after this. If you heard your name called, head on up to the hype tunnel if you're here. And if you're watching along with us, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with second chance battle after this quick break brought to you by Finley Volkswagen down at the Valley Auto Mall.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on back to the HyperX Esports Arena in the Luxor Hotel and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada, where we are getting ready for the second chance battle here at Saturday Night Speedway 105. Night, it has been an intense, intense qualifying round to get to this point. And now we have to find out which two competitors are going to be joining our semifinalists in, of course, the semifinals. Yeah, the second chance is probably the rowdiest two minutes that you'll find in Mario Kart. We have 12 players here. They're basically the ones ranked 23rd through like 35th, 36th in the qualifying, from the qualifying stage. But only two will move on to semifinals. So if you're taking a look here at this field, we have some players that normally make semifinals in it. We also do have a defending second chance winner in Nikki Guns in this. But uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be pretty interesting. And you know what I heard uh, as we took that break is that Woody Watts and Terry Violet, they're both in the building. They both called allegedly a truce. I don't know how that's gonna work, but. I, I don't know how that's gonna work at all. I, I mean, that Terry Violet's a loose cannon. I'm not sure. He doesn't yeah. like sharing the spotlight. And I know Woody, Woody's been pretty vocal about calling Terry a fraud in the last several weeks, so. We will uh, have I'm not to sure see. how we're gonna let them coexist together, to be honest. Well, that, is, that is not gonna be our problem. We're just gonna have to sit back and let it play out. Yeah. But I'm hearing that we also need Lorenzo to make his way to the stage if he's still in the building, because Lorenzo, you are in the second chance battle. Come on down, my man. If you're here, head on up to the stage so we can get you to your spot. Yeah, definitely would be beneficial get Lorenzo up on the stage, because your night is not over yet, and we don't want it to end early just because. Worst like. case, we have to bring 805 back up to race for you, and you don't want that. <laughs> yeah. That, I don't know how, that, how well that would go over with some of the other players, but we'll see. But yeah, seven laps of chaos. It's gonna be about two minutes, 200 CC Baby Park. It's gonna be incredibly wild. I used to be a master of this, not anymore, but I mean, you just gotta kinda have to time things right. You have to be able to avoid all the, the items and just get out in front and pray, I think. Get out in front and pray. That's pretty much the strategy here. Once again, last chance for Lorenzo to join us on stage. We will be racing without you. Last chance for Lorenzo. He might have left the building already, quite oh, frankly. Oh, that's unfortunate, but. Indeed. That makes it slightly easier for yeah. you, getting like from an 8.25% chance to like a 9 point something percent I chance. Can't, I can't do that math. Yeah, that, so is, that is beyond me here. There, your odds just went up an extra percent point or two. So congratulations if you're one of the 11 that are on stage. Indeed, we'll have to see. I think Rudy is trying to race for him. I can't quite tell. No, he's not. <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be exciting. I don't know what to expect because there could be an upset. You could have a player that's normally kind of poised and balanced and has played in the semifinals that, that can make their way through. But then there are players that have been in this and have won before, so you definitely can't discount somebody like Nikki Guns. You really can't. I mean, this is a horse race. It is random. It, 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 this isn't so much about skill. Yes, skill plays into it, but luck plays such a huge part here on Baby Park. And that is, of course, how we do this. For those of you who are here in attendance, ladies and gentlemen, the way we do second chance battle here, we need some help from the audience to explain it, because it, of course, 200 cc's. Seven laps of pure chaos on none other than... There you go. And uh, oh, we no. do have a random. We do want Baby Park. That oh, is the name boy. of the game. You were, you were correct, though. You were going random in the, in the quals. Yeah. And then kind of back off of your point. I'm not a horse cast or anything, but I think your position, your starting position, which is all kind of RNG, plays a bigger factor into this as well. We got lucky there. Of course, I remember a couple weeks ago here, my last time casting here, we hit the random, and it got us Baby Park anyway. One of the craziest things. Oh, ever. I remember that. That was wild. That was insane. All right, but we are getting underway, which means we are going to have to toss this off and see how it goes. I don't know. But none other than Terry Violet here to start us off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on in to the running. And we're off here out of the gates and moving. And it's Hollywood himself, Riley, coming around the first turn. Riley trying to make it to the lead up here in sixth place, coming around on the first lap. And I'm sorry, but Terry Violet is a little bit of a fraud, but it's Jadex out there in the lead, playing in the toe player. Now about a length ahead as it's going to be another Shy Guy player Ladies and up gentlemen, and over. sorry about that disconnect. They, they don't know what happened, but it's Terry Violet back on the cast here as Disney KP has managed to take and over I the lead. And I do have to apologize. I think Terry Violet had like a little bit of a bowel movement. He's going to be off this next lap, and Jadex now here in second with a red shell. Going to try and take out this Shy Guy player there. Ladies and, and gentlemen, we apologize for the interruption from a second-rate caster here as Jadex is up in the 
the lead. J Dex in first place right now. Coming across the line as Brando is in fifth at the moment. Trying to make his way up. And Jadex is still back in first. Going to be trying to take down and overlap a few players here. And he's oh, down to the final coming stretch. coming around to the final lap. Jadex coming, the final lap. Jadex coming around on the final stretch. Coming to the final turn. Is he going to be able to make it? It's Big B in third. Meanwhile, in first, it's Jadex with first the victory. Jadex. Who is in second place? That's going to be Hollywood. The semifinal players taking it down. Wow. Jadex and Hollywood right next to each other, too. You can't draw it up any better than that, can you, Knight? No, you can't. I mean, those were the two most experienced players, I think, coming into this. They took it down. Uh, really thought if there was a spoiler, it would have probably been Nikki Guns there. But, yeah, there was just no contest. I mean, those two really had a command of the lead. I don't know what happened with those casters. That was, that was nuts. That could have gone a lot worse, I thought. I, I think so, too. I mean, yeah. not very professional from them, but, hey, that's, they're yeah, loose cannons. I, I really feel bad if, like, Terry actually does have problems with this battle side. So think Woody should apologize. Uh, probably. That was, that was probably pretty hurtful. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, they, you never know. They are, they're long gone. Yeah. They're, they're actually betting horses at the sports book down there. That is right. Yeah. They're over at the race book. They are gone. Yeah. We are back here for you now to take you through all the way to the end. And we now know that Jadex and Hollywood Riley are going to be in those semifinal matchups with the rest of our competitors. And we're just waiting now to find out how semifinal one is going to line up so we can get those racers up to the hype tunnel. Yeah, that's true, and I wish uh, I wish I could could see a little bit early, but we're gonna have to find out just like everybody else, who is in semifinal number one. We do know that Jadex, by finishing first, punched in his ticket to semifinal number one, and we're gonna be seeing uh, that's gonna be Riley going into second uh, semifinal number two, finishing second in second chance. Say that five times fast, but well, we know all of them. Let's find out who the rest of the racers are. It's Sneaks riding my Pidgey, Mario Party King, Glitch, Cynic, Low High. Sports Joey, funny name, Zavgo, two inches Mo, JJ107, and Jadex. Head on up to the hype tunnel. You guys are in semifinal number one. If this was the World Cup, I would call this the group of death. Really? Because, yeah, Sneaks, Pidgey, taking a look here at this screen. Mario Party King, Glitch, Cynic. Funny And name. then you have LOL High, who I don't think realizes what he's gotten into right now, but he's playing phenomenally. Joey, funny name, Zavgo, Mo, JJ, and Jadex. That's, that's a this final. Is tough. That's that a is final. a final right there. I, I completely agree with your assessment. This is going to be a stacked semifinal. The racers are on their way to the hype tunnel to get ready to go on down and race. Ladies and gentlemen, semifinal number one going to be coming right at you right after this quick break. Brought to you by Finley Volkswagen down at the Valley Auto Mall.
Hey everyone, welcome back to Saturday Night Speedway, brought to you by Finley Volkswagen at the Finley Valley Auto Mall in yeah, Henderson, but... right by my house. But I'm super excited because we're gonna be getting into semifinal number one, and this is, I'm just still surprised this is a semifinal, to be honest with you, Tom. That is right, you were saying it before the break, this really could be a final. These teams, these racers are just completely stacked right here. This is a cast, an all-star who's who cast of players. Look at Jadex right here. He is locked in. He is ready to go, trying to complete the long run, making it out of second chance battle here in this semi. But, oh, man, is it going to be a tough one here. Sneaks, riding my Pidgey, Mario Party King, Glitch, Cynic, Lil High, Sports Joey, Funny name, Zavgo, Two Inches Mo, JJ107, and Jadex. I mean, wow. somebody is going to get upset here by somebody. I don't know who it is, obviously. We're going to have six races now instead of four to determine the fate of what players are going to move on into the finals. But you also have to factor in LOL High, Cynic, their first times here. How are they going to do? you got to factor in JJ. Man, Cynic okay. made his oh, way. Oh, we got it, we got it, we okay. Got it. Cynic made his way all the way from Alabama to be just thrown into this. That is brutal. I, I honestly don't have the history with like some of the other players from the competitive side, but I can assure you they didn't have uh, a semifinal like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is gonna be completely ridiculous for him, but let's see how he does with everybody else here is this, this is how you test yourself. This is playing the best of the best of the arena. It really is, and I'm really curious too, with Jadex, I, I think he might be the only inwards player here, but how he's gonna do relative to the, the track picks that are gonna be selected. If there's a track like Dragon or Neo Bowser City or any track that's really not meant for an inward player, it'd be kind of interesting to see what happens as the Fen sign. By the way, Fen alive and well from Kentucky, yeah. being represented here by Cynic in, uh, in the arena. Shout out, by the way, to our boy Stefan, looking very fly with a new haircut, I could tell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, congratulations to him, too, being signed to uh, 86. That is right. It has been a very big month for Stefan. Yeah. A lot of life changes. Yeah, and then the whole, the whole engagement story, yeah. that's cool. I I'd rank it like haircut one, 86 and engagement two, but, you know, a lot of life changes. He, you did get a haircut. He did I mean, get a haircut. His hair is just always so good, I never actually, like, Think about it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, and then Osiris just, you know, dabbing him up in the back. Okay, <laughs> we're, we gotta go back over here. And we're but. back to racing here. Semifinal one coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody is just picking their carts, getting set up, getting their controllers synced and everything. Now, when you race, what's your preferred controller? Because, I mean, we've seen just about everything from, you know, your Joy-Cons, your Pro controllers, your GameCube controllers, to someone even playing with a, uh, Fighting game, what? Jo the uh, the uh, oh, Zero had it. The, yeah. Um, the Smashbox. Yes. So I'm a big pro controller fan. There are a few third party controllers that can get you by a little bit. I know RarXD, he just recently went through and he modded his own controller with some different light up buttons. Um, there's a few other players I know that have these, these light up controllers, but for the most part, they're Nintendo licensed controllers. A pro controller is going to be the move, unless you want to play with you know, like tilt controls on, then you can go to Joy-Cons, or if you're zero, you want to do the smash box, it's really up to you, but I would personally recommend the Pro Controller. I'd probably go the same way. I like the GameCube controller a lot, especially obviously for Smash, that is what many players are going to be playing with, but I'd agree with you. Mario Kart, the Pro Controller does feel just a little bit better here. And my favorite thing about that controller though, I mean, I've had one for about two and a half, three years, and I think I've charged it twice. That battery lasts forever. It, it does, and I had to play uh, with the Nintendo controller at a tournament. It threw me off, I wasn't used to it, and you know, it's what they gave you. Yeah. But I'm just looking here at Osiris, it looks like he's working Osiris at is Mr. Fenway Chip, Park as like a hawker selling these, uh, well the chips are free, you can actually get them yeah. from behind us. Osiris, and hit us with a dab! There it is. With the, uh, the Zaps chips by us, they're really cool, I think there's the Look at him, he is Chip flavor. Man here. Oh, okay. We'll see what's Nick, going on here. I, I think, think something's Nick is coming back, but getting ready to go here. Oh man, I mean, my stomach is like on edge right now because you're there's, excited. This dude, is a fun qualifier. Sneaks, semi, Pidgey. What's going on? MPK. Oh, I got you. 
I'm not Osiris, but here you go. Oh, thanks. Said, so these are Nikki the, Gunn saying he's not Osiris, the, but... Not Osiris. The, the right. Zaps potato chips. We're rocking with some I don't want to ruin the chips. orange Yoshi. I forget the name, but... Uh, New Orleans nor, nor don't yell at me. Voodoo. But, yeah, they're cool chips. All right. New Orleans kettle-style voodoo. You can get them if back If you hear there. some crunching going on during the races, pay no mind. Pay no mind. Yeah. And they're good. It's a good chip brand. Yeah. I was talking to Papa Guns about it in the back. I worked uh, for a marketing agency and... and you know, it's made by us. So if you like us chips, then you're gonna like these. It's just a All right. voodoo flavor. Let's take a look in with the chat right now, see what's going on. <laughs> Squidgy says, someone tell Bear I said hi. Someone tell Bear Squidgy says hi. Squidgy says hi. Oh, Knives is here. What's, what's up, Knives? Haven't seen you in like 18 months. What's up? Oh, what the chips? Pass them over here. Pass them over here? I can't throw. What? Who are we looking for? Oh, I, I have no arm. No. That's a, that's a long way away. Oh, yeah, oh, no, oh. Not a chance. No, oh, oh, Cyrus, Cyrus no. Assist. No, what he should have done is he should have been off camera and had it thrown to them thrown and it made it. We yeah. could have taken the credit for it. Good call. But that's okay. But Osiris, again, coming in the clutch, though, as usual. And Man, I just hope that it. these chips aren't like most of the food that I feel like casters have consumed on air during Mario Kart. They got because, a little bit of a kick to them. I okay. mean, they're, they're pretty Be, cool. Because historically speaking, food eaten on air has not been good for the casters. I'm no. glad this isn't that case. These aren't so, choke chips. Let's see. This has paprika spice. You're a big paprika fan. All right, are we, are we just breaking down the ingredients list Yeah, right now? also, if you do have a peanut allergy, don't eat these. But if you like chips, then I highly recommend it. All right, there you go. Bear says we say hello, Squidgy. Oh, look who's in the chat. Thomas noticed me. That's Sneaks. What up, Sneaks? I do notice you, but also DC Danny has made his way into the chat, which is very bad news for us. DC Danny, we got DJ Mouse, Merlivniv, who I don't think is in action tonight. Had a good uh, at least semifinals run last week. But this semifinal it is gonna be is insane. I mean, you got JJ, you got Jadex, Mo, And let me do some quick counting here. Oh, we, we have just such a ridiculous lineup of players, and they're going to be going. Yeah, nine to of the 12 are MKC players. And then you got JJ, who's had a phenomenal run. Mo, who is known for crazy runs as well. And then LOL High, who just had a remarkable opening outing. Couldn't have gone any better, in my opinion. Then he, then he comes over and asks us, hey, is this score good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, a totally oh, yeah, valid question for your first time, so but, I'm not... But look where we're going here. We're rolling to Wildwoods. Oh, man, I wonder if Nor's in the chat here. Unfortunate for this player. I don't know who we're on board with, but they're going to be starting from the back. Glitch going to the back there. Like, there could be Zofgo there in that, that boo. But Cynic is the one that burned out here. So he's in 11th place at the moment. This is a predominantly front-running track. We're going to have to see him move his way up. And I think it does come down to the noise and the lights. And it's just different factors that you're not normally used to, but six races is a lot of time for Cynic to put up some, some good finishes. I also wonder, coming all the way from Alabama, did he bring his own controller or not? Because personally, for me, that's one of those things that just makes all the difference. Having my own controller versus using a borrowed one. It's like when you go over to a friend's house and you have to use their controllers and, you know, you're used to your controllers, but then there's, like, the X button just feels a little weird, stuff like that. You don't quite have those... Those fi the, the finicky parts to it down, it doesn't feel quite right. Yeah, I know that for Cynic, he actually has to use Mega's controller because he had an issue with his normal one before. That could be a big factor. That probably could be why, you know... Well, he hasn't stopped him. He's just made his way all the way to first right now. All the way up right to now. first from 11th in a matter of a lap. That's insane. Jadex as well here in second. Here we go. Jadex rocking right now. Look at him. He is locked in perfectly going over that shortcut. Popping the mushroom on the jump. Has triple greens to work with. Zavko right behind him in third. And Zavko's got a boomerang here. Thinking about firing that back, but going to hold on to it for the moment. Really great defensive item. Blocks out most of what's going to come at you. Yeah, the one thing you do have to worry about with the boomerang is, you know, this is more of a thing with, with team style racing, but just making sure that you're, you're not blocking. Like, if you throw a red, then you have a boomerang, that you don't actually take out your red from hitting the other player. But final lap here, Sneaks is trying to move up here on Zavgo. Zavgo gets taken out, and it's all Cynic up there at the front. Sneaks here with two mushrooms trying to make something happen, and Glitch making a very last-minute charge here, I think. But, but Cynic, Cynic taking the win. Cynic takes the victory, Sneaks takes second, Zavgo in fourth, trying to see who made it into third right there. 
Oh, I think that was Jadex. Jadex took third. There we go. Some quality racing going on. Yeah, that's a that's a great opening result for some of them. Curious to see how you know some of the other stayed in the middle and the back of the pack. But a great opening start there for Cynic and Sneaks and even Jadex as well. You know, just has to make sure that he can get a good run of those anti inward tracks and just you know continue to drive exceptionally. And we're gonna see here. I mean, points are at a premium. The top six are gonna go on, and like you said, nine players on the MKC circuit. Yeah, in this in the semifinal, it's nine. Yeah. That means that there's at least three MKC quality players at minimum who are not going to make it out of this semifinal. You want to take every point, every result you can get. This is not the kind of time to slack off. And a big, big first result for all four of those guys up at the top. Oh man, we're gonna be heading to Mute City here for race number two. First time we're seeing this tonight. And this is gonna be Glitch who we're gonna be on board with to start here. They're in the Boo Scooty loadout. His signature King Boo, Mr. Scooty, he did not have a good race one, but there's five races left to go. Plenty of time to make up some of that ground. Mario Party King here in third place as he comes up to the first item box. Gonna grab triple green. Yeah, so Mario Party King right now with those triple greens. LOL high here in that third, fourth position. Another thing too, uh, just when you're getting going on this track, getting the 10 coins as quickly as possible is really gonna help you in the long run for unfortunately for LOL High getting carded there as now it's gonna be Zavgo. Oh, unfortunately he must have mistimed something there in that shortcut and it was Lakitu that picked him up. You can hear Joey, something must have happened to him too from a mile away. But right now though, it's first place just kind of zoning out here at the minute here on lap number two. Yeah, Zavgo here in sixth, funny name up to first. He finished in fifth in race number one, but right here leading from the front this time around. Mario Party King, of course, finished in sixth in that last one. We saw Sneaks take second. He's in fourth here, and he got triple mushrooms. This might be good for Funny Name. He takes the red on purpose to avoid the hit of the blue. Really poor job there, if I might be the Simon Cowher at the moment for second place. That actually just probably cost himself a shot there initially at overtaking first, but Pidgey and uh, a few other players here battling in second. Just need to make sure that they can reel in Funny Name. I don't know if that's gonna be doable here as Pidgey gets hit and drops all the way down to seventh. Funny Name's got a decent lead, but not an insurmountable one. Is two inches Mo, one of the racers right behind him here. And after we saw that first race, where two inches Mo actually finished in dead last, here he sits up in third. This could be a massive, massive play for him, but there's still a lot of race left to go right here on this final lap. Cynic is up in second. He's got a red shell and a sound horn. Oh, he messed up the oh, shortcut. No. He messed up the no item shortcut. The blue shell's coming in, but it's not gonna make it in time. Funny name going to take first place. It looks like Glitch grabs second, and then a whole maelstrom of players. No, two inches, Mo takes second. Wow, that's huge for Mo. He's playing spoiler in this qualifier. And I'm looking right now, Sneak's finishing 11th. Wow. I mean, that was just insane. He and we're finished seeing... second and went to 11th. Seeing... Two Inches Mo finished in second this race and then fi and it finished in last in the first race. It, yeah. it has been up and down through two races. It's just a whole lot of upsets there and we're gonna be heading into race number three pretty soon here. And meanwhile, let's give a shout out to semifinal number two. They're gonna be up in just a few races here as Sir Nine lost. Jinx, Tigre, Batter Cookie, Bear, Cheese, Cherry, Immortal Man, Air Boom, Jabizi, and Riley are gonna be in semifinal number two. And you know, we might have talked about semifinal one being stacked, semi two, no cakewalk. I mean, yeah, I think semifinal number two, it's a different breed than semifinal number one, but that is still like a very pure semifinal that you're gonna have to work your way out of. So <laughs> it's not easy for anybody tonight, even looking at the second chance and seeing the players that some others had to go up against. It's just been wild, and we're here with Joey. Unfortunately, just kind of got screened out of a lot of items there, but is going to try to mathematically and systematically, hopefully, get himself up to the front here in Excite Bike Arena. Meanwhile, here after two races, Funny Name has overtaken the top spot on the standing. Cynic right behind him with 21 points. Zabgo with 19. Mario Party King with 15. Sneaks and Jadex with 14 to give you your current top six. Joey here in fourth place. Dragging this green shell. Is it gonna go for the hit on the player ahead of him? Misses and gets screened out of a box there. That was a little bit unfortunate. It's gotta watch out for this boomerang. He is bullying the player with the boomerang beside him and actually gets redded from behind. 
You can see the scores there on uh, your screen. Glitch actually a little bit farther back. Pidgey back in, in ninth. So we do need to see Pidgey and, and Glitch move up. Joey as well, LOL high there. We got Mo and JJ there in seventh and eighth. So that was a huge recovery there for Mo, who is seventh overall in the standings. Meanwhile, Pidgey here in first place right now with three bananas, two in a rotation and one behind that. JJ 107 right now in fourth place. You hear the wild roar of the crowd. He's gonna drop down to eighth right there though. Really unlucky missing that jump. But he has plenty of time to recover and he gets a scar as well as Funny Name is in fourth place coming into this final lap. I'm literally trying to cheat here and take a look at what everybody has. It's surprising. Not a whole lot of craziness happening here at the moment. So this is gonna come down to pure driving here as we are on the back stretch. Wow, Ooh. Sneak's narrowly avoiding that bomb. And that's probably gonna collect a series of players from behind. And unfortunately for Sneaks, there is a little bit of a ramp strat to excite by. Great snipe, by the way, but trying to low trick and get the, the most momentum, the least amount of air time as possible. And can Pidgey do this? Pidgey's got the sound horn. Perfect timing for him. And he is gonna finish out in first place just barely. Beating out Funny Name in second. Funny Name second, Sneaks there in third. We're gonna have LOL High there with a respectable fourth place. There you That's go. That's gonna get him out of that bottom six uh, a little bit, or at least you know, be, be an added bonus. So <laughs> we're seeing a lot of movement every which a way. A lot of movement. These we're, races have been nuts. Yeah, and we're halfway through, and I would continue to expect it to be completely just all over the place for the final half of this semifinal. I completely agree with you. I just don't know what to expect here. I think that it's, at the very least, it is going to be a tight, tight scoreboard for that top six. I don't think any one racer is going to be able to pull away. That being said, Funny Name has really been getting some great results so far along. If anyone is going to pull away at the top, I think it is him because you don't need that first every time, but first or second consistently like that is just going to give you that extra space from all the players not gaining as many points. Yeah, and the strategy here for semifinals is completely different than finals, obviously, and qualifiers, where you're mainly just focusing on just getting above into that top six. Two weeks ago, I had a weird, weird race where I got the best finish of third, worst finish of seventh, and I still missed being in the top six. Wow. And I got hit every which way, but you just need a couple good top three finishes and stay consistent in some of your other races, not get a, a really bad one that you can, you know, hopefully discard. But we're going to be heading back to Dolphin Schultz for the second time of the night. E -e -e -e. Is a that a, that was a dolphin impression? Yeah, it's a dolphin. Yeah. I, whenever I think of a dolphin impression, I think of um, down periscope where the guy has to, oh, that might be a whale actually. But that's what I think See? of. If anything, I go with that, uh, that old Key and Peele skit. The which one? Uh, the old Key and Peele skit, the uh, NFL draft names. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Where the one guy's name is just <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. You can do a better one than I can. My yeah, voice can't I can't do, do the clicking. I cut my mouth open, but like something like that. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. It, it's not Oh, shock pitch. coming into play. This is actually going to kill the mid-pack. And it looks like it's going to be Jadex out there uh, in the top two at least. A few Waluigi's. JJ here in fourth place. Gets up to speed uh, in, you know, from being shrunken, I guess, relatively quickly. Joey back here in six gets an item box. Going to be triple mushrooms. And the blue shell coming into play. And that is going to go likely for Jadex. Yep, Jadex going to have a hard time avoiding that one, especially. Wait, it got horned. What? Where'd it go? It's gone. Is David, David Copperfield in this uh, qualifier? Wow. I'm, no, he's over at a different MGM property. Yeah, he's at yeah, the Grand. Okay, yeah. that's weird. So that just magically vanished. Or player in second or third inadvertently just saved the day there for Jadex. LOL High, though, getting killed. Oh, that bomb taking out Sports Joey. Uh, that's going to be a little bit unfortunate there. And here is JJ, who has been in the third fourth position this entire race, just hanging on, has to avoid this drag here coming in from Jadex. JJ hanging on for dear life here, but he's in third, now in fourth. Jadex coming up behind him and passing him there. Still has that green shell locked and loaded. Funny name's got dual reds trying to track down first place. Not even worried rocking with the Mario loadout right now. It's Cynic up in first, and he's going to deal with both of these reds. He only had defense for one. Oh, man. Barely misses the green, but a second one comes up behind him and is going to hit him there. Don't know quite what happened there, but Funny name also gets hit, so he's going to be in second. And the bullet bill coming up behind him. Jadex has managed to take over first place. He has a green shell for protection around the final turn. And Jadex takes first place and throws up the X. Glitch there in second. I mean, Jadex just stayed out of trouble 
And Cynic and Funny Name, clearly we do know that they are one of the more, the more talented players in this group. But if they're infighting together, and you're just going to have other skill players just taking advantage of that and reaping the benefit of those points. No question about it. And there we go. Jadex taking advantage of all of the fighting going on right there. And manages to grab first place. Going to put him in great position here. We have two races left to go. And then we're going to be on to semifinal number two. So let's call up those racers for semi two one more time. We got Sir Nine. We have Lost. We're alternating. We have Jinx. Tigre. Batter Cookie. Bear. Cheese. Cherry. Immortal Man. Airboom. 54. 21st birthday, by the way. Yep. Jabizi. And Hollywood, also known as Riley. All right. That is going to be your semifinal two, guys. It is almost time, so head on up to the hype tunnel when you get the chance here. Two races left to go in semi one. Yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. That's kind of like a you and Nor thing. I was like, oh, man, we're doing it. We're doing it. You know, I didn't want to take away from Nor there. But I was okay. trying to tee it up for you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I caught it. I just was like, oh. We got but, there. <laughs> oh, is Pidgey racing right now? No, he is not. Oh, wait. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I was looking at the, the second stream. So he's going to be having to go back to Donut Plains 3 again. Can he get the NISC? He's been practicing it all day. Oh, doesn't get the right entry. No. All right, almost. Gets saved almost. there by the Bowser, though. Yeah, big time. And we see here we have the standings. Funny name has 41 points. Cynic and Jadex tied with 37. Riding my Pidgey with 33. Sneaks and Zavgo with 31 and 30. And that's your top six at the moment. Yeah, that is huge. And let's see where seventh on back are. Zavgo, that cut off there at 30. Wow, seven point break between sixth and seventh. Mario Party King glitch. JJ tied for seventh on the outside looking in. Mo, nine points behind that bubble cutoff. Joey and LOL High, though, in 11th and 12th. They're not out of it. They just need a really strong finish here to set themselves up for a strong race number six. And Seeing what's going to happen here. Yeah, we got the Twitch chat kind of popping off right now. Pidgey here in third with a mushroom, followed up by some triple bananas. We have that Bowser player. That's likely going to be probably funny name changing his loadout. Wow, funny name. There, there. I don't know if that was him that just activated that sound horn or another player behind as we cut camera shots, but that just annihilated Pidgey. Oh man, but it looks like the Donkey Kong just wrecked somebody and it's not going to matter because now the shock's coming into play. Jadex and either Zobgo or Glitch have dodged and there's another Donkey Kong there that has dodged as well. Cynic out here all alone with no items, just, oh, he's not going to make it. Oh, he's not going to make it, and the worst part, he's going to still get the blue shell. Glitch takes advantage, grabs first place, sneaks, going to take second there. Funny name in third, and just brutal for Cynic. The worst possible scenario where you get past after the blue shell is already locked onto you. So you're going to miss first and then get hit and drop all those extra spots. Yeah, and, and you saw that Glitch kind of had that race numbered. He was oh, definitely yeah. in the back of where that, that shock was going down. Ended up taking that win there, probably with the mushroom or, or dodge at that cut or something. There's that cut in between like the block section, and then there's like that little hard right right before the start finish line you can take advantage of. So well done there by Glitch. And it's all going to come down to this final race here in semifinal number one. Eagerly awaiting what track we're going to see get selected. And it's going to be Neo Bowser yeah. City. Oh. Uh, and I hope Jadex, for his sake, he has a high point total because uh, I know he's skilled on this track, but obviously this is still not uh, an inward heavy track. So this is a tough one. I, I like to race on this. I actually use the identical loadout to Jadex. I hate this track. Yeah, Mario Party King back here starting in eighth place on the outside looking in for sure, trying to get into this top six here. And another player there missing the start, burning out. I think that's going to be Sneaks as we are getting things underway here with Mario Party King there in seventh place. Mario Party King in seventh right now, moving up to fifth though. Zavko in 11th. He's going to bag this. Yeah, I mean, Zavko I think could be pretty comfortable right now. I'm not entirely sure. But if he feels more comfortable coming up from the back then then by all means, I personally would like to run this. Mario Party King is running this. Smart move, I think, on his end. And yeah, just kind of really curious to see how this is going to work out for him being you know, in that 7th to 10th range there. Cynic, meanwhile, in third. And let's take a look at that scoreboard here with one and a half laps to go. Funny name has this lockdown with 51 points. Jadex right behind him with 46. He should be safe. A he top should be okay. six finish, and he should be fine. 
Sneaks with 43, tying him with Cynic, riding my Pidgey with 40, and then Glitch has 38 to finish your top six, but Glitch racing this one in first right now, and then you've got the other half there. Zavko needs a good race here with 33 points. Mario Party King in the same boat with 28. Two inches Mo, JJ, and Sports Showy, and Lowell just might not be their night, but hey, a first place finish can do wonders for you. Maybe get you up to that 40 point total that you're looking for. Sneaks, meanwhile, here in third as we cross over into the final lap. Yeah, that, that ricocheting green probably hit somebody in the back there. Pidgey also got green and had to go wide there on that back corner. And I'm not sure what just happened to Glitch, but again, the battle is really between him and Zavgo right now for that final spot. Joey is having all sorts of things happen to him. I can hear Joey's him through my microphone. Joey's not having a good time. And Glitch right now, there with funny name, oh, actually bombs the back of the field, gets about two or three players behind him. And so now it's going to be a glitch funny name top two. Is he going to try and go for the win? He is. And he gets funny name Glitching. through the boxes. Oh, it's look at this. Boomerang. Red shell and a bomb. Watch this bomb placement right oh, here. Oh, what just happened? Oh, funny it name actually triple, tried to come back and get the win. He it does. Was a triple banana funny name manages to steal it away from glitch there at the end. But Glitch with second place should be moving on. Pidgey, it looked like, took third. And Jadex is groaning a little bit. But he comes in second overall. I love to see it. Yeah, J Jadex had a really good cushion there, so it didn't yeah. really matter where he finished. But great job for him. That was a very tough semifinal. But I think Glitch was trying to maybe set up a troll move there with that bomb. And, you know, we all just kind of got uh, psyched out because Funny Name just came back and took the win and then had that defense with the bananas to pull Glitch back off. We will have to see. Let's take a look back into the highlights from this immensely packed semi-final number one. I cannot wait to see the scores and see who's moving on. I can't wait either. There's Sinek taking that win. Funny name taking race number two at Mute City. This is Sneaks here in that second, third position, having to avoid that red. Good snipe there by Sneaks. Uh, he's a green shell assassin. Pidgey there taking this one down relatively easily there with that sound horn, taking race number three there at Excite Bike. And then this was Cynic here, and the infighting between him and Funny Name, I believe, on Dolphin Shoals, allowing for Jadex to go ahead and grab the win. And by the way, just real quick, we are still missing Cherry. So Cherry, head on over to the Hype Tunnel so that we can get our semifinal two underway. As we saw here, the time trial's paying off for riding my Pidgey. No first places, but it was Cynic who had the rough time there. Glitch taking that first spot. Yeah, huge results here, and this is kind of, uh, you know, Funny Name being that plausible distractor. We thought that Glitch was going to go ahead and back this and maybe go for the bomb snipe and bank on Funny Name coming up, and he does, but Funny Name had that triple banana defense, so really well done there for Funny Name. And, uh, man, Hollywood I mean, just here is just, just oh, killing man, we right got now. Hollywood in the 12 seat. We got the birthday boy behind him. But right now, let's look in the scores from Semi-1 and see who is moving on. Let's make it official. Funny name, 66 points. Jadex with 55. Riding my Pidgey with 50. Tying him with Glitch and Cynic. Thank God that was not our 6th place and 7th place spots because that would have been an epic tiebreaker that we would have had to watch. Sneaks, 48 points. Mario Party King, 36, gonna put him on the outside looking in. Zavgo with 36, Sports Joey, two inches mo, JJ. And LOL High, it was a great qualifier, my man, but that was a rough semi for your first time. We hope you come on back soon. Hey, and I'm, I mean, 23rd, 24th out of yeah. around, you know, 50 to 60 players, nothing to scoff at on your first time. Absolutely not. And I am just so glad that those, fi th those 50 burgers were not tiebreaker because I would not want to see one of those players be knocked out because oh man all six of those guys going on going to be incredible guys we're going to be right back after this quick break we have semi-final two coming up in just a minute brought to you by Finley Volkswagen down at the Valley Auto Mall
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back on into Saturday Night Speedway 105, where we are getting ready for semi-final two here at the HyperX Esports Arena. I'm Tom, he's Knight, and this is going to be another good one. Like you said, we just watched an incredible semi one that could have been a final. This semi, really more of the same. So many great racers here, and we are gonna be seeing who's moving on. Who do you have your eye on out of the semi? Yeah, I mean, you saw Jadex kind of carry that momentum from second chance in, pulling the, uh, the five round duty tonight. So Riley could have a, a, a good chance. I mean, I definitely think if you're looking at this group, it's going to be incredibly difficult to predict this. One, mean, guy, one guy I have my eye on especially, though, he made it here, the birthday boy. It is Air Boom, the birthday princess. He's rocking the tiara over the headband. Absolutely love it. He's got the sash. He's got the WWE belt. This man. That's like a full-size replica, too, by the way. Oh, yeah. This is incredible. Oh, he's destroying his center of gravity, so I don't know if I can pick him, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you, I remember in high school, our, our high school actually let us play Dizzy Bat, like, with water. Oh, my word. And you're, like, stumbling around. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, when you're older, that stuff gets to you. Oh, for destroys sure. Destroys your center of gravity. So uh, if Air Boom has a good first race, then I'll back him. But I hope... How many... Oh, he's still, man, he's still that going. That man still is going. living off pure emotion right now. That's going to help him in race one at man, least. Man, this is so difficult to predict. If I had to pick something from maybe a pure numbers standpoint, I would say uh, there is like a ranking system unofficially that, that uh, Mega created. Mm -hmm. And the person, the player that's actually outpacing everybody right now is Tigre. I so, agree. I mean, he had a great qualifier. Yeah, he had a great qualifier. I think he might be a, a lock for the, the top six. But... There are so many good players here, and I think it's really going to come down to some crazy snipes and finishes and shocks that are going to take this one away. I don't know how the last couple of weeks have gone, but Jinx has been super hot lately. We'll see if she can make her mark, and maybe this could be the night. It is going to be a tough road all the way through, but she's always one to watch out for. Yeah, she's always like a, a, a top 10 to upper like podium contender now. So you really have to keep an eye on her and how well she's going to be kind of pulling things off. And we will have to see, of course, locking down the 12 spot here. Made it off the plane. Mr. Hollywood, what can he do here? His, his counterpart from the second chance battle made it with ease, finishing in second in the semi. Can Hollywood do the same? We will find out. We'll see. Why are you, why are you shaking your head? Oh, he's, he's been, been in, been in LA. LA. We know. Right. You don't have to flex on us like that, dude. Oh, gosh. The guns just came out. Someone called the vet because he's got two sick pythons. Yeah. Going to have to inject some HGH or something into those. <laughs> oh, man. We are getting ready to get started, and we're going to Wario's Gold Mine. All right. And we are going to be on board here with Batter Cookie to start things off. And he is that Wario in the toilet bowl, also known as the Bitty Buggy. This is a drafting track, so you're kind of noticing the crazy slipstreams right now. Batter Cookie, unfortunately, on the receiving end, and at least two or three players have fallen off already. Maybe four at this point. But this is going to be a really exciting track. There's a lot of running sequences to this, and uh, it's a very physical track with items as well. So uh, we got Riley, James T. Gray Cheese, we got Immortal, we got Air Boom. We got a lot of different names being dropped in the chat right now. A lot of different names, a lot of support going around right now. Meanwhile, lost here. Sir9 going to be in first place. He's got a plantain for a little bit of protection at the moment. Tigre, meanwhile, in ninth, but he's trying to smuggle that bullet bill up. You know that he is trying to bag this one. Yeah, Tigre just trying to smuggle that bill up. It's in the middle part of lap number two. Don't know if there's any funny business happening elsewhere. There are a few bills in play, though. But I don't, I don't think there's any funny business. He's uh, going to pop that bill now, and we'll see if he times it well with the shock, if that's coming out here. As Riley, meanwhile, is going to get passed by him, dropping down to fifth place at the moment. So right here, Riley there in fifth has no money. And that's one of the things, too, regardless of if you're over or under 21, uh, the biggest way to win is to get those coins, 10 coins, is going to get you up to a maximum amount of speed like Batter Cookie has right now. And let's see if he's going to throw this right up ahead here at this box. No, he's going to keep it there for defense because I think that, that might be some pressure coming from third. But Jinx right now, oh, gets booed. And so what is Batter Cookie going to do? Oh, she gets hit by the bat. Oh, you got to watch out for the bats. Yeah, you do. It's like being in Gotham. 
Yeah, you really do, especially especially in this century. This last year, I guess. Yeah, no kidding. Watch out for bats. Meanwhile, Tigre here, he's managed to back his way all the way up to second place. Batter Cookie, though, in first, rocking the toilet bowl, oh. fires that bob on back and grabs one of, is that every player rolling with Waluigi? Yeah, it Batter Cookie. just about like it. May or may not have just ended a Waluigi player's career. It could have been Jinx or Tigre, I'm not sure, but well, the crazy thing either was. Either one of them finished second, third, so they're going to be just fine. Yeah, they'll be fine, and the crazy part was is he got booed right before he went through that double set, yeah. which could not have happened any better for him, so... Uh, a lot of things going his way and a good front running win there for him. Hey, sometimes that's just what you need. You need a little bit of that luck. And so there we go. One race down, one race in the books and many, many more good ones to come. <laughs> At least five more in this qualifier, this semifinal. And it's just wild just seeing the level of talent that is in this group tonight. It, it has been just incredible. We've seen some fantastic racers. It looks like we have one left to pick their track, and we're going to be going into the roulette here. Let's see where we're going for race number two. What is one of your favorite tracks? Oh, man. Um, one of my favorite tracks, I think my, I have two. It would probably be Retro Mario Circuit and Twisted Mansion. Okay. I like both of those. Those are some good picks. Yeah, I mean, Twisted Mansion is one of the longer ones in the game. We're going to be going to... Uh, it looks Crossing. like Animal Crossing, another fun one, because the season's changed. This is actually going to be a... Oh, we're going to winter time. Yeah, winter time sandbagging track because of that low traction on the, on the ground because of the snow. So expect to see a few players going back for this one. We will see. Here we go. Air Boom. Air Boom's going to try and bag this one. We'll see in a minute where he finished in, in race number one. And there it goes. Batter Cookie, of course, took first. Tigre and Jinx right behind him. Cheese, Sir Nine, and Cherry, your top six. Yeah, that is huge for them. Seventh on back just after one race, though. Still plenty more time uh, to catch back up. It's going to oh. be you know, the other competitors. Looking at Cheese right now, his defense is gone. And I think a red may, may not have just skipped him. Cheese in third. What was that? Uh, I think a red may or may not have just skipped him. I mean, hey, sometimes it happens. We've seen it a couple times here tonight as Riley taking that corner. Still has two mushrooms. Going to wait to fire those off. Bear, meanwhile, firing off two of them as he gets around this corner. He had six mushrooms. He managed to pull three of them from a, from a boo, it looked like. And he fires off all of them there except for one. And we saw Lost, Jabizi, Riley, Immortal Man, Bear, and Air Boom rounding out the bottom six from that first race. But... Hey, we saw plenty of fluctuation happens here as Immortal Man pops that shroom, now has another one, trying to make around the shortcut, trying to fire off this red shell, but he's going to wait on that because it was not lap three, and I definitely did not think it was. Yeah, Tigre also just had an amazing green shell snipe onto the player ahead of Immortal Man when Immortal Man was in third, but unfortunately drives into uh, Mr. Snowman over you here. you got to watch out for the snowman. Yeah, they'll, they'll get you sometimes, Christmas in July, but... Immortal Man going to take this blue shell, so it worked out for Tigre. He, he took the blue shell, and he also fired his red shell backwards, which I do get because it was going to break at that point anyway, but rough there for him. Tigre looks like he caught some of it, and look who's managed to make it up to the front. It's Sir Nine, but oh, he's going to get passed there by a player with a mushroom. Fires off the bob bomb. Jabizi doesn't have the speed. Going to take second. The silent assassin, Tigre, grabbing first. I don't know. I think like fate or destiny wanted him to win that one because that, was, that wild. was not going his way at all. But somehow got through that cut, avoided Sir Nine's bomb and all the calamity. Chibizi just didn't have enough momentum coming off that final turn. And it was all Tigre. Absolutely love to see that for Tigre there. And you called it. He was one of those guys that you really have to watch out for here in this semifinal. Let's see where we're going next. But he's been racing out of his mind today. Yeah, he, he really has. I, I don't know what you can attribute it to I mean obviously besides practice and everything but just there's just been this pattern with him and it's just been really crazy to, to see that he's just really turning up a lot of heat every week at SNS hey that's what you got to do some players just excel when those bright lights come on and they're here on the stage and we'll see who's going to excel in our next racetrack because we are going to big blue one of my favorite soundtracks oh, I love this love this track this is also in my top five I think you have some running, you have some sandbagging, you have that broken glider section where you can get a really good item because the game thinks that first is farther ahead than first actually is. And 
You can play this a lot of different ways. Cherry here on screen there in fifth with a red shell. Is she gonna fire that one off? No, she is gonna hold on to it. I'm a very quick chainer, so I probably would have thrown that one off and, and prayed that nobody now, behind me would have killed me. Now walk me through chaining. So basically, you're probably gonna see it here. Cherry there throwing that red. She knows, well, that was a bad example. She, basically, it's when you rotate your items through the set, right? So Tigre is in first right now. He's just kind of chilling. He's not going to chain unless he wants to go for maybe a horn. Uh, there are the scores coming up there at the top right. Tigre with an eight point lead there over Jinx, Batter Cookie, Cheese, Shabizi, and Lost. But if you notice in the mid pack, you're gonna see players kind of burn their item in hopes of getting a better item as they go through the set. Now, is it true that being able to hit consecutive item boxes gives you better items, or is that a myth? No, it's, it's, I mean, it gets you an extra additional item, but like, it doesn't really change anything. It's all a matter of your distance away from the leader. Somebody just lost their career right there uh, in Montage, but wow, oh! Immortal Man threaded the needle wow. on that player, and he has a horn, and essentially this is double defense. If you're immortal, this is the situation you want to be in. Just have to uh, hope that nobody has some shells behind him. Tigre, oh, unfortunately, Tigre. falling and falling, and uh, the blues are going to get even worse for him. Bear here in fifth, though, trying to cross line, watching the bomb. That might have taken out Batter Cookie, but Immortal takes the win. Immortal grabbing first place right here. And Sir Nine going to finish a little bit behind him there, look like. But wow, Immortal Man popping off right here. Yeah, a little, little bit of a pop off there from Immortal. Jabizi, by the way, crept into second place. So a really good job there for Jabizi. And yeah, a lot of players just getting it's hit. It's going up and down, left and right, up <laughs> is up, down, down is up. This has been a wild, wild two semifinals. Absolutely insane so far. Oh, Bob, I'm saying, please let Tom and Knight sit down and then Mega say, Knight's used to it. And <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm used to standing. I wish I brought better shoes, but. I'm, yeah. I'm doing fine. Got to shout out Noor. He hit me up with my shoe recommendation. They have gotten me very much through tonight. I've been wearing them all day. Fantastic work shoes that I picked up. Very thankful for that. But I've also been sitting all day in my new job. So I'm kind of fine spending a few hours. Plus, this is actually how I prefer to cast uh, events anyway. Like when I'm doing play-by-play -play for a sport or something and I'm up in a broadcast booth, I normally don't sit down anywhere I'll stand up. Yeah, this is my first stand-up cast in like two years. I'm trying to like break loose a little bit. Yeah, you gotta I'm still keep kind of moving. rigid right now, but you know, that'll that'll happen in time. Plus every time I cast here it's a different setup, which is kinda cool. Yep. I kinda I like this one. Jabizi here. We're going to Ribbon Road. I'm gonna talk a little slow because I hope we can see yeah, the this, fruition of this one. This time. Yeah. Again, one of my absolute favorite courses here. Riley in fourth place right now, coming around this turn, and once again, it looks like we're back to this. Every time we go to Riley, we're just gonna watch him getting hit by an item. Sir Nine in 10th right now, maybe not intentional, but there are a lot of shortcuts and a lot of opportunities to bag, but he's gonna miss that double item box there. That's a tough one. Yeah, blame production for cursing these players with just everybody we turn to, just hits ensuing, but th this is gonna be, and I predict that this will be a very physical semifinal. You see Cherry Cheese, Lost, Bear, Airboom, and Riley on the outside looking in here at the moment, but still half of the semifinal left to take shape here. Cherry here in first right now, running with this. There are one and a half laps to go. And oh, she goes, wow, a little bit wide, doesn't fall off, oh, but falls up there. And I oh. think honestly, I think that was coming, but the fact that that was a save, oh, and oh, immediately no. getting horned. Immediately getting horned, yeah, it's just, it's just sad. You hate to see it. She hit the bad news beehive right there and hit every branch on the way down. But there's still a lap left to go. If that was the third lap, a lot worse going. But Jabizi popping off that star at the right moment. And now we got a whole bunch of cheers coming out. Jinx is in first, but gets hit right there. And now Jinx is the one getting carded, dropping all the way down to sixth. We are seeing a lot of rough, rough stuff here for our leaders of the pack. Immortal Man in second right now, fires off his first shell. Still has one left in the pocket. Trying to reel in first place, but that's Sir Nine. Loses one of his defensive items to a boo, but grabs another right here. He's gonna have a plantain and a green shell coming around the final turn, but he's gonna leave that turn awful wide open. There's one Waluigi behind him, but it looks like Sir Nine gonna wave first place. Hello, Immortal Man second, and it looks like Lost finds third. Man, I will tell you what, Sir Nine had some, I don't even know what you wanna call that, but he had something because he doesn't know what Immortal had behind that red. So he threw one of his items back, Immortal threw the red, but he was defenseless at that point. Yeah. He could have had something else. 
But you know what? He took the gamble and he won and he even gave us the wave. So I mean, you're here, you're gambling. Yeah, you might as well be. <laughs> this is the spot to do it in right now. Oh, what man. a race, what a semi. What race are you even on? I've lost track. This is going to be five. This is five. Yeah, that, that was race four. So we'll have to see we how go. that race shook things up. We're going to Royal. Mushroom Kingdom. Royal Raceway. Royal Raceway. First time tonight we're going to be heading to Royal. Another really good shock opportunity at the glider section. Cuts and shortcuts. I mean, I said that twice, but there's different cuts that you can take and different, you know, advanced strategies you can take on this track. I'm just really kind of in awe of what we're seeing, Tom, because this is, this is wild. This is wild indeed. We got Cherry here in seventh place. Tigre up in the front of the pack, though. He's going to try and walk this one out from the front. Let's take a look in at the scores because he's tied with Sir Nine for the top spot so far in this semi. Right behind him, though, Jabizi and Immortal Man tied for third with 35. And then Jinx and Cherry rounding out your top six. But wow, that is a tight scoreboard. Eight points separating first from sixth. Yeah, and Cherry there in sixth there with 29 points on that bubble spot, but it's gonna be lost with 28, only a point back in seventh. And Cheese there with 25, batter cookie. I mean, it's anybody's game here. It I really is. Bear, Bear and Air, batter cookie with 24, by no means out of this, despite sitting in eighth and ninth. Yeah, I mean, with, with two races to go, that's a 30 point swing. Anything can happen, especially if some of those players on the fringe there are gonna have bad races. The after you, not unsuccessful, it's gonna hit a mortal man and then one of the players there that could have been Bear there in the Roy Scooty. Tigre getting redded out or shelled out of first. Don't want to make an assumption there, but he was hit nonetheless. Even more calamity happening behind him. Riley here, Hollywood, trying to work his way back up along with Airboom and is trying to track down Sir Nine there in that standard cart and, or standard bike rather, the same stats as, uh, as Scooty, not Scooty by the way, Wiggler. That has the same stats as Wiggler, but a smaller hitbox, so. Gotcha. Less of likely uh, you're gonna get destroyed by a shell. But yeah. lost here, speaking of shells, fires went off at Sir Nine. Has this mushroom and then a plantain to boot. Plantain to boot, but that mushroom can be really big on a track like this. A lot of open grass that you can take through the shortcuts. But right there, Sir Nine gonna get banged up by that blue shell. He's gonna have to pop the coin, and now he has nothing to work with at the moment as Lost has that plantain and a coin in first place coming around to the final set of items here. Is he going to take them? No, he opts to stick with the plantain and the coin. Curious to see if that decision will bite him as it looks like a player has managed to come in front of him and it's Mr. Hollywood himself! Riley takes first! Huge job there for Hollywood stealing the show there from Lost. Fantastic and work. That's going to be good for both of them because both of them were on the outside looking in. Lost was a point down to Cherry, who was in sixth, and Riley was, what, at like 12 or 10 points and needed that win to now have this chance on the final race to try to break into that top six. I can't wait to see the standings going into the sixth race because this is going to be a dogfight yeah, to is, get into top six. This is something, I think, unprecedented that we've, we've seen before. I mean, the chat right now. Cheering for Sir Nine. And by the way, Sir Nine has been playing completely part-time, by the way. He was casting last week. Yeah. And then uh, he I don't think he's shown up too often this entire season since SNS 100. I, I do appreciate the fact that every time we need him to come in here and cast, especially because he's filling in for me most of the time, he is just instantly right there. Like, we had a day when Nor was sick, and he and very last minute, we're talking Nor tells me at 5.30 he's not going to make it in. And Sir Nine's like, no problem, I'll be right down there. Yeah, he's got a lot of game knowledge and the trash talk to back it up, so it's exciting. Also extremely gullible. Extremely yeah, gullible. A little bit. But uh, we're going to be heading to Dolphin Shoals for the third time tonight, and I would expect some shenanigans, to put it lightly. Oh, big time shenanigans in the offing here to start race six of six here in this semifinal. We got Sir Nine up in the front. We got lost, and let's take a look because T. Gray has managed to wrestle a tiny lead from Sir Nine here, 47 points to 45. Immortals got 44, Lost has 40. Jabizi and Jinx now hold the final spots in the top six with 37 and 36 points. But Cheese, Batter Cookie and Cherry all within six points right here. Bear within eight and Riley within 10. This is anybody's race right now. A Any win for one of these players could completely change the game. Anybody in the top 11 has a mathematical shot of moving on. It's so true. 
And unfortunately for Airboom, uh, you know, his night is uh, likely going to end here, but you know, he's, he's killing it and he's got a lot to look forward to being 21 now. I thought he was totally over 21, but uh, The good news is not. now he can actually go ahead and enjoy a drink with Frankie watching the finals. Yeah, absolutely. And this is Sir Nine here, the battle up at the front. I mean, looking at like the racers here, I mean, there's only one, well, technically two if you count Sir Nine that, that aren't in the online community and Jabizi's one of them, but he's hanging on. He's, he's trying, I think he's in fifth overall hanging for dear life here, but he's still in the good right now. Still in the good indeed, but we'll see. I mean, seventh place, I don't know. He's gonna have to bump it up here Third lap coming up here. One lap left to cement your place in the finals. Cheese up in third right now. He really does need a podium finish here. But Tigre, who definitely is not afraid at the moment, is in second place right up near the top where he has been all night long. He has already booked a trip to the finals, but it's Riley in first. Could Riley turn the tables? All he can do is race his race. If he finishes in first, he at least gives himself a mathematical shot, but oh, what was he thinking? Firing away the red shell and the coin only to get one more coin back. That could kill his chances as Tigre, the silent assassin, takes first and Riley inches across in second. If he loses, if he misses top six by three points, but <laughs> I am fully blaming. What was that, dude? Why would you give it? You, you hit the single item box. Why would you give oh. it away? Three oh. You lost by three points? Oh, no. I, can I, am I allowed to spoil this? I know there's like the whole suspense thing going on, but like. <laughs> Okay, I got, I got the good, yes, go I got ahead. permission. What happened? So Riley, with 38, finishes in seventh place. Oh no! Sixth place, who we will find out soon, officially. Okay. 41. Bro! Riley, and that's the thing, it comes Bro. down to one decision. You make Bro. one bad decision, your day is done. Why and, would you do that? And uh, unfortunately for Riley, his night ends here. Uh, we'll, we'll blame it on maybe jet lag, right? Jet lag? Jet lag? Your, your that was 50 minute same. flight? Okay. But that's literally what it, what it comes down to. It's one bad decision, and it literally was on like the second to last turn over the glider. And I, I'll be honest, I wasn't really paying attention. I was actually looking at the wonky item distribution. Yeah. No bills in play, no shocks in play. That was a pure driving Dolphin Shoals. And we got highlights to, to prove it, but yeah, that let's was Let's take a wild. look back at them. What a semi. Two amazing semis, which just means we're gearing up for a fantastic final. Yeah, and, and I mean, Immortal Man right here, getting blued. His day, I think, might continue on. We'll find out. Jabizi, though, good story for him getting second. Really hanging in that top six up until the very end. Look at Immortal Man threading the needle right there. That was probably the highlight of the semifinal, to be honest. And that taking the win. Took the first place as well. Very, very great race from him. Ever since that championship finish that he had, he has just been racing on a different level. That was not a one-time thing. He has put himself in that echelon of players. Yeah, Sir Nine having a great run in the semifinal and the wave. The yeah, sauce. So, Sir Nine, so one of the sauciest players. I love it. Yeah, and this is Riley stealing the show. It's a good highlight here for Riley. Lost there. Uh, gonna take second, but a great finish there from Lost. Just uh, got uh, out, out sped there by Riley and some of the power items. Airboom here with the crazy eight. Takes out 11th place as he moves up. There's Cheese. Here, and Tigre getting blued. Tigre luckily getting blued in a spot where he was able to land. But then what was that move from Riley? What was he thinking? Firing off the red, then hitting the single item, leaving himself defenseless. And Tigre takes first, Riley takes second, and Bob's your uncle. Riley, done for the night. Now, I don't think Tigre got sixth, but imagine if Tigre got sixth because of that one play. Oh, that would have been wild. How crazy that would be. Would have been oh, wild. Man. That was just wild. Unfortunate, though, for Riley. We do know that his night's over, but uh, scores should be coming soon. That is right. We should have the scores to find out who are our final six competitors going on to grand finals. Of course, we already know the first six from semi one. And let's find out right now. Let's put them up on screen. Who is making it? Tigre, Immortal Man, Lost, Sir Nine, Cheese, and Jabizi going on to grand finals. Okay, Jabizi's so. Jabizi's first grand finals Jabizi's appearance. Jabizi's first grand finals. We got Cheese, Sir Nine, Lost. By the way, not a whole ton of players I would have actually thought would have gone in. Jinx, 
First time getting out of finals in a while. Riley, Cherry, Bear, Air Boom, their Knights over along with Batter Cookie. But can we just talk about the whole alternate universe where if Riley got first, that would have triggered a th potentially a three-way tie? Potentially, mm -hmm. granted, you know, he wouldn't have gotten where he got, so that might have shifted That's true, it, it might have shifted things. But it would have at the very least been a tiebreaker. You know, could have been could have been really Jibizi, something. The huge benefactor of Riley's bad decisions and cheese as well. So congratulations to, to everybody that moved on. Congratulations indeed, and let's talk about who's moving on because we have a grand finals to get to, my friend. And we've got sneaks, cynic, glitch, riding my Pidgey, Jadex, and funny name from semi one and from semi two. We have Tigre, Immortal Man, Lost. Sir Nine, Cheese, and Jabizi. Guys, head on up to the hype tunnel. It is time to find out who will be crowned a champion. This has been the craziest night of upsets, I swear. Oh, I got, oh, I got you. You're being asked. This is, you're being asked to take on a very important task. We're gonna, here, we're gonna babysit game. Fan. He'll, he'll, uh, he'll hang out good. here. We love you, Fan. I, I don't know if we can actually. Uh, All right. We'll work on getting Finn to sit up straight. In the meantime, we got a grand finals to get to right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back right after this short break with grand finals brought to you by Finley Volkswagen down at the Valley Auto Mall. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back on into Saturday Night Speedway 105 at the HyperX Esports Arena where we are getting ready to crown a champion. Six qualifiers, a second chance battle, two incredible semis, and night it all comes down to this. Who is taking home our grand finals champion prize? 
Now we have 12 racers left, six races to decide who is going to be the SNS 105 champion. And we saw two incredible semifinals. They set the bar incredibly high, Tom. And so I don't know how finals is gonna even compare to this, but I'm not surprised. It's gonna be probably pretty crazy. Hey, to quote a great philosopher, the cream rises to the top. Actually, yeah, that's one of my racing quotes too. I always say the cream of the crop rises to the top. Yeah. And we saw that tonight, and there's been a lot of really strong players that had to go out of semifinals oh, that yeah. couldn't make it. It, it. Like, I mean, so just imagine how crazy this finals is gonna be. It is going to be a crazy finals. These races have been incredible so far, and we are not done yet. We have six more to decide our champion. Oh, I, I am getting excited. I think that they are getting ready. They are almost all ready to go. We are just waiting on the word to send them down. But what a night it has been so far. It's been huge, and there are a lot of firsts here up in the finals. We, we have Jabizi in the finals. We have, I think, Lost back in the finals as well. We have Cynic as well in yeah, there, so Cynic. a lot of brand new players. And He's making the trip out from Alabama worth it, for sure. For sure, yeah, and it's crazy too. I know we're seeing, uh, you know, chatting going on between bare knives and stuff, but, you know, I, it, it's exciting, and are, are, I have, I'm keeping my expectations low because <laughs> I, I don't, I know they're going to be like surpassed and I don't want to set a bar or set a standard for anything. Look, all I know is I know that some of you might have paid for the whole seat, but you're only going to need the edge. We don't even have them. That's how on edge we are. We are completely off of seats. It has been standing room only here for us. And oh my word, how amazing this entire night has been so far. Do you think, the question to me, are we going to get a new first time champion? Are we going to get a returning champion? Someone like Funny Name Glitch adding another pelt to the collection? Or is this going to be a night where we see someone like Chabizi, first time finalist? Could he be a first time winner? I think honestly, the way the night's been going, anything is possible. To be very clear with you, Tom, I mean, it's going to be a lot harder for players like Chibis, especially now, given how high the stakes were in the semifinals. But hey, if you could outlast that, then the finals, I mean, it's going to be harder, don't get me wrong. But it's not going to be, you know, as big of a jump as I think players would think, because there's still very skilled players left. And yeah, it's just a matter of surviving. Especially coming out of those semifinals that we just saw, you're basically already played through one grand final. And now we will see what's going to happen here in the next one. I'm, ex I'm just excited, man. I am looking forward to seeing what's going to go on. It looks like we are still waiting on everybody to get ready, everything on the stage to be ready so that we can get going here. Okay, if you had to pick a racer, who are you taking here? If I had to pick a racer, okay. This is, and again, I don't want to dodge the question, but I'm going to answer it in two parts. I think if there was a new player that could win, Man, I might actually go Tigre over Cynic Tigre for a bold it. prediction. I think Cynic has a good chance to win, um, but if we're looking at a returning player, I'm going to go maybe Funny Name still. I mean, you're picking a lot of chalk there with Funny Name, but Tigre has never won an SNS title? He has not. I am shocked by that. I just assumed he had. I, no, he hasn't. And I think if you want a safe bet, pick Cynic for show. Okay. Pick Cynic for like third, maybe fourth. Okay. Um, you know, I think Snake has a great chance to win, but the way that the racing's been tonight and how random it's been with the last minute hits, I think the pack's going to be a little bit clustered up and anything can happen. So we'll see. Now, would you say if you were racing in this finals, which is, is this one where you're going to want to be out in front and avoid that clustered pack? Are you going to want to try and bag this one? What would be your strategy walking into this? I think with this type of finals, I would probably play it pretty textbook, sandbag, maybe a few uh, tracks that you need to bag hard on, but for the most part, I would be running or in the middle of the pack around third, fourth, fifth, because that's where you're going to be able to capitalize on blues or hits from people, and then just kind of systematically work your way up. But it's going to be very difficult. If you're staying in the back too long, I know I, I've been burned in the past from bagging, not even too hard, but because there are, no offense, players that think that they can bag and they do it incorrectly, and then in reality, you just get caught up in their mess, and it ruins your night, right? So you gotta, you got to think about the other 11 people you're playing against. And I think for this group, these are all very skilled players. So you're gonna see some incredibly pure Mario Kart. Well, here we go. You can see him headed down the hype tunnel as we speak. It is time.
four grand finals, ladies and gentlemen. Sneaks bringing up the rear and giving us the shrug. You can see them here. The crowd is going nuts for some of them. Oh, man. Someone we haven't mentioned, Sir Nine. He's in the show. He is, he is here and he has a good chance to win. You were talking about like some racing stuff earlier, being on the edge of your seat. I think that's like a patented phrase for like the International Speedway Group. But uh, there, there's a few things here. I, I had a friend that raised cars when I was younger. I asked him, oh, so how many times have you won? And then he responded with, well, just by actually qualifying for the event I won. And you know, so I was like, that's totally fair. You know, Making just, to just the even show. be in here, you know, you're in the money. Yeah. Worst case scenario, you get dead last, you're gonna walk away with 30 bucks. Yeah, Covers that's your pretty awesome. Fee and then some. Yeah, could pay your bar tab. You know, yeah, that's a, you could do a lot with thirty dollars. Um, and and you know, I think the other thing too is S and S, and this is also from uh, Dirt I think Racing. Kiro just walked in. Oh, Kiro just walked yeah. in. Let's go. And he's got the energy level is. of madman. But oh, he is ready. I'll tell you what, S and S is often duplicated or often imitated. Rather, I just screwed up that catchphrase. Nailed but it. never duplicated. So. Indeed, no. and I don't think we're going to see any sort of duplication here from anything that we've seen so far tonight. This is going to be wild. It is going to be an insane finish. Let's run down through the racers one by one real quick and just talk about how crazy this field is. Because first up, we have Sneaks, the prodigy himself. He has 14 titles now, 15? He's in the teens. He had an amazing qualifier. Uh, you know, obviously, repping PH, he's, he's looking to really take one away and I think you know if Sneaks has his mindset right we talked about you know you know the 99 problems that, he, that he's got going on but he he's still very capable of taking this one down indeed he is next up we have Cynic coming all the way from Alabama this is a racer you might know a little bit more about than I do yeah Cynic coming from Alabama also a, a pirate hacker here uh, part of the the three-time championship club with them in the division one rated R championship on 200 CC he's one of the better upper division players here in the United States make the trip from Alabama you can't discount Cynic he if he wins this, this is going to be huge because a lot of players, basically since SNS 50, have not been able to win on their first time here. We saw Icon come close at SNS 100. Can Cynic do it here? Next up, of course, the man who has done it more than anyone else. It is Glitch. His titles can already buy a beer at the bar with Frankie. Can he add another to the collection? Yeah, I think I heard that stat that Glitch's number of titles actually are like, I think borderline older than him maybe. And you know, Glitch is very good running, very good shock bagging, can hit you from all different angles, very physical. And so he is a huge player and a huge threat to watch. Next up, of course, riding my Pidgey. He's out here looking to grab another title. It's been a little while since he, of course, broke through and joined the winning club. Can he and his Pokemon cadre do it tonight? Pidgey has a chance to do it, especially too if he can hang up there with those big guns, take advantage of some mistakes. You gotta definitely keep an eye out on Pidgey. He is uh, the fourth player in that row there uh, from PH. So I mean, they're just nat like I'm not on the team anymore, but they're just natural on the you know the free for all side of things. Now we're not supposed to pick favorites. We're the casters. We're supposed to be impartial. But I'm not gonna lie. I really, really want to see Jadex take this down tonight and win this title. He is locked in. He is ready to go. He has been racing phenomenally, making it out a second chance, taking second place in one of the toughest semifinals that we've ever seen. I think he has a great chance here tonight to take home a crown. Yeah, no Vani tonight, so he will be the uh, the token inward player. But, I mean, he has been racing out of his mind. And if he can get good finishes on those tracks that he's comfortable on and that way he can get a little bit of a cushion if maybe one or two inward tracks get picked that don't really favor his loadout then he will be in a great spot to be a contender now right next to him our defending champion one of the best racers that we have ever seen here at the arena we have funny name himself funny name is just oh he's blocking the camera he doesn't want to be there but he's yeah he's really skilled here uh, he's got U.S. tops, I know, on Bone Dry Dunes, and someone want to bail me out in the other track, Bone Dry Dunes I, and something else. I'm not else. gonna be able to help but, you out with that, but he is an incredibly skilled racer here, and he's gonna be trying to take it down, but no one's been hotter than Tigre so far. Yeah, Tigre has on the Mega J Keys, he's unofficial, well, maybe official rankings, I don't know. Just outpaced a little bit. He's doing incredibly well. But yeah, also a mortal man who's now the, uh, the owner of Fen at the moment. That is right, Immortal Man currently in custody of Fen for us. 
And then, of course, we also have Lost, Sir Nine, Cheese, and Jabizi rounding out our group here. We're sorry, we can't quite highlight everyone because we are ready to get into the racing and we are going to Dragon Driftway first overall and we're looking in on Jadex here. Yeah, Lost, I mean, up and coming racer, Sir Nine. First time back in a while, Dragon Driftway, Cheese on Night Kids, Jabizi in his first ever finals appearance. That really sums it up. But here we go, we are on board here, I'm assuming with Jadex right now who is getting a little bit of views. This is a track that doesn't really uh, favor inwards too much, but hey, it's better to probably get this out of the way first and hope that RNG is on his side going forward. RNG it is either gonna help you or hurt you, but Immortal Man right now not relying on it. He's in fifth place as he comes up on to the first set of item boxes. Meanwhile, Sneaks riding from the front here. Look at the army of Waluigi's that he is leading. He has a coin and a horn. Already has the horn. He already has the horn here because we're heading into lap number two. And it's going to be Sir Nine, and uh, he's going to be taking out second place there pretty quickly. But already a big gap between some of the players there in the back. 12th place is way far away. 12th place very far away uh -oh. indeed. You see that? What am I looking at? I'm not at? a weatherman, but uh, I think oh, there's going to be some there lightning. It is. What a call. The lightning comes in. T Gray down here. I thought there was a disconnect for a second. I was oh, really no. worried. But yeah, I mean, lightning's uh, pretty scary. Sneak somehow itself. manages to get back the coin and horn. What? <laughs> That's just his luck, combo. I swear. He's just literally, Sneaks is literally absurd with his luck, but hey, he, he drives well uh, around it, and, and that really helps him. Jadex still in third, though, right now. Jadex holding it down. Look at how locked in he is. This man is focused. Jabizi in seventh place right now, dropping down to eighth there. That's going to be a rough one. Meanwhile, Cynic is up in second, trying to hit up the first place while Luigi manages to do so. That was Sneaks. And now Sneaks trying to after you it, but the luck runs out there. And Cynic is alone at the top, holding the number one spot right now, and no one is going to catch up to him here as he comes around the hairpin turn, and he is going to take first in our first race. Huge win there for Cynic. Also notice the names are back for uh, the first time in a little bit, so that's awesome to see. Sneak's still getting second place, Cheese in third, and Glitch rounding out uh, fourth there. There you go, that is gonna be our top four to start us off here. And what a first race that was. Cynic just barely able to edge out Sneaks there because at the end, that was neck and neck coming up to that last turn, but the blue shell had locked onto Sneaks. And like we said, the lucky racer has his luck run out there. Yeah, this game is just so fickle sometimes, and you sometimes wonder why certain things happen at certain times, and it's your skill and your driving and how you can combat around things that might not be going your way and things that might be going your way. And Sneaks, yeah, having the gamut of getting two sound horns back to back, and then all of a sudden here he is getting blued out of first on one of the final few turns. All right, let's talk about the scores. Let's see how everything shook out after race number one. We, of course, have Cynic in first, Sneaks following him up, followed there, by Cheese in pot 11, Glitch, then Funny Name, then Sir Nine, then Immortal Man, then Lost, Jadex ends up in ninth there, Tigre in 10th, Pidgey in 11th, and Jabizi rounds us out. Yeah, J Jabizi just kind of got blindly carted there around one of those turns, and for Jadex, that's an unfortunate hit to the back. I mean, Jadex was having a phenomenal run there, going into lap number three in third place, and uh, hopefully, you know, the chat, uh, we'd love to hear some of the feedback there. We've got the, the scores in between these races now and the positions, so if you're following along, it's gonna be exciting. This is going to be intense, and we're going, why is it that this track always waits till grand finals to show up, Knight? Ooh. It seems to be the bane of so many people's existences, Sherbetland. Sherbetland! That's a, anyone in Starkland knows that, probably not. Okay, there's a video that, kid made sliding on some ice, but that's what you're going to see here, is this low traction. It's going to be icy. This is going to be predominantly front-running track. Sir Nine burns out. That's going to be a little bit unfortunate. He's going to have to go through 11 players if he wants to win. Well, he's got plenty of time to do just that, and he is no stranger going worse to first as Sneaks here fires off that red shell, clears out the defense of Funny Name in front of him. Funny Name not trying to bag this one at all, and oh, Sneaks gets hit by the green shell and gets screened out of every item box. Now he's going to break out and bag here and just try and pick up those items. Yeah, another thing with Sneaks is you notice he threw that shell, and it actually didn't register with the player that was in first at the time, because I think something else was tracking into that player, so it never hit, so... A little bit unfortunate, but Shadex there in second. Everybody's tracking down this man. It's funny name. 
here in first, and this this shell's gonna hit for sure, so he stops at the box. He stops at the box right there. Meanwhile, Jabizi in sixth place. He's gonna hit one of the item boxes. What's he gonna get? It's a red shell, and look at just the pack of Waluigi's there, but you see Glitch and two Waluigi's in the back. Sandbag in this track has lost, has made it up to fourth place right now. Two greens out of the double item box, and he can see Jadex and a couple other players in front of him, including Cheese, who has made it up to first place. Yeah, Cheese right here representing Night Kids in first. We do see Glitch here in the back, though, with a blue shell and a star, so shout out to Production, keeping us on our toes, seeing what's happening in the back, following it up by some triple mushrooms and a star. Immortal Man, unfortunately, didn't get that trick right. And who's going to take the hit here? It's going to be Cheese. Jadex and a few others are following behind. Uh, looks like Jadex was able to pass him. Don't know if he got hit or just had to swerve to avoid it. But Tigre has managed to take over first place. And look at that loadout that he's got set up. I would not give up either of those items for a box right here. You see Jadex in second and Immortal Man in third. Two green shells here for Immortal Man. And what's he going to get? It's a red to go with him as we're coming up towards the end of this track here. One half a lap or so to go, down to a quarter now, and Tigre still has the red shell and the sound horn to work with. I don't know if anyone's gonna be able to clear out that defense. Can Tigre win this for Kazakhstan? And it looks like he will, and the blue shell's gonna come in late. So any Team Kazakhstan members, I saw Luckyo there in the chat. There's Tigre, Glitch getting second out of all that, and Jadex actually holding on there for third. We're gonna go through those, uh, those four results here in a minute. It was a great success. Great success, very nice. Great success, very, very nice. nice. Meanwhile here, it sounds like there was some pop-off going around on this section. So I think there was some intense action happening towards the middle of that pack. I know Jadex got in third. We will see where everyone else finished up just in a moment here. We missed the memo on something. But yeah, we yeah, missed something the memo happened. on something. But I mean, nonetheless, just incredible driving. And I mean, all of these players are just incredibly skilled. And the let's, scores and the results coming right in. Let's take a look in right now. We have Tigre in first, Glitch in second, Jadex in third, Funny Name in fourth, Pidgey in fifth, Sonic in sixth, Cynic in sixth, Lost in seventh, Cheese, Sneaks, Immortal Man, and Jabizi, and then Sir Nine finishing in last on that one. Yeah, this is really going to shake up the standings here a little bit. But right now, if you can kind of do the math in your head, Cynic is going to be the leader here going into race number three so see if you can hang on we will see indeed what's gonna happen here as meanwhile we're getting ready where are we going for race number three we are a third of the way through grand finals oh boy this is one of the tracks that funny name has u.s tops on how? it's gonna be how every bone time, dry dunes every time they wait till randomizer waits till grand finals to do this this is uh, going to be interesting. I think Funny Name's in that upper part of the pack. Yeah, in fourth place. And the cool part is, or not the cool part for first, if you're in first, you're actually starting on the outside, having to cut in. So this is going to favor Funny Name because he's going to be able to draft if he wants to off of those three players. He tried to prioritize going for the item box. Didn't work out for him, but assuming he doesn't get absolutely annihilated here, he should be in a, well, a good position. We will see. I mean, it looks like he is planning on bagging this one after that start. Meanwhile, Jadex trying to run up at the front of the pack here. He's in second right now, lurking just behind Glitch, who has opted not to bag an incredibly baggable track. And a smart high IQ move from Glitch. You know that funny name just got carded. Stay out in front, try to run your race, and, and try to dodge whatever's coming at you. This is Jabizi here who's having a... Not the, the best start to the finals as he would have hoped, but gets around that bomb here in second place, but gets hit from behind. He's coming off of a 12th and an 11th place finish, hoping to improve on um, some better momentum. I mean, after such a hot start, he has really not been able to find his footing so far in grand finals, needs to do that pretty soon. But riding my pitchy right now in fifth place, has just a racer in front of him. Meanwhile, Jadex still in third, gets hit by that banana almost immediately, has to fire off the mushroom that he had just acquired as Sneaks gets up in front of him. But it's Cynic up in first place. Cynic the Knot Hedgehog in first right now with a coin and a banana peel. Yeah, this is uh, huge for Cynic being out there in the lead, but the blue shell is coming, and Jadex narrowly avoids that blue. Everybody kind of stopping. Cynic going all the way back to eighth place after that hit. He did stop a little bit prematurely to try to get out of it, though, but we'll have to see how he can recover. And who has re-inherited the lead? Funny name now in third, and we do have the Donkey Kong up there. That's going to be Pidgey. We know that much, but who is in first? It's Sneaks. 
Snakes is up at the head of the pack right now, leading the charge as his normal Waluigi, Mr. Scooty, load out very meta indeed. And he's gonna get a coin and a bob -omb here coming around the final turn. He has to hold on. No, he's gonna let the bob -omb go early, seeing what it can do. And he's gonna cross the finish line. Sneaks takes first in race three. That knocked riding my Pidgey down about three or four positions there. Really good bomb snipe and execution there from Sneaks. And we're seeing a lot of different winners. We're seeing the results get shaken up a lot, but I'll tell you what, we're gonna see in a, in a quick second here, a few new names that are consistently just hitting those top spots every time. That is very true. Let's take a look in on them in just a second here. And we have Sneaks at the front, Funny Name in second, Jadex in third. Tigre, Pidgey, Glitch, round out the top six. Cynic, she, Cynic finishes in seventh. Yeah, Cynic goes all the way back to seventh. He, remember, he got hit back to eighth from that blue shell. And then we have Cheese, Lost, and Immortal rounding up the top 10. Jabizi with another 11th place finish. And Sir Nine uh, finishing the end of the field. Jadex finishing very consistently so far. He's been top three just about every race. Yeah, he is uh, really doing a pretty good job there. He's at 24 points if you can do the math. Sneaks being at 31. And, uh, you know, basically off of this now, it looks like Sneaks has taken over the lead. Sneaks does appear to have taken over the lead, but we're only halfway through, and we're going back to Big Blue. This is a very exciting finals race because I'm really curious to see if Glitch is going to stick to running or bagging, and who's going to take advantage of potentially just literally shocking the field with some crazy finish here. We will have to see, but here we go. Fourth race coming up here, Immortal Man is off and running there. He didn't have the best race in race three, trying to recover here. Tell you one thing too, uh, Tigre and, and Jadex are running the finals of their lives right now. She's here in sixth, trying to make something happen defenseless, but that doesn't really matter too much early on because with this glider section and the, you know, the, your items are gonna naturally just get a little bit better because the game thinks that the leader is farther ahead than they should be. It's a checkpoint-based track we established earlier, so it's really gonna come down to what's gonna happen here in the next uh, 20 seconds or so. And here we go, we are off the glider section. Pidgey gonna get hit there, losing a couple spots, fires the boomerang in desperation. Cynic up in fourth place now, has a boomerang of his own with one charge left to it. He's gonna have to time this throw properly. Saving it right now, could do some damage. Gets hit right there and of course, oh, manages to use the boomerang and hit Jadex, then grabs the next double item box. He's up to second place. Sneaks though, holding down the lead. Yeah, this pack is incredibly close. Nothing crazy in play yet, though. We do see Jadex here in fourth place with those mushrooms. Is he going to be able to get another box? He is. Oh, a bomb getting planted there by third place there at the time as Jadex passes him, but gets clipped by the bill by Funny Name. Has to avoid this star, and Jadex forced to go wide here. Funny Name in third, going into this next set. Cynic in second, sneaks in first. There you have it, Funny Name in third, like you said, moves up to second. We're coming up to the end though. Sneaks has the sound horn, uses it against the bob -omb. Can he make it across the line? Cynic first place. That was huge. I was almost wondering if Sneaks had some sort of high IQ play. He backed out of that very quickly. And I was almost like, Cynic, Cynic, what are you doing? Like, you're literally just taking this blue. But then, you know what he did is, is when we're watching the screen, I mean, granted, let's, let's break the fourth wall here again. We can see everybody. Yeah. We have the eyes in the sky. But the, uh, the cool thing was, is he held that uh, sound horn behind his banana, so nobody and saw so it. And so he shielded it and was able to use it. Let's take a look at how everybody stacked up after that race, because it was Cynic in first, then Funny, then Sneaks, then Glitch, Jadex in fifth, Immortal, Tigre, Cheese, Sir Nine, Lost, Pidgey, and Jabizi in last. Jabizi not having a great time so far. Yeah, Jabizi not having a good time, but hey, you know, getting he a little bit it. humbled here in the finals, but I'll tell you one thing, that, that first place for Cynic really helps with the, the mid-pack finishes that he's been having. And I mean, Jadex is just continuing to finish so consistently here. You know, he is gonna just because of the pace that like Cynic and Funny are on, he's gonna have to have another big finish. That is right. Cynic and Funny kind of duking it out at the top right now. But if Jadex can grab a first place, that could be really big for him. Let's see where we are going for this next race. And we are going to Toad's, Toad's Turnpike. Turnpike. All right. Okay. A classic. Yeah, this is, hey. Uh, my money would probably be on Glitch to win this one. He has traditionally done very well here. Yeah, he, he really knows how to play this track. I mean, there's so many outs for a lot of players. No real shortcuts here, but you have the shocks. You have the ability to drive into moving 
cars playing in traffic and, and avoiding getting hit by a blue. So we'll see what happens here. A pro tip, do not play in traffic. Don't do that in real life. No, yeah. don't, don't condone that at all. Don't recommend it. But, you know, in the game, you can drink and drive. You can play in traffic. You can do whatever you want. Within reason. Within reason. Yeah. Meanwhile, funny name here. Of course, none of that we'd advise in real life. Funny name here, meanwhile, is in last. He's going to bag this one away. He's got a red shell right now, but he's going to be waiting for some better items. Meanwhile, Immortal Man in fifth. Fires off the red, hits Jadex, grabs the mushroom, and now he is off and running, waiting to pop that mushroom out because he sees those two red shells that Cynic had up ahead. Sneaks, able to dodge them, has a coin and a banana, and he is up in first place right now, and he is rolling his race, but look behind him, it is glitching fourth. Yeah, Sneaks is in a very good position. He has the 10 coins, and he's just driving. He has a little bit of a gap between second place. Now, the key for Sneaks is to try and chain his way into getting a sound horn to prevent getting glued, because Sneaks is in that catbird seat. Glitch providing all sorts of pressure there on a Pidgey, and Cynic is here with the horn. So Again. let's see how this situation plays out. Cynic's probably going to leave some distance there for Sneaks. These guys had a blue encounter uh, on the last track together, and Sneaks going to dodge it by running into the car. But, oh, oh and Cynic and horn. just gets in there with the horn at the end. Wow, that's huge. And a lot of players moving up here with some, with some stars and things like that as they're heading into lap number three. Cynic here. Can he roll like the Crimson Tide and take first place? Right now, he's holding it down. Immortal Man in second with the red. And then Funny Name behind with three plantains. Good for some protection and some defense, but not going to get him over the finish line in first as it stands. Cynic only has a coin. He's a race against time. Is there someone trying to track him down with a red? There is, but he's going to make it he anyway. He pulled another horn. He pulled a horn. Immortal can't get the job done, but he hangs on for second. Sneaks has to resort to third. Tigre there in fourth. Again, huge finish there from Tigre. But man. Wow. Just the, the RNG is, and I mean, Cynic's driving is on point, don't get me wrong, yeah. but like, when you're pulling a horn like that in a clutch situation, that's, that's huge. And let's take a look at the race recap here real quick. Cynic, of course, finishes in the top, Immortal in second, Sneaks in third, Tigre in fourth, Funny drops all the way to fifth, Glitch, sixth place finish there, not quite what we predicted. Jadex in seventh, Cheese, Sir9, Lost, Pidgey, and Jabizi round us out here. Yeah, Glitch is committing to just running, and uh, he's not getting the same results as he would otherwise, but and huge runs, though, from a lot of players there. And what you can see from these scores, though, Funny Name, Sneaks, and Cynic separated by two points. Whoever <laughs> wins, wins. This is going to be this absolutely crazy. Is this the final race? This is the final oh race. Oh, my God. God. It all comes down to this, and we're going for the third Oh, we're time. going to Trainbow. Trainbow this is, Road. This is huge for Cynic because he's in first whoop, right whoop. now, and he just has to ride the train. It's true. Know, like your Quad City DJ. But he's or only but. up by two. 12 points for second. Am I wrong? Yeah, there's a three-point difference between first and second. If, if one of the – if Sneaks or Funny Name beat him out in this race, he cannot pass them. But – Win and you're in. We're going to see what's going to happen because there's a lot of other skilled players that can displace any of the three of them, especially Glitch. He is a 21 or 22, I don't even know at this point, north of 20-time champion, and he's trying to draft his way up through the field. It is so fitting to finish this SNS off on a Rainbow Road track. And funny name right here in fifth place. Coming around to the first checkpoint. He has a mushroom. Sneaks does as well. He's up in fourth, but now getting passed by a couple people. Dropping down to sixth. Only temporarily, though. As by he the is way, another fun fact. This is the shortest track in the game. So you literally have to be on for all, all the that entire is, time here. That is right. Back on the N64, this was a three-lap track, and they have shortened it down to a section-based track here. And we're already on to section two of three. Coming up on the final section here, and it's all going to come down to this. You got Sneaks and Tigre riding up at the top of the pack right now. Lost a little bit behind them in seventh. Sir Nine and Pidgey, you can see up there. Tigre's in third right now, but it's Cynic up in the lead, trying to make a claim, winning in his first ever SNS. Can he do it? He's got a bob -omb. He's going to ditch his items. What's he going to get? He's got a green shell and a coin. Can he make it? He's coming up on the final. He wrecked jump. Immortal Man with the bomb. He's going to do it. Cynic going to take first place. And he... Cynic is going to win it all. We'll wait till it's official, but I think you're right. He would be the first player since SNS, at least SNS 50, 
to come in. It's kind of uh, ironic or unironic that he would be a PH member that's figured this out. But this hasn't been done to win on your first try since we've had super effects. Hobby, Pluto, and Mankalor doing and this all the names. earlier SNSs in, in yeah, the time when like nobody started getting good at the game or joining online teams or whatever. So this is huge. There's been so many players that haven't been able to, to do this on their first try. We saw, you know, Miles fail. We've seen Icon fail. Uh, Michael hasn't gone it in two tries. I mean, it's crazy. And I literally told him before this, if you get around the noise, Cruiser family being a, a, a good key contributor to that, to be honest, and, and a lot of other factors, you know, there, there's a chance. There is really a chance indeed, and Cynic able to pull it off. It took him a little while to get going in the qualifiers, had to settle the nerves a little bit, but after he got accustomed to it, just racing his race, and let's look back at the grand finals that was to get us here, because oh my word, we saw of course that first race on Dragon Driftway, Tigre racing so phenomenally throughout the night, but it was Cynic who would be able to come out in first on the first race, he started off strong, and then we went over to Sherbet Land. Cheese, trying to make some moves, but became melted cheese during that race on the frozen tundra. Tigre took first place in race number two. This is Jadex here having another crazy finals, but getting sniped. Going through the boxes here on Bone Dry Dunes, it's gonna be all sneaks here at the moment who had a little bit of a dicey situation there with Funny Name. And now this situation as well, where Cynic creeped past Sneak, Sneak's backed out, the blue show was coming in, Cynic having that sound horn behind his banana to take the win away from Sneak's and Funny Name. Sneak's there dodging that red, but look at the move here from Cynic, basically just shutting Sneak's down and Immortal Man being forced really to be the only player that had to pressure Cynic the entire time, not only there, but on Trainbow as well. And then there you saw it, Cynic knew when he took that jump that he had it all to himself, sealing the dub, throws up the hands and just says, hey, what can you do? These were of course the positions in the final race there. Cynic took first, Tigre in second, Pidgey third, Immortal Man fourth, lost, Jadex, funny name, Glitch, Sir9, Jabizi, Sneaks, and then Cheese. Yeah, that is a crazy finish there to Trainbow. Sneaks getting carded there at the end. Same with Funny Name. And, you know, Pidgey, Tigre, they kind of capitalized on Cynic's bomb there on Immortal Man. And Immortal had some red shells too. So Immortal Man was the key threat to taking this away from Cynic here, from SRG. So really exciting, you know, to see how Cynic kind of used his items and got out of that small rut he was in when he was finishing in the mid-pack, like that second and third race or so, and then just kind of riding himself and getting back, uh, back above sea level. Hey, sometimes that's all you need. Let's make it official. Let's take a look at the final scores here. Cynic, wow, 73 points, takes first place. Funny name with 55, Tigre with 54, Sneaks with 53, Glitch with 49, Jadex with 45. Immortal Man with 40, and then Pidgey, Cheese, Lost, Sir9, and Jabizi. Yeah, that is uh, huge results there. Cynic, again, going one for one. Funny name with the second Tigre. I mean, probably that is his career best finish. If not, it's pretty close there in third. Sneaks, yeah, it's Glitch and Jadex. Jadex having a great run. Immortal Man, you know, that's, a, that's kind of a rough seventh for him, I think. He was the key player providing pressure to Cynic the entire several last couple races. He really was. He and was he took well. a lot of hits that forced him down to seven. So huge shout out there to Immortal Man. Huge shout out indeed. He has been one of the most improved racers over the course of the last year or so, I'd say. He's, of course, gotten a couple wins under his belt now. And he's really become one of those grand final specialists. But right now, the man of the hour is ready for us. Let's toss it over and say hello to our newest SNS champion, Cynic. How's it feel? Yo, what up? It feels pretty cool. I did not expect this to happen. I got pretty lucky. Hey, sometimes luck is what you need. It's Mario Kart. It's partially luck-based, am I right? It is. It is. It really is. So, coming all the way from Alabama to be here tonight, how was the trip? Uh, the trip was pretty cool. It was actually my first time flying, so... Wow. I'm glad I didn't die, I guess. Um, I'm happy to be here. It's pretty cool in Vegas. Smells like cigarettes everywhere, so I'll be <laughs> ready to go on tomorrow. <laughs> that, that's one part that needs taken adjust to, is smoking indoors, for mm -hmm. sure. So Cynic, I got a question for you. What was it like, especially in some of those final few races where the sound horn was such a critical part to your success with Sneaks backing out, you getting that win there in Big Blue, and then also sound horning Sneaks out there on Toad's Turnpike. How did the, the RNG work out for you? 
Uh, I don't know, man. I was just driving, and I saw a blue shell coming for me. I know what my, I know what my second item was. I look up, and I saw a horn. I'm like, shh, and so I use my horn. <laughs> That's great. That's <laughs> you didn't awesome. Know what it was? That's fantastic. Now, how long have you been uh, racing competitively in Mario Kart? I know you're a part of the Pirate Hackers. Um, I'm gonna take this time to go ahead and do my shoutouts. Actually, I want to give a good. shout out to um, Darky and Ember. They got me playing this game in April of 2020, pretty much when the pandemic was beginning. I just grinded a bit since then, took a break, and happened to come out here and get a win. So, wow! All right, so from April of 2020 to just over a year later, SNS champion here tonight. My friend, congratulations. I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay here in Vegas. It has been a pleasure. We have loved having you here. And again, congrats on the win, my friend. Yeah, thank you guys for hosting this. This is awesome. We really appreciate it. And again, a thank you so much to everyone here coming out tonight, making this an awesome, awesome time each and every week night it has been a fantastic sns thank you of course to Eunice, our producer knit our switcher and all of the rest of the crew jed cameron and whoever else is out there working tonight because quite frankly i had to really run through uh to make it here on time to start the races night it's been a pleasure casting with you man yeah absolutely you as well i think if i had a quick 10 second last word cynic started april 20th got three back-to-back -back division titles with PH, got two Division I 200cc titles, and now he can add an SNS title to round that one out. So Cynic's just been on a roll since his start in the competitive scene. Ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for us here tonight from Saturday Night Speedway 105 here at the HyperX Esports Arena. Once again, a huge thank you to our sponsors, Finley Volkswagen down at the Valley Auto Mall. We'll see you guys next week right here on SNS. <laughs>